free. ILD can be hard to diagnose. So if you're out of breath with a constant dry cough, ask a pulmonologist if it could be ILD. My wife, Bev, and I have walked every step of this journey together. I couldn't have traveled this road alone, and neither should you. Get help. Find hope. Go to lungsandyou.com. Don't miss Good News in Real Estate with Deanne Katsaros and Mark Cumberland, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Find out all you need to know about home buying and selling. Considering a career in real estate? Visit PhiladelphiaRealEstateClasses.com. Good News in Real Estate, Saturdays 1 p.m. on WPHT. Millions of Americans are losing their medical assistance or Medicaid coverage. If this affects you, Independence Blue Cross can help. You may be eligible to enroll in a health plan for as little as $0 a month. With Independence Blue Cross, you get the largest provider network in the area including most Keystone First doctors and hospitals. We also offer free 24-7 telemedicine, coverage for hospital stays and prescriptions. See if you qualify for $0 health insurance and enroll today. Call Independence Blue Cross at 1-844-464-2583 or visit ibx.com slash stay covered. Don't miss the Labor and Energy Show with J. Doc and Krause, brought to you by Advocacy United, this Saturday night at 6. Find out about the important issues that will affect you. The Labor and Energy Show, Saturday night at 6 on Talk Radio 12. 10 WPHT. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online? Just go to hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation, discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process and trusted generic alternatives to the name brands at up to 95% off. That's right, get generic for Viagra, the same active ingredient as brand name Viagra, but for 95% less. It's the same medication, still prescribed by a licensed medical provider, but with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no- I'm Brian Kilmeade. I'm Kennedy. I'm Sean Duffy, and this is the Fox News Rundown. Tuesday, March 12th, 2024. I'm Jessica Rosenthal. They've been talking about it, and then a group of Congress members did it. They're ordering TikTok's parent company to divest of TikTok or be banned in the United States. Many, many of those people that use that, that application don't realize just how exposed their data is. And, and that was something we've been trying to address for a long time, and this still finally really goes to the heart of that. I'm Dave Anthony. Israel's military is getting ready to go into Rafah, something the U.S. warns could not only kill a lot of Palestinian civilians, it may not succeed. Hamas fighters can escape to other parts of Gaza, where Israeli forces have now withdrawn. And so it creates a scenario of a cat and mouse chase that the Israelis will never be able to complete. And I'm Tommy Lahren. I've got the final word on the Fox News Rundown. 50 to 0. That was the vote out of the House Energy and Commerce Committee in favor of legislation that says ByteDance, which is based in Beijing, China, must divest from TikTok or face a ban here in the U.S. The Chinese Communist Party has no First Amendment right to control TikTok any more than the Soviet Union had a First Amendment right to control ABC and NBC and CBS uh, during the Cold War. As many of you know, TikTok is not merely a social media platform. It is the leading news source for the next generation. And the fact that we're putting the leading news source for the most impressionable minds in our society in the hands of our leading foreign adversary is an act of self-sabotage. Democratic Congressman Richie Torres stood alongside Republicans and Democrats who approved the bill. And as a New Yorker who lived through 9-11, I never thought in my wildest nightmares that I would see Osama bin Laden's letter to America trending on TikTok. So if that is not enough of a provocation to effectuate a forced sale of TikTok, I'm not sure what would be, so I'm honored to support this bill. The Treasury Department's Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. said last year that ByteDance needed to divest, but the administration didn't do anything. Asked late last week what he would do if the bill made it through the Senate, President Biden said, If they pass it, I'll sign it. Last year, TikTok CEO Sho Chu testified before Congress, and he was met with lawmaker after lawmaker who said they did not believe him when he told them China hadn't asked for any American data, and they wouldn't give it over even if the Chinese government had asked. Florida Republican Congressman Neil Dunn. Has ByteDance spied on American citizens? I don't think that spying is the right way to describe it. Right. This is ultimately... We can differ uh, on this that. Is
Monday, Maine Independent Senator Angus King asked FBI Director Christopher Wray during the Worldwide Threats hearing what the problems are with TikTok. The first is the data. The second is the algorithm. The third is the software. But the problem is, is not TikTok. It's the control by, by China. If TikTok were divested and owned by an American company or a Belgian company or a British company, we wouldn't have uh, this level of problem. Is that correct? Correct. So how did this many Democrats and Republicans come to agree on this matter? A 50 to nothing vote uh, doesn't happen overnight. In fact, it took months of work behind the scenes. Steve Scalise is the House Majority Leader and a Louisiana Republican Congressman. Not only members of the Energy and Commerce Committee, led by Chair Captain McMorris Rogers, uh, but really if you go back to the China Task Force that we set up last year, uh, and Mike Gallagher has led that effort, he and his committee have been working on a number of things to confront China and the threats that they pose, both militarily, economically, uh, and from a data standpoint. And so they made a number of recommendations months ago to the other standing committees. And this was one of those recommendations. And so ultimately, Chairman Gallagher started working with Kathy McMorris Rogers and her members, and they built a bipartisan coalition. And it, it led to a 50 to nothing vote. That you're right, caught some people off guard, but for those of us who have been working behind the scenes for, for months to put this together to confront the threat that China poses, especially to the data of our young people that is all being exposed and vulnerable to the Chinese Communist Party. This is a really, really big win for, for people who care about data privacy and standing up to China. It just goes to show when lawmakers want to get something done, they actually can be like lightning quick about it. Although what you're saying is it wasn't lightning quick at all. We've been working on it for a while. But th this this bill says, ByteDance, you're in Beijing, so you have to divest of TikTok. Um, so be be owned by another company, right? Of Like a forced sale. Yeah, or we'll so make sure Apple and Google American, can't host you, right? Right. They can sell to an American company uh, and continue to, to go forward. So, you know, the idea that it's, it's a ban is not accurate uh, because it just says that the Chinese Communist Party uh, can't have access to this data. So any company that's owned by China, the CCP can literally go and, and get access to the information from that company. So ByteDance is a Chinese-owned company, and, and that means that the data that's controlled, which, by the way, is a massive amounts of data that TikTok has on over 170 million people across America, uh, biometric data, a lot of personal data. And I'm sure most users of that application don't realize how vulnerable and exposed their personal data is to the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, this bill takes care of that. Tell me about order of concern, because it sounds like um, Senator Angus King and Christopher Wray went back and forth Monday um, at the Worldwide Threats hearing about what exactly the, the concern was. And it's, it, yes, it's the vast amount of information. It's also the algorithm. But Chief... The, the chief concern is not necessarily those things. It's that China is in control of it. So if another company had so, that much data of ours, it might be concerning, but it's not China-level concerning. Yeah, and it, and it really, if you look at the bill, addresses four different countries, you know, China being the most obvious, but also Russia, Iran, and North Korea. Uh, so any of those four countries uh, that are national security threats, uh, but here in the case of TikTok, you know, that's the one that most people recognize. And, and again, it's so widely used by so many people across the, the, this country. Many, many of those people that use that, that application don't realize just how exposed their data is. And, and that was something we've been trying to address for a long time. And this still finally really goes to the heart of that. Okay, so the president says he will sign it if it gets through the Senate. I guess that's not a sure thing. Rand Paul has said banning things based on not liking countries or governments isn't a good idea. Um, even Lindsey Graham said maybe it's, uh, I think his words were, maybe it's like necessary to protect Americans, but if you could avoid uh, a, a ban, and I know you're saying this isn't a, a ban necessarily, but he's saying this level, whatever this is, it'd be, good, it'd be a good idea to avoid this. Um, will, it, will it get through the Senate, though? Well, I think, I think in the end they're strong, and I've heard already from a number of senators who were very interested in seeing this bill pass the Senate, so... You know, they're, they're going to have their opportunity. We're going to take up the bill Wednesday on the House floor. And I think you're going to see a good, robust debate and a strong vote. Uh, but ultimately, that's going to be up to the Senate. I hope they take it up, have the same kind of debate about this. Understand what the bill does. Like, like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't ban TikTok. Just said it has to be divested to an American owner. 
because of the national security threat uh, posed by uh, what they're doing with your data. Uh, and there's a lot of interest on a broader scale of protecting the data of Americans for any kind of application. Look, we've also got a, a real concern about uh, how a lot of these software uh, developers and whether it's, you know, the big tech companies, you know, Facebook, Google, all of them, how they discriminate in their algorithms. Uh, this bill doesn't get even into that. It's really more the access to the data that the Chinese Communist Party has uh, that we're addressing with this bill. You know, the algorithm issue in general um, is another debate. You saw Elon Musk confront that when he purchased uh, what was then uh, when, he, when he purchased uh, Twitter. Twitter and finally, you know, renamed it X. Uh, it was about turning it back into a free speech platform. And, and every and he, by the way, exposed just how much discrimination was going on against conservatives uh, and, and how much of that still goes on by companies like Facebook and Google and others is, is a concern that we're going to continue to hammer away at. Uh, this is more the direct national security threat that is posed by ByteDance's access to all of that data uh, that they have right now. Okay, but TikTok says they may take legal action if this gets that far. And a federal judge did block Montana's TikTok ban. They, uh, I guess the, the judge accused the state of not protecting consumers but of targeting China. Would, would a, could a law from Congress sur survive, like, the First Amendment legal scrutiny with the, with the national security argument in a way that maybe a, a lone state couldn't? Yeah, and I know Chairman Gallagher and, and Chair Kathy McMorris-Rogers and all the members of Congress who worked on this bill worked with constitutional lawyers and scholars to address that very issue because clearly it will be challenged legally. You would expect by dance to try to go to the courts to block it. And, you know, all the uh, constitutional experts that we worked with said we absolutely have the, the legal ability to do this, but of course it would take an act of Congress. And, you know, the old saying goes, mm -hmm. and so that means the bill would have to pass the House and Senate uh, and be signed by the president for this, this ability to occur. Congressman, just a couple more for you. What do you tell young people who absolutely love TikTok but are deeply upset by this, some of them um, because they have businesses and their livelihoods are at this point based on their TikTok following? Um, do, would they have a case? I know some of them were involved in the Montana uh, challenge. What do you tell people? A number of things. One, under this bill, ByteDance can still sell to an American company, and, and I'm sure will. And that means TikTok can still go forward uh, as the application that people use. What's at stake here, and, and I, I think what, what most young people or anybody who uses TikTok uh, would be surprised to learn is just how vulnerable their personal data is. You know, there was a case a few years ago where there were some backdoor loopholes in the application that were allowing uh, TikTok to go into other applications on your phone and get data from things like your contacts which even if you didn't authorize them to have access to that information, they were able to do it. Uh, that alarmed a lot of people, rightfully so. Uh, I, I think if people knew just how vulnerable their personal data was that is on TikTok uh, and, and accessible by the Chinese Communist Party, uh, they probably have some reservations about all the things that they've uploaded to the application already. Uh, that would be protected mm -hmm. if this bill passes, and then ultimately you see the divestiture where – they sell to an American company where no longer would those threats of your data being sent over to the CCP uh, be valid. I know there's some interest already. I think Mr. Wonderful said he'd like to buy it. So what, what do you make, right. though, of former President Trump sounding like now he does not want a TikTok ban? We, we remember when he did. And again, I apologize. I know you're saying this is not a TikTok ban. This is really a ban on the, the Chinese, on, on a, a, a Chinese company owning uh, TikTok, but but he is uh, former President Trump is saying uh, no to this that it'll make Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg more powerful. What do you make of well, this sort he, of turnaround? Yeah, what he was concerned about, he, he he's not uh, against the bill. What he said is he doesn't want to make, like you said, Facebook uh, and companies like that more powerful that discriminate against conservatives. This bill doesn't do that. Like I mentioned, in fact, it would facilitate a sale to an American company, which would make, in my view, TikTok more powerful. Because there are a lot of parents, including myself, who don't allow their children to download TikTok right now because of the threat to your personal data, uh, to the CCP, 
that once that's removed, once it's an American-owned company, that won't have those reservations anymore. And I think you'd see more people using TikTok. Uh, so it would make the application more powerful. And as you brought up, when Donald Trump was president, uh, he was involved in trying to help facilitate a sale. I know Microsoft was one of the companies that was trying to buy TikTok. Um, you know, and there were some lawsuits involved but that, back then, but there was no legal, there was no law on the books that, that required this to happen. And so uh, this, this gets us closer to that point. And as you could tell from when Donald Trump was president, there were definitely American companies interested in buying TikTok back then. So the idea that it would go away, uh, I don't think is, uh, is realistic. It's just <laughs> the CCP just wouldn't have access to your personal data, which is a good thing. Congressman Steve Scalise, we hope you're doing well, and thanks so much for joining us. Oh, absolutely. It's great to be with you. Thanks, Jessica. Wake up with Kale and Company. Mornings, 6 till 10. Talk Radio, 1210. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. My wife and I both, we ended up mildly sick for a few months, and the nasal congestion was probably the worst part. I had like a post-nasal drip, just super congested all the time. We were taking everything we possibly could, but nothing really worked. Kyrie was miserable until a friend recommended Navage. Navage offers immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus, germs, and other airborne irritants. Don't live in misery this cold season. Use Navage so you can breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. The biggest thing Navage has done has completely cleaned out my nasal passages. It, it was from the first use I was able to just clear out anything that was stopping me from breathing correctly. Navage helps me clear the way, literally clear the way, for me to operate better in the rest of my life. Experience the Navage difference yourself. Navage is available at navage.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. When you enter a place of business, you're owed a legal duty that the place of business is safe for you to shop in because they are making a profit from you. That's the law. Yet many times a normal day ends with injuries because that business breached that duty because they knew or should have known of the dangerous condition that caused your injury. It happens every day in many ways. Slip and falls where cleaning and maintenance were ignored. Falling boxes and items stacked too high. And so many other unexpected occurrences and dangers only known to that business owner. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. If you suffered an injury at a place of business, let our team investigate and report back to you. The duty to protect customers from harm is the law, and our duty is to protect you after that harm. Visit ForThePeople.com for more information or on your cell phone, dial pound law. That's all. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. ForThePeople.com. 
Come on, honey, let's go. We're going to be late for the game. I can't find the keys. I, I swear I left them here on the counter. I told you at least ten times. Get a spare from a Causland lock service. You don't have to make an appointment. I know, I know, and they're located right off of 95. I'll have to call them. Don't put yourself in the doghouse or miss a good time because you can't find your keys. Call McCausland Lock Service today and get a quote for your vehicle. 610-430-1500. That's 610-430-1500. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things, for our planet. This spring, Fairmount Park Conservancy invites you to connect with your Philadelphia neighborhood parks. Join your local park friends group during Love Your Park Week in May. Or join us for weekly volunteer events all year long throughout the city. Fairmount Park Conservancy works with the City of Philadelphia and its communities to bring parks to life. For information and to sign up, visit myphillypark.org. Using meth taught me everything about freedom, only not like you think. It taught me how easy it is to lose your freedom. If you think meth is taking control of you, ask for help. You have the power to be truly free. I know. I'm Jan, and I'm free from meth. If you or someone you know is struggling with meth, call 1-800-662-HELP for 24-hour free and confidential treatment referral. Learn more at samhsa.gov meth. Call you on Blackwood to follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Now, a look at what's happening from the Fox News Rundown. Good morning. It's Tuesday, March 12th. This is the Fox News Rundown. I'm Sue Guzman. More primaries on tap today, and former President Trump and President Biden could walk away with enough delegates to clinch their respective nominations. Fox's Jackie Abania says more. Trump just needs 140 delegates to clinch the GOP nomination, something he is expected to easily do during Tuesday's contests in Georgia, Mississippi, and Washington state. Biden needs 102 delegates to secure his nomination on the Democrats' side. The primary season was a bit more of a challenge for Trump, who faced more than 10 Republican opponents at the start of the 2024 election cycle. His campaign was quick to note that, despite the opposition, he will still become the nominee five days sooner than he did in 2020. The lead counsel in President Biden's classified documents case heads to Capitol Hill today. We have a preview from Fox's Ryan Schmelz. It will be special counsel Robert Hur's first public testimony since his report on President Biden's mishandling of classified documents recommended no criminal charges. While the White House and many Democrats supported the conclusion, there's been criticism over references to President Biden age. That includes describing him as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Republicans have utilized the report to claim President Biden isn't fit to be commander-in-chief and members of the Judiciary Committee will likely question her about that. In Washington, Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry with a major announcement as his country is overwhelmed by violent gangs. Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry announcing that he will resign once a transitional presidential council has been created. It follows worldwide calls for his resignation as violence plagues the Caribbean nation. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spent Monday in Jamaica where he met with Caribbean leaders for urgent talks about the nation's violent gang violence. Now, Henry has been unable to return to Haiti because the violence closed its main international airports. On Monday, Blinken announced an additional $100 million to finance the deployment of a multinational force to Haiti as well as $33 million in humanitarian aid. I'm Sue Guzman on the Fox News Rundown. This is the Fox News Rundown. Free speech lives here. Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Jail and Company weekday mornings 6 till 10. The National Guard won't police SEPTA after shootings, so says the governor, Josh Shapiro. He wasn't considering such drastic action. While Parker was noncommittal Thursday morning about seeking assistance, Shapiro was clear he's still not considering it. I think it will ultimately be necessary for Shapiro to deploy the National Guard in subways. Maybe they can track areas of the neighborhoods in the cities seem to have a higher rate of crime. 
Start your day with Kale and Company. Weekday mornings, 6 till 10. On Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, and the free Odyssey app. Hey, Dawn Stensland here. You've heard me talk about Chapman Windows Doors and Siding, how much I love my new patio doors. You know by now, if I needed windows, doors, or siding, I'd only trust the Chapman team. If you're thinking of updating your current siding or removing your current stucco and replacing it with siding, think Chapman. With the new updated siding choices available, the curb appeal of your home will pop. If you currently have stucco, updating it with James Hardy plank or vinyl siding will truly add value to your home. If you're looking to sell, you can bet buyers will value updated new siding. And right now would be a good time to get ahead of the ball and plan your siding project for 2024. The certified Chapman installers are the folks you want on the job. If you or someone you know are looking for windows, doors, siding, stucco remediation, shutters, or hardware, give them a call or text them 610-431-8898, chapmanwindowsdoors.com. Chapman, the name I trust. Tell them Dawn sent you. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-700-6898. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes or overweight or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-700-6898. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800 700 6898. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds too. Call 800 700 6898. 800 700 6898 or BigLou.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Neil Armstrong waited six hours and 39 minutes to step onto the surface of the moon. Jackie Robinson waited 20 months to play his first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And even DiCaprio had to wait 22 years to win an Oscar. You can wait until your destination. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Free speech lives here with Rich Zioli, afternoons 3 to 7, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. I'm Maria Bartiromo, and this is the Fox Business Report. 
A mixed day on Wall Street to start the trading week Monday. The Dow finishing up 47, but the S&P 500 lost 6, and the Nasdaq was down 66. Later this morning, we get the Consumer Price Index report for February. Also this morning, retailer Kohl's will announce earnings. The social media company Reddit looking to raise almost $750 million in an initial public offering. The company said in a regulatory filing that the IPO will include 22 million shares of stock. Reddit anticipates the IPO will be priced between $31 and $34 per share. And Choice Hotels is abandoning its hostile $8 billion takeover bid for Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. Choice saying Monday, while it received support from some Wyndham shareholders, it wasn't enough to conclude that a deal could be done with the Wyndham board already in opposition. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Kevin Uretsky. Invested in you. This is the Fox News Rundown. Rundown. Israel's prime minister insists... Victory is at hand. Victory is close. But Benjamin Netanyahu also tells Fox, in order to defeat Hamas... They must take the next step and go after militants in a new area in southern Gaza. And if they don't... Hamas will reconstitute itself with these four battalions in Rafah, reconquer the Gaza Strip, and do the October 7th massacre over and over and over again. Of course, that terror attack triggered the war, but President Biden says an Israeli operation in Rafah crosses a red line warning that Netanyahu could hurt Israel more than help it. The prime minister says... To the extent that the world thinks that America and Israel are united, that helps the uh, war effort, and it helps our effort to uh, achieve victory and obviously the release of the hostages. To the extent that Hamas believes that there's daylight between us, that doesn't help. Despite the U.S. opposition to a Rafah offensive, though, the president told MSNBC Saturday night. The defense of Israel is still critical, so there's no red line. I'm going to cut off all weapons so they don't have the Iron Dome to protect them. They don't have. But there's red lines that if he crosses, and they can, he cannot have 30,000 more Palestinians dead. You know, the concern is that more than a million civilians are in Rafah after fleeing fighting in other areas and further complicating things. The holy Muslim month of Ramadan has begun. Rafah is really the only area of Gaza that has been untouched by the Israeli ground campaign. Trey Yingst is a Fox News foreign correspondent who's had a front row seat to the war in Tel Aviv, Israel. It's where Israeli officials say that Hamas leadership, including top officials like Yahya Sinwar and Mohammed Def, are hiding. They also believe that the hostages that were taken into Gaza on October 7th, those who remain, 134 people are being held in that southernmost city. The Americans are telling the Israelis, don't go in, look for a diplomatic solution. Trey, there is no diplomatic solution, right? We had one ceasefire. There were hostages freed, some Palestinian prisoners freed. The fighting stopped for a while, but they can't seem to work that out again. This was sort of used as a backstop in the conversations that were taking place that a deal would have to get together before the start of Ramadan. Well, Ramadan is underway, there's no deal in place, and it appears that the diplomatic efforts are falling apart. You even have Israel's intelligence agencies, like the Mossad, putting out statements, very rare statements, because they are normally quite private in their operations, saying that Hamas is not interested in a ceasefire, they're not interested in a hostage deal, they would like to ignite the region during Ramadan. And so the Israelis are making a calculation of their own, saying that it makes sense to put military pressure because from their view, they believe it has worked so far in the campaign against Hamas inside Gaza. And the Americans are in part rightly noting that there is no way to completely destroy Hamas in the Strip. Even if they enter the southernmost city of Rafah, it will be too dangerous to enter the tunnel network beneath the city because that's where the hostages are believed to be held and they could be killed if an operation like that were to take place. And even if they are successful in wiping out the Hamas battalions that still exist, an estimated four above ground, Hamas fighters can escape to other parts of Gaza where Israeli forces have now withdrawn. And so it creates a scenario of a cat and mouse chase that the Israelis will never be able to complete. And the Americans are telling them, slow things down, work to continue efforts on the diplomatic front, and don't go into Rafah. 
the 30,000 deaths that the health ministry in Gaza says have taken place during this war, how many of them are militants slash terrorists and how many of them are civilians? Do we have a good breakdown of this? We don't have a good breakdown. Both sides are using different numbers and there is simply no way to confirm exactly how many people have been killed. The Palestinian run health ministry that is overseen traditionally by Hamas, but at this point really isn't overseen by anyone because all social services have broken down inside the Strip. It is chaos amid this war inside Gaza. They say around 30,000 people have been killed. And they do not make a distinction between Hamas militants and civilians. With that said, we know that thousands of civilians have been killed. This includes non-combatants, women, children, innocent people. Among that number, whatever the number is, there are also thousands of Hamas fighters that are waging an active conflict against Israeli forces that are operating inside Gaza. Now, on the flip side, the Israelis say that the death toll right now is a ratio of around one to one. They say for every militant that's been killed, and they estimate around 13,000 of them have been killed, that one civilian died in the process. That is probably underselling the reality on the ground. The destruction, as we've seen with our own eyes and our cameras have captured when we've entered the Gaza Strip with the military, is widespread. It's catastrophic. You can smell the bodies under the rubble. They have no way of really confirming the exact number of people killed. And to go one step further, at this point, they have no way to even confirm the specific identities of the militants that they have gone after. They went after the number three person in Hamas over the weekend, and we understand that according to Israeli media, they've not yet been able to confirm if the strikes actually killed this man, Marwan Issa, because they can't get into the, the tunnel, into the rubble where they were striking. You spoke about Ramadan. What is it traditionally? How, how do Muslims typically observe it, and, and what would it be like now for them in Gaza to do it? So for Palestinians in Gaza, this is a very sad Ramadan. It's a Ramadan where they are mourning rather than celebrating. And that is not just the sentiment inside the Strip, it's also in the West Bank and in East Jerusalem where traditionally there would be lights and uh, a celebratory mood. This year it's not like that and there is concern that as we've seen in the past when Friday prayer takes place that it will erupt into violence between Israeli security forces that operate in East Jerusalem at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound and Muslim worshipers that are gathered there. We have been there in the old city when these clashes erupt and they often start out small and they lead to a broader spark, which in the past has led to rocket fire from Gaza. Now the majority of the rocket infrastructure has been destroyed. And while you may see rockets here or there, the ability for factions like Hamas and Islamic Jihad to target major population centers has diminished greatly since the war began. There are also other threats, though, against Israel from places like Yemen with Iran-backed Houthi rebels along the northern border where we see continuous fire each and every day, rockets and drones being launched by the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. And then, of course, Iran-backed Iraqi and Syrian Shia militias. Now, I know during Ramadan, there is a fast from dawn to dusk. Then there would be a feast. But there's no feasting in Gaza, right? I mean, there a lot of people, if they get a meal a day, they're probably fortunate. Is that right? Correct. And we've seen a few images from the southernmost city of Rafah, and Palestinians are trying to make do with what they have, some canned goods that they were able to get from aid trucks or from some of the very, very small markets that are still operating in the southern part of the Strip. In the north, many people are relying on the few trucks, sometimes less than a dozen a day, that, that are able to make it in recent days to the northern part of the Strip. And then, of course, these airdrops that the Americans have been participating in, where they're actually dropping MREs to the Palestinian civilians that are in desperate need of aid. And so, like you've noted, traditionally there would be large feasts for the Palestinian people. In the past, we've, we've been there actually during Ramadan reporting in Gaza, and they would have things like chicken and, and lamb and rice.
This year, they have whatever they can to survive and get by. But yet still, given how devout most of the Gazan population is, they will participate in the fast and they will break the fast even if they only have small bits of food to do it with. The UN has been warning for months the humanitarian crisis keeps getting worse for Palestinian civilians with so many hungry, it's almost a famine now in Gaza. Officials there claim at least 20 children have died of malnutrition or dehydration and getting aid in has been difficult at times. So. President Biden said in last week's State of the Union address, I'm directing the U.S. military to lead an emergency mission to establish a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the coast of Gaza that can receive large shipments carrying food, water, medicine, and temporary shelters. So when would that be ready? We don't know the exact timeline, and already the information about it is starting to trickle in. There are reports that indicate a thousand American forces will participate in the broader efforts to get this together. And so they will do so with, according to reports, the security assurance of the Israelis. And so this will be a pier that will allow ships to come from Cyprus after receiving a security screening and drop off aid at what has been described as a floating dock to get to the Palestinians in the northern part of the Strip. And the hope here is that it will alleviate the pressure of these trucks to get from the south of Gaza to the north, knowing that a lot of the infrastructure and the roads have been destroyed inside Gaza amid the past five months of war. Now, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, he said when he was on Fox and Friends on Monday that that he has broad support of the Israeli people for this victory over Hamas that they have to achieve. Is that accurate? The prime minister's description of his support in Israel versus the reality of his support on the ground are two different things. And there is a lot of frustration in the way that this conflict has been handled in the intelligence failures that led to the October 7th massacre and the ability of the prime minister to act diplomatically to reach an agreement that would avoid the deaths of the remaining hostages inside Gaza. And so each and every week there are demonstrations now against the prime minister and his government. And there are also calls from the families of those being held hostage in Gaza to implement a ceasefire agreement at all costs. And so he has support to operate against Hamas and ensure the security of Israel. That has been something that politicians, Netanyahu included, have based their careers and campaigns on. But the way that he will conduct that mission will continue to be controversial to a portion of the Israeli population. And given what's at stake here, the lives of so many Israelis, he will be under a microscope in the way that he operates. With that said, when this conflict is over, there's an understanding in Israel that many people will have to answer for what went wrong. And the ability to push off that judgment day in the Holy Land will only last so long. Trey Inks, Fox News foreign correspondent based in Tel Aviv. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Dumb time. Dumb time. Dumb time. weekdays, noon till 3. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Do these three words make you cringe? Calcium oxalate stones. If so, then this message will be a huge relief because now there's a kidney health supplement that has shown in laboratory tests to reduce the rate of calcium oxalate crystal growth by 99%. That's right, 99%. It's called Kidney Cop, calcium oxalate protector, and nothing else comes close to its success. In fact, it has a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Kidney Cop is so innovative, it's been awarded five U.S. patents, is recommended by doctors and pharmacists, and is winning rave reviews from people all over the country. You can be one of them. Kidney Cop is super affordable. You can purchase affordable Kidney Cop today by visiting Amazon.com, Walmart.com, or KidneyCop.com. If you cringe when you hear the words calcium oxalate and you worry about reoccurrence, then you need Kidney Cop right away. Purchase Kidney Cop today at Amazon.com, Walmart.com, or KidneyCop.com. These statements have not been reviewed by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Sponsored by Calcium Oxalate Labs, Inc. 
sneezing, coughing, a stuffy nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. Then, a friend recommended Navage. Navage provides immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navage helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navage gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait, I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rinse and I felt immediately, I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navage. N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief, and I tell them Navage immediately. This thing is amazing. Navage is available at Navage.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-700-6898. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes or overweight or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-700-6898. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-700-6898. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds too. Call 800-700-6898. 800-700-6898 or BigLou.com. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. Yeah, they're local in Pennsylvania. They have an experienced team which has transformed more than 60,000 spaces. A dedicated design consultant works with you on your choices for refacing custom cabinets, backsplash counters, and tub shower conversion. Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Visit KitchenMagic.com. Tell them Dawn sent you. Now there's a simple, easy, and effective way to clean your nose and protect your health. It's called Navage. Navage. Available at Navage.com. Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. It happens every day. You can recover. Discover hope and help. Never give up on yourself. Join the voices for recovery. For confidential information for mental and substance use disorders, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. News. I'm Sue Guzman. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer praising President Biden's newly released $7.3 trillion budget proposal as bold, optimistic, and responsible. President Biden's budget highlights the sharp contrast between the Democrats' positive, proactive vision and the Republicans' negative, regressive vision for our country. Republicans calling it another example of reckless spending. Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry tenders his resignation as gang violence surges across the country. He fled Haiti after his country spiraled into chaos, bringing violence into the streets and forcing many residents from their homes. Many are hungry. He's going to step down once a transitional council is formed. And singer-songwriter Eric Harmon, who had numerous hit songs in the 70s and 80s, like All By Myself and Hungry Eyes, has died. He was 74. America's listening to Fox News. is the Fox News Rundown. Now a look at sports. The NFL's free agent negotiating period started with a bang on Monday. Former Minnesota Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins will head to Atlanta. The Falcons will give Cousins a four-year, $180 million deal, including $100 million guaranteed, that according to ESPN. Saquon Barkley is leaving the Big Apple, but not the NFC East. Barkley was selected by New York with the second overall pick of the 2018 NFL draft, but he won't finish his career in New York. Barkley reached a three-year, 37.7 five million dollar contract with the philadelphia eagles that according to espn the deal includes 26 million fully guaranteed at signing and the total contract could be worth up to 46.75 million that's sports on the fox news rundown i'm joe morgan fox news 
This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. We are not feeling good about our finances. According to the Northwestern Mutual Planning and Progress Survey, it finds a third of American adults, it asked, don't feel financially secure. And that's up from 27% last year. Northwestern Mutual says despite a growing economy, people have had to endure one financial disruption after another over the past few years, and that's shaken our sense of stability. And so has inflation. Investors are waiting to see the February report on inflation, which arrives this morning. Year over year, economists surveyed by Bloomberg expect to rise exactly as much as it did in January, 3.1 percent, but month to month it could be a tick higher, 0.4 percent. Krispy Kreme is hoping to make some green for St. Patrick's Day. It's rolling out four new holiday-themed donuts, as well as returning its original green glazed donut. And if you do some wearing of the green, you get a free original green glazed donut. Joan Doniger, Bloomberg Radio. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things for our planet. This spring, Fairmount Park Conservancy invites you to connect with your Philadelphia neighborhood parks. Join your local park friends group during Love Your Park Week in May. Or join us for weekly volunteer events all year long throughout the city. Fairmount Park Conservancy works with the city of Philadelphia and its communities to bring parks to life. For information and to sign up, visit myphillypark.org. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that, free. Well, switch to Pure Talk today and you'll get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data security. Now, qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and, of course, mobile hotspot. Now, Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. The average family saves close to $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. It's simple, it's fast, it's easy. Just dial pound 250, say the keyword, save now, claim your eligibility for your free brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, from your phone, dial pound 250, say the keyword, save now, and switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Check your calendars and make plans to be a part of the atmosphere at Citizens Bank Park this season. It's a party at Citizens Bank Park! Philly single game tickets are on sale now. Visit phillies.com to secure your seats to Phil's home games today. Youngsters are sure to smile on Sunday, April 14th when the Phil's host the Pirates at 135 for Cavity Buster's Kids Opening Day. And kids 14 and under receive a sleeveless hoodie. Order tickets now at phillies.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. I'm John Morgan. When you call Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, your very own army springs into action immediately, 24-7. Our investigators, legal staff, and over 900 lawyers work together to fight to get you the best result as quickly and easily as possible. Insurance companies know who we are, and now you know it too. This firm was built for greatness. This firm was built for you. Injured? Call your army. We're ready to roll. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early, so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. 
I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids, no matter where you are, call now. 800-575-6986. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and Yelp and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-575-6986. That's 800-575-6986. Tax Relief Advocates. Real solutions for real people. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3. Philadelphia. Always live on the free Odyssey app. From the Sherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Live and local from Philadelphia. Free speech lives here. Here. It's Kale and Company on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. And away we go live on this Tuesday, March 12th. It is indeed Kale and Company. You're right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Always live on the free Odyssey app. And of course, streaming live for your video viewing pleasure on YouTube. As we head until 10 o'clock this morning, 855-839-1210, the phone number on social media at 1210WPHT. I am at Nick Kale, K-A-Y-A-L. Don Stenzlin with the news, Greg Stocker, the chairman of the board, Phil Omquist, Anthony Dorenzo, our associate producers. Oh, do we have a lot to delve into today? All sorts of big, juicy topics. Dawn, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Looked out of uh, a restaurant window last night at 7.15. I said, wow, blue skies in the sun. Woohoo! What a concept at 7.15 in the <laughs> evening. Gregory, how are you? I'm just watching some of the, this video of Tucker Carlson and Chris Cuomo. I, I, didn't, and, I didn't have that on my 2024 bingo card. And I got to <laughs> say, everybody's being worked. It's all giant work. The entire industry is one giant work. They're sitting here giggling. Why did you hate me? Well, you know, it was just something. Why did you? Well, you know, some of it was true. Other was just it. Oh, God. You nauseating. my brother. These two are nauseating. And anybody who falls for this, and this guy said this, and this guy said that, stop. You're being worked. Cuomo's jacked, by the way. Did you see how ripped that dude is? They're all grifters and liars, and I hate them all. Thank you. You picked the hell of Good an Good morning. Indi- you picked the hell of an industry to be a brand manager for. <laughs> well, not you guys. No, I'm talking about these people. I know. I know. Dawn believes every crazy thing she does. <laughs> Dawn, your rebuttal, ma'am. Could be I one do. of those programs, folks. I do. <laughs> but beware the woman who believes crazy things. Yeah, it's true. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, 602. Man. Yes. <laughs> Where's the wisdom? It's going to be a wild one today, folks. It is. It is. Big take this morning. That could have been the big take yesterday, but there was so much with Joe and Trump that I, <laughs> I saved this for today. The fallout from International Women's Day on Friday, which I thought took a wrong turn. But that's okay, because March is Women's History Month. So we will talk about that in the big take this morning. Also... I'll tell you what, this TikTok story is not going away. It is very fascinating. There's many updates to this as we get closer and closer to Congress getting ready to act on it. We'll get to that this morning. Deadspin says, bye bye Very good story. I'm going to actually dance on a grave this morning. Something, oh, no. I, something I normally don't Ooh, do. Oh, no. But every now and then you run across an organization or a writer and you just say, you know what? That cockroach deserves what he got. Just be careful. Just be careful. I know where you're going here. I'm not going to give it away, but just be careful about about dancing on um, industries that might go away. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, pal. Be careful pal. what you wish yeah, for. Thank please. you, Don Stenzel. Thank <laughs> you. Just be careful uh-huh. about how, how much you want to take glee in other people's losing their jobs. <laughs> That's all I can say. Criminal justice reform. <laughs> We'll get to that story this morning. 
Woo. Shocking, less than four years later, all of a sudden big cities are reversing course on their softening on crime policies. You know, the market always has a way of correcting itself. We'll get to all of that. We have the cut sheet as well. And it's a busy day of news. And for that, we go to the great Dawn Stenzel in round number one at 604. And good morning, Kale and Company News Live. 41 degrees, clear skies this morning, and we are in for some spring-like weather beginning today. We're heading up to heating up to 66 degrees this morning. We do have a developing story with a fire in North Philadelphia that firefighters have been battling overnight with uh, at least five people injured. We're following that for you. And as well, a break in the case involving the students shot last week. Two suspects arrested in connection to last week's shooting at a school bus stop, which is also a SEPTA bus stop in Philadelphia in the Burholm section of Philadelphia, the Northeast, injuring those eight teenagers, one who remains in critical condition this morning. Those suspects ID'd is 18-year-old Jamal Tucker. He actually turned himself in over the weekend. It looks like late Friday he turned himself in because apparently authorities say that he knew that they were coming for him. The other suspect, another teenager, 18-year-old, Aniel Bugs taken into custody by U.S. Marshals over the weekend. We didn't learn about this until a news conference that happened yesterday afternoon, but we're getting some of the details. And in those details, police say that they have confiscated the weapons, including a fully loaded 40 caliber Glock 22 pistol with an extended magazine that was recovered. One of the Glocks also had laser sights and a Glock switch. That means that it would be like a bump switch. It would be turned from a semi-automatic into, and I'm quoting the officer here, much like a fully automatic machine gun. Wow. Other, yeah. Yeah, I saw Keeley tweeted out the video of the eight, uh, the kid from Saturday being brought out by U.S. Marshals. Not only was he handcuffed, he was shackled at his ankles. Looked like he had those... Uh, Croc flip flop things on. Look like they probably got him very early in the morning when he was probably asleep. Yeah. 18. Yep. So police say they were able to match the the gun, the guns to the shell casings. Remember, we got that new. We we re- did receive more funding for the uh, gum lab, the crime lab. And from what I hear from law enforcement, that has been a game changer in you know more quickly solving some of these crimes. So. A lot, um, lot of lab work, a lot of science went into this as well to connect all of those dots. They're still looking for two others. So these two now, 18, facing aggravated assault, weapons offenses, a lot of other charges. They're being held on more than $2 million bail. But now there is a search for two other suspects in this case. That continues. And they put out the word yesterday during this news conference, we know who you are, just turn yourselves in. And, it, you know. That's the word from police Mm -hmm. asking the public, saying anybody who helps the two who they're still looking for, then you would be an accomplice. So you face charges as well. As far as those injured students between the ages of 15 to 17, and as I said at the top, uh, that one 16-year-old boy shot some nine times who appeared to be the target, obviously. He remains in very critical condition this morning. They've been able to stabilize the conditions of the other students who did not intend, who did, did not, according to authorities, appear to be the target. Unfortunately, they were standing on that bus stop. Yeah, and the alternating grief counseling continues today, I think. Yeah, so the the juniors and seniors at Northeast High School, they're, they, they're, yesterday and today are their days getting that much-needed counseling, and then it switches. They'll stay home and do virtual, and then Wednesday, Thursday, looks like the ninth and 10th graders, they will go. Okay. So we have that going on. I know there's a lot of political news, but I'm running long here just because that one, there were so many details to it. We're still following it. The go- I just have to go to some good news that I think all of us in Philadelphia are celebrating, and that is because Saquon Barkley, running back, we got him, and uh, Philadelphia is doing a collective cheer. So former New York Giant, but most importantly, you know, 
We are Penn State. So reached a deal reportedly with the Eagles. L- Lehigh Rear Valley deal. kid, by the way. Yeah. Whitehall, Pennsylvania, baby. I saw. Do you guys want to take an over-under on how many games he'll play this season? Would you <laughs> stop? Uh, 12 and a half. No, I believe Nine. he's very injury-prone, guys. Nine. I'm, just, I'm just warning you. Nine. But this means bye-bye to Mr. Swift from St. Joseph's Prep. He went, I think, to the Bears in free agency. But he's, row. But he's gone. Mm. Yeah, I saw people. I was excited for it because I think when, when Barkley is healthy, he's electric. And everyone was like, oh, so we're just not going to address our defense? I guess we're going to give up 50 points a game? Nobody's ever happy. <laughs> How many holes do you expect to fill in one day? But the thing is, all the Giants fans who secretly cried that they lost and were like, oh, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. He'll play nine games. But he'll play. Look, he's. He's dynamite. Yes. Very when he's exciting. healthy, he's very, very good. Tiki Barber, former Giant, who's now does afternoons on WFAN, yeah. uh, said that uh, said that Saquon Barkley is dead to him. Yeah. <laughs> because he went to the Eagles. They've never they've never had a good relationship, apparently. Yeah. They had like a legit beef. Mm. Barkley always felt like Tiki Barber was attacking him. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a lot of Boeing news. Uh, a whistle whistleblower, John Barnett, was found dead. We have. Uh, Boeing, a lot of Boeing news. We also have Pete Buttigieg here in Philadelphia. Here, Pete! Yes, he's going to be in Philadelphia today. And Boeing facing multiple government investigations. Company needing to make a serious transformation around its safety and manufacturing quality. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said, speaking out, I don't believe he's here necessarily for Boeing. I think he's here to take a victory lap for a lot of the huge uh, money dollars, federal dollars that we're getting especially that project that will connect, reconnect Chinatown over the Vine Street Expressway. But a lot going on today. So with that, this is Kale & Company News Live. All right, Dawn, thank you very much. 611 on this Tuesday morning. Let's get to another Big Take. The Big Take on Kale & Company. All right, the Big Take this morning is brought to you by the Piazza Auto Group. International Women's Day takes a wrong turn. Last Friday was International Women's Day. And had it not have been for a slew of news over the weekend surrounding Joe Biden and Donald Trump in swing states like Pennsylvania and Georgia, this would have been yesterday's big take for me. But what started out as International Women's Day turned into International Female Injustice Day from the usual suspects in the media. What biological females have to endure after all the advancements and progress they've made in my eyes, is unacceptable. All because people have to factor in feelings over facts and play make-believe with a select few that are suffering what I believe is a mental health breakdown and crisis. And what makes it even more egregious is that March is Women's History Month, no less. But that doesn't matter. On Thursday night, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson invited Riley Gaines to the State of the Union. And on Friday, Riley Gaines was a guest of the Joe Rogan podcast, And she had this to say about her unwavering passion and the fight that she continues to wage to save women's sports. Listen and watch this. What was your first introduction to this insanity of biological men with gender dysphoria trying to compete with women? Finals of the 100 freestyle. Top eight women in the entire nation. And you've got a six foot four man in a women's swimsuit with a bulge next to a woman wearing only a Speedo. (sighs) Your reaction was my reaction. I'm thinking to myself, it's me. I'm the crazy one. It must be. This is the freaking Twilight Zone. And through this, is there anyone countering that? We were told you'll never get a job if you speak out about this. Your employer is going to look you up and see that you're a trans folk. Was this a conversation that someone actually had with you? Yeah. I mean, we had to go to training. They brought in an outside professional who sat us down and taught us how to use she, her pronouns. You? An actual she, her. An actual she, her. How do you use she, her pronouns? We had to go through these interview questions. They'd throw a question at us. If we didn't answer their fake interview question to their standard, we had to go through it again. Oh, my God. Yeah. Indoctrination. If you're on that team, you're a woman, and you have a biological male walking around naked in the locker room with women, and if you're uncomfortable with that, you should educate yourself. You and said learn it. how to use she, her pronouns and accept defeat to this person that's not a woman. And the whole world's like, yay, diversity. And yeah. you must feel like you're in a f- movie or something. Did you listen to that absurdity? This is going on in real life in real time. You are wrong for believing in biology. So the left wingers have established that it's wrong to be a biological female and speak up about biological men 
pretending to be female and coming into women's athletics. But it doesn't stop there. On Friday, USA Today sports columnist Lindsay Schnell wrote a column titled Women's Basketball Needs Faces of the Future to be Black. Enter Juju Watkins and Hannah Hidalgo. That's a real headline on usatoday.com. All because, in my opinion, left-wing sports media has lost their mind because Iowa's Caitlin Clark is a heterosexual, biological female who happens to be white. I would ask Lindsay Schnell this question. Why does the face of women's basketball, or any sport for that matter, have to be of any race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation? Greatness is greatness. Why can't we appreciate greatness without viewing it through a certain lens or a certain prism? This is exactly why I stopped subscribing to papers like the USA Today years ago. FYI, of course, Lindsay Schnell, who wrote the column, is a white female. She actually goes on to write the following in her column, quote, with Caitlin Clark headed to the 2024 WNBA draft, where she's projected to be the first overall pick, the nation's second leading scorer behind Clark is Watkins, and she is positioned to become the face of women's basketball. She'll be joined by Notre Dame point guard Hannah Hidalgo, the other favorite for freshman of the year. Not lost on any of the power brokers in the game, both of these players are black. And in a game built by black women, it matters that the faces of the future look like the faces of the past, end quote. So by Lindsey Schnell's logic, Tiger Woods is the greatest icon in golf history. But because golf was built by overwhelmingly white men, it's best that the new face of golf in the future be white, not black and Asian like Tiger Woods is. Could you imagine if she wrote that column? More golfers like Jack Nicklaus and Arnold Palmer because they're white men. She'd be fired immediately. The story would never be published and wouldn't get past the editor's desk. The obsession of cosmetics in 2024 is insane. She's actually arguing against diversity. So we want diversity when it fits the agenda and the narrative. But in women's basketball, we got to get back to the way it used to be. Okay, I got you. But see, reverse racism in women's athletics is permissible because it comes from the virtue signaling white, woke, liberal female writer. But maybe help is on the way. In 2023, just a year ago at this time for International Women's Day, Hannah Storm, longtime Emmy award-winning anchor for NBC and ESPN, penned an essay for Women's History Month, and she included Leah Thomas of the University of Pennsylvania in her tribute. Leah is the male who, at Penn, decided to compete as a female and take Riley Gaines' place in history. Listen and watch this clip from one year ago. In 2022, swimmer Leah Thomas became the first transgender athlete to win an NCAA Division I championship by winning the 500 freestyle. The Texas native competed for three seasons on the men's swim team at the University of Pennsylvania. She began her transition after her sophomore season and after a gap year due to the pandemic that forced the Ivy League to cancel all sports. Thomas made her debut as a member of the women's team in December 2021. Being trans is, is not a choice. I didn't have any other choice because not transitioning was not leading me anywhere. She competed amidst criticism from the swimming community, competitors, and teammates. She said she hopes her persistence serves a larger purpose. People will say, oh, she just transitioned, so she would have an advantage, so she could win. I transitioned to be happy. Yeah, so courageous for dudes to dunk on women in women's sports. But this year, no mention of Leah Thomas or any biological male pretending to be a female. Maybe ESPN has realized that an overwhelming majority of Americans reject this school of thought. Here's an excerpt of Hannah Storm's 2024 essay for the month of March and Women's History Month. Listen and watch this, which just came out this weekend. On this International Women's Day, we celebrate all that it means to be a woman. A woman is undeterred, confident, fearless. 
persistent, powerful, tenacious, tough, graceful, unapologetic. And Angel Reese knows a ring is coming. A woman can be enduring, precocious, competitive, a fighter, a pioneer, an influencer, a sensation, an inspiration. It's gonna be De Bruna from Switzerland. Well done. A woman achieves the Ballon d'Or, the MVP, the trophy, the title, the world record. And not a dude with a bulge in a bathing suit or a tuck job. Interesting pivot by ESPN just one year later, don't you think? And how about this for having a backbone in 2024? Women's Professional Golf Tour has just banned transgender golfer Haley Davidson with changes to its gender policy. In a win for female athletes, NXXT Golf, a women's professional tour, has announced just recently that all competitors must be a biological female at birth to participate. This means that transgender golfer Haley Davidson, a three-time winner on their tour, is no longer eligible to play. A victory for female athletics and biological women. Good luck against the guys, Haley. And kudos to the CEO of NXXT, Stuart McKinnon, who issued this statement, quote, As we navigate through the evolving landscape of sports, it is crucial to uphold the competitive integrity that is the cornerstone of women's sports. Well said. He's not misgendering Haley Davidson. Haley Davidson misgendered himself, and the CEO refused to play along anymore. See, we need more of this in March for Women's History Month. More of this in 2024, and more of this for the foreseeable future as we restore sanity to a world that obviously has lost it. And that's the big take. The big take on Kale and Company. All right, big take this morning brought to you by the Piazza Auto Group at Piazza Honda of Philadelphia, Langhorne, Pottstown, Reading, and Springfield. You can get financing as low as 2.9% for 36 months on select new models, including the 2024 Accord, Civic, and HRV, only for a limited time. Shop PiazzaHonda.com today. You can jump in 855 839 1210. On social media at 1210 WPHT, and of course in the Kale and Company comment community, just go to youtube.com slash at 1210 WPHT and hit the like and subscribe buttons. We'll come back, get thoughts on this, and then we'll delve into the latest update for TikTok. There is just so many breaking elements to this story that we'll try to make sense of as we continue here in the 6 o'clock hour. It's Kale and Company on this Tuesday morning. Nick, Dawn, and Greg on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Stay warm this month with Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Jack Daniels is America's oldest registered distillery and aged in handcrafted, toasted, and charred new American white oak barrels. Stop by your local PA Fine Wine and Good Spirits location to pick up Jack Daniels Black Label, Tennessee Honey, Tennessee Fire, and Tennessee Apple 750 milliliters on sale all month. And please drink responsibly. Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniels Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks. Copyright 2020, Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. Steamfitters Local Union 420 is a proud 120-year-old labor organization. We have been providing the petrochemical, nuclear, and energy industry with the safest and most highly skilled steamfitters, welders, and HVAC service techs. Our members have been trained in all aspects of the petrochemical, nuclear, and energy industry so that our welding and rigging procedures exceed the industry standard. Contact Steamfitters Local Union 420 for all of your energy-related needs and visit our website for more information at lu420.com. At Cherry Hill Volvo, an XC40 can be leased for as low as $459 and an XC90 leased for as low as $629. Interest rates are as low as 4%. Along with Volvo-sponsored incentives, the Cherry Hill Volvo offers are very aggressive. When purchasing or leasing a new Cherry Hill Volvo, special additional incentives will be given when the transaction is completed by March 18th. Spring into Cherry Hill Volvo now for these incredibly fabulous offers. Texting enrolls you into reoccurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Haven't seen you around the gym for a while. Yeah, I've really fallen off. Since I turned 40, I just don't get the results I 
used to get. Could be a lower testosterone. Lower T. Yeah, I went through it a while back. Once you hit 40, your body has less free testosterone. I got Nugenix Total T, and it's made a huge difference for me. I've seen that on TV. Is it for real? Oh, yeah. The patented key ingredient is something called Testafin, which helps boost free and total testosterone levels to help you trim up and stay lean. And it's made a difference for you? Man, I feel like I'm in my 20s again. At work, in the gym, and in the bedroom. Are they still giving out complimentary bottles for people to try it for themselves? Yeah, you just need to send them a text. Text SLASH to 321321 right now for your complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea, the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. Plus, text now and we'll include a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, our most powerful fat incinerator ever to help you get back into shape fast, absolutely free. Text SLASH to 321321. That's SLASH to 321321. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Learn more about your coverage options at ibx.com. Doors take us to summers away, or winter adventures, and afternoon getaways. Your dedicated Fidelity Advisor can help you open those doors by working with you on a comprehensive plan to help you reach your wealth's full potential, because doors were meant to be opened. Visit fidelity.com slash wealth. Investment minimum supply. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. Member NYSE SIPC. Networks make it possible to share data from lots of places, like a bird sanctuary. Good eye. There is a typo. Thanks. But to make them powerful enough to deliver new opportunities at the edge, you need CDW and Aruba. CDW experts can help design and implement an Aruba Edge Services platform, which unifies, secures, and automates network environments everywhere, so you can translate data into innovation. Sorry, do you mind? This is confidential. Aruba makes visibility at the edge possible. CDW makes it powerful. Learn more at cdw.com slash Aruba. Your 401k goes up and down. That's fine when you're 40, but not when you're 60. Find out how to protect your hard-earned money. Tune in to the Retirement Spectrum with Alan Cohen. Saturdays at 3 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. If you've been dealing with a POS system that just isn't getting the job done and you're in the restaurant, retail, or casino business, you need to call my friends at PDQ Signature Systems. Joe Flynn and his team at PDQ have the fastest and easiest POS system to learn, use, and manage. Manage. Their all-in-one POS system will save you time, effort, and money. Whether you have a single location restaurant or thousands of locations, PDQ can help grow your business like never before. Visit PDQPOS.com. Deanna got some really bad news from the IRS. They said you owe quite a bit of money. They told me the possibilities of garnishing my wages, taking my house, taking my car. Deanna found out about Optima Tax Relief. They've resolved over a billion dollars for their clients. Optima Tax saved my life. Call Optima now for a free consultation. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. For details, visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. It's Fran Dunphy, head coach of the LaSalle Explorers. Join me and the rest of the big five coaches at the Coaches vs. Cancer Tourney Tip-Off Breakfast, presented by Acme Markets on Monday, March 18th on the iconic Palestra Floor. Get tips for your bracket from Philly sports media personalities and meet the rest of the big five coaches. Support the American Cancer Society and enjoy the breakfast of a lifetime. For tickets and info, please visit phillycvc.org. That's phillycvc.org. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies. Because when people don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from, they can truly thrive, like Marta. And now we'll hear from our class valedictorian, who with our hard work never ceases to amaze us. Please welcome Marta Moreno. And Alex. Hey, Alex. How did the interview go? I did it! I got the job! I can't believe it! I knew it. Let's meet up later to celebrate. And Diego. Mom! 
I got first place at the science fair with my volcano project. That's amazing, sweetie. Congratulations. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished, and everyone deserves to live a full life. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. Feedingamerica.org slash act now. A public service announcement brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Be sure to follow Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. All right, 629, welcome back in Tuesday morning. It's Kale and Company, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Nick, Dawn, and Greg get us on the free Odyssey app. Watch us live on YouTube. Cut sheet is going to be absolutely loaded for a second straight day. That's coming up in just about an hour and 15 minutes. Snickers fires back at the big guy, claiming uh, shrinkflation is not a thing with our company. We'll get to that. Criminal justice reform, Deadspin, and TikTok all still on the way this morning. Uh, But before we do get to the TikTok story, I'd be remiss if I did not bring in uh, the great Dawn Stenzlin for a thought here because, well, it is her month, and last Friday was her day. You know, Dawn, I I just forget Riley Gaines for a moment, forget the trans competition. You know, of all the stuff that I kind of highlighted in the world of uh, females from Friday and this past weekend. Maybe the one that outrages me the most is the USA Today. Like it, and I'm not like I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm some college basketball expert. I could probably name seven college basketball players in my lifetime that I can recall off the top of my head. But it just feels to me, from a media coverage standpoint, when you think about Caitlin Clark at Iowa, there's just so many people that are writing these columns and having these opinions on TV and all of these talking heads always looking for an out to get away from the fact that they just can't seem to understand that there's just greatness before us. Imagine writing a column saying, you know, we need to go back to the faces of the past. And if the faces of the past were white, do you think that writer would have the temerity to write that column? But no, this this columnist for the USA Today says, you know, with Caitlin Clark leaving the game, it's time to return college basketball to where it belongs, founded by black women. I don't know. If we flip the races around, I think we would have a lot of people losing their minds in the media on a, on a Monday morning. Yeah. You know, number one, I, th- I simply think that for some, for whatever reason, we want to focus on, we've gotten worse, not better. We, we took three steps forward and two steps back. In other words, I think of Dr. Martin Luther King saying, dreaming of the day when we could be judged by only by the content of our character and mm-hmm. focusing on that. Yep. And so, you know, I think about that and how that standard applies to today in which it's all about checking the box and narrowing your focus as to what you're defined as. Mm-hmm. And so instead of saying, hey, you know, isn't isn't this individual amazing and they're talented and they're wonderful. And so isn't it then worse for women? You know, Saquon Barkley when, when we celebrated him earlier this morning, and I did not do that on purpose ahead of your big take, but thinking about, think of the, con- we never said, hey, check the boxes of Saquon. Hey, mm-hmm. what is his gender? What is his, what are right. his pros and pronouns? What are, what, you know, what ethnicity? Nobody mentioned any of that, did right. they? Nobody. Right. No. Can he run the ball? And oh, by the way, he's a local guy. He's fit. Yeah. There's your story. He's local. He's, he's awesome. Everybody's excited. Right. Nobody's talking about. Nobody's defining him in these narrow ways. Mm-hmm. And and so by doing that, in particular to you know, women or and or minorities or anybody, what you're doing is you're boxing them in. Yep. You're limiting them. That's correct. We are going from kind of the broad scope and a 30,000 foot view and we're narrowing down and we're crunching in and we're putting you into one specific aisle, one specific column, right? Yeah. And it's it's so infuriating, and it's just, I figured I would bring that up today. I, I would have led with that on yesterday's show if we didn't have so much from Joe and Trump over the weekend with rallies and speeches and gaffes and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, yeah. it's we're coming off of International Women's Day on Friday, uh, and obviously this is your month, you know? Yes. February's Black History Month. March is Women's Month. 
June oh. is Pride Month. Everybody gets a month. All I want to, well, except white dudes. Yeah, straight white cis men. I, we don't get anything. You get every day. Like, like we're, the, you know, we're, we're persona <laughs> non grata anymore. You know, in this world of identity politics. Yeah, we're like the boogeyman. <laughs> but I still say Pistol Pete Maravich deserves, you know, anybody who quote unquote beats his record, there should be a little asterisk there. You're really going down with that I'm, ship, I'm huh? going, I'm All going. Right. Because I, th- I got to be consistent here. Mm-hmm. If you're the best, you're the best. And just because a woman did this or somebody, did, no. All right. Pistol Pete. Fair enough. He's the man. 855-839-1210 <laughs> if you want to jump in. So let's get to this TikTok story that continues to gain momentum here. And I find it fascinating. And I was thinking about this, and there's this new column out from Politico. Um, I'm going to read you a little bit of this. But I, I just want you to highlight and think about everything under the TikTok umbrella that we're kind of zeroing in on here. So we've got the concept of a ban. We have the concept here of free speech. We have the concept of national security and a communist nation spying on us. In a bizarre world, we have Democrats that use it very well, right? The TikTok app, Democrats are very good at it, but yet Biden wants to ban it. And now in a divided political world, where Republicans and Democrats can't really agree on whether or not today's March 12th, we have a bipartisan effort with the House of Representatives moving towards this. Yet on the other side of the ledger, Donald Trump is on Truth Social. He wants to keep TikTok because he doesn't want Meta to gain new users if TikTok is forced to no longer operate in the United States, Meta being Facebook and Instagram. And then I was thinking about this. My girls are on TikTok merely for watching dance videos and then recording themselves to post dance videos of themselves. Our show, in some regards, is not dependent on TikTok, but we like to highlight the libs of TikTok and all of the insanity on that app in the cut sheet at 745 and 930. And I was also thinking about this as a one social media app kind of guy, Twitter slash X being my platform of choice. I don't want everybody leaving TikTok once it's banned and flooding my little playground, so to speak, that has been kind of reestablished under Elon Musk. So you have all of that to think about here. And here's the latest, and this is courtesy of Politico. They go on to say that the social media giant is encouraging its millions of users to flood lawmakers' offices to stop a bill that would eventually ban the video sharing app. We talked about that yesterday. But since then, TikTok is now actually sending out push alerts in waves to users over the age of 18 across the country ever since the weekend, urging them to call their lawmakers to stop the TikTok ban. The latest campaign was sent to smaller groups of users going out over the last several days and is continuing to go out, a TikTok uh, spokesperson told Politico. These recent efforts follow a similar TikTok push alert sent last week on the day that the House Energy and Commerce Committee voted 50-0 to advance this bipartisan bill. In a Sunday statement, House Majority Leader Steve Scalise said TikTok and its alleged ties to the Chinese Communist Party pose, quote, a significant national security threat to the U.S., Quote, since this rushed hearing, we've continued to educate our users about what's happening and this legislation that would ban TikTok, said Alex Horick, a TikTok spokesperson. There are a variety of alerts going out to certain users with one saying, quote, if the House of Representatives vote to ban TikTok on Wednesday, that, that vote's coming up tomorrow. So we will certainly uh, you know, talk about that Thursday morning, uh, probably for the big take. The government will take away the community that you and millions of other Americans love. Users can now enter their own zip code to directly call their lawmakers Courtesy of the TikTok app. Yesterday, the select committee on the uh, Chinese Communist Party, whose leaders are Mike Gallagher, Republican from Wisconsin, and Raja Krishnanurdi, Democrat from Illinois, authored the TikTok bill, posted on X that TikTok is, quote, still lying to its users and using them to lobby Congress to benefit a foreign adversary, the CCP. So you have Dems, you have Republicans, all in lockstep with this, yet. There are some now that are pushing back against the ban. I look at it this way. As a user 
I couldn't care less. I don't use the app. I'm, I've never been on it. I never will be, unless somehow Stalker makes us some sort of mandate for the station or something like that. But we, we, we get some of our content from there. At the end of the day, I don't think bans work. I believe in free speech. But here's where I find myself in a predicament. Free speech versus national security. This, that's what this comes down to, to me. Oh, you with the national security. If this is a genuine threat, <laughs> Lord. if this is a genuine threat, and I don't know that it is. Threat. Everything's a genuine threat. I don't threat. know that it is, but it's the only social media app with direct ties to the Communist Chinese Party. And I think about China. They fly spy balloons across our country. They have rogue police precincts in our city. They basically have made America its you-know-what. And to be honest with it about it, I, I'm kind of sick of it. I would like to just, and I'm not saying we should go to war. I'm not saying we should destroy China. Although, if you want to nuke it and turn it into a giant golf course, that'd be fine by me. I'd play golf to the to my to my wrists break. But like at some point, don't you have to push back against China in some capacity? And if this is the modality to do it, is it that big of a deal? I mean, okay, the other social media platforms are all based in Silicon Valley. That's a different kind of evil. We know what they're capable of over the last four years with elections and banning information and the dissemination uh, of stories on social media. But to me, it comes down to free speech. And I don't know that TikTok is necessarily the place where people go to espouse all sorts of speech. Although we do hear these, you know, these trans diatribes and whether we agree with it or not, it's free speech. They're on there complaining. They're on there saying why they should be this or why they shouldn't be that. So I think it comes down to really two simple elements that every American and I think everybody listening to this show cares about free speech and national security and national security is in the news because our southern border is wide open. So we're getting it security wise directly with human beings and also on a technological intellectual level with big tech in these apps. So I, I, I think it's a tough I think it's a tough call. I really do. Nick's not wrong when you when you say that. Okay, I, what I hear you saying is is thinking about looking at the worldview that we are supposed to be democracy, this bright light in the world. And so when we consider the fact that China itself, China will not let its own people see TikTok in the way we see it. They they ban they ban their own product. Yeah, it's, it's only it's, like an educational tool. That's right. It, they ban. Everything that all the stuff we see, they ban. Also, they prohibit everything from Google to Twitter. I don't know if they get DuckDuckGo, but I kind of doubt it. Yeah. And and so think about it. To the rest of the world, if we ban TikTok, then everybody says, oh, well, look, they're just like the People's Republic of China. They're the same mm -hmm. because they're banning everything. On the other side, there are ways, in, in my humble opinion, there are ways that we could just make it more secure. In other words, if there is a risk, that there's one proposal, there are all these different proposals, there's one proposal which also bothers me that they said as far as the servers, mm -hmm. all the information has to be stored, that they gather has to be stored on U.S. government servers. I'm like, oh, well, great. Yeah. So our own government can sp take the information. I don't think that's a solution. Right. How about you just don't, don't track people to this extensive level because TikTok did admit they ByteDance did admit they fired a bunch of people mm -hmm. and they we know that they do gather an extensive amount of information. Yeah. That is a fact. So why don't you just make it more secure? Rather than ban it. And this is what it's like it you know what it's like? It's like uh somebody in the building wears too much body spray. One person. Yeah. And so rather than just somebody having the courage to go up to somebody and go, you know what, dude, you smell like a like a perfume factory. And or ma'am. Or ma'am, a uh, person. Uh, you, whew, you know, nobody, people like run from you in the hall. Yeah. Because, wow, yeah. could you just tone it down? Two score rather than do Right. Rather than do that, rather than do that, they write broad brush memos and say, nobody can wear perfume or cologne in the building because they they just don't want to deal with the one laser-focused issue. Right. That's kind of like this here. Let me just say this to both of you, is that you can take, uh, take the word TikTok out of it and put guns in there. Guns, to some people, are a national security threat. So uh, if, if in the wrong hands, whoa, they can be whoa, used the whoa. same way. No, I completely disagree. We have hundreds okay. of millions of guns 
hundreds of millions of guns. And hundreds of millions of people in, use TikTok. Mostly in in red states. Yes, Greg. However, the issue is what are they gathering? What are they gathering? That's this is what nothing I, that's like That's what guns. I truly want to know. Guns it, 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 right. are not gathering anybody's information. No, well, but my basic- brother, in, you know what I mean? Any of my relatives who have all of their guns properly locked up and properly following every I'm law. I'm just saying these are slippery slopes. These are no, slippery slopes. No, it's not. A, no, it has nothing but, to do with the Second Amendment. I, I, I didn't say it did. I'm just saying that, really that, you, that you, could, you could use nope, that can't. argument for anything. Nope, you can't. Absolutely. You nope. Guns are a national security no, threat. Okay, let's ban them. They're secretly and wrongfully. Ga- I know. Look at him. He's he. Look at him. Let me see his face. <laughs> He's doing. He does this to me at freaking six forty four in the morning. He triggered you. <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> he does with this the on gun purpose. Comment. Yeah, but no. we're talking about information, right? So we get. And they're it. All- illegally taking your information without you knowing it, and it's every extensive. company is. Well, that's my point. It's, it's all extensive. Of our, Greg. Every company is. In, in this day and age of this device, all of our information is compromised, yes. right? Debit card information, where where our GPS tracking location is, all of that. My question would be, if this is truly a national security threat, this specific app. I want to know real specifics. I want to know true details. How? Well, they're tracking us. They know, okay, and what are they doing with that information? Are they going to harm us? Are they going to uh, steal our identities? Are they going to steal our our financial resources? Are they going to take money out of our bank? Like, what specifically causes TikTok to be a national security threat? And if you can convince me and explain it in a way that the common folk understands and can process then I'd be okay with it. But again, I'm looking at it from the free speech standpoint. As much as I disagree, I don't like deplatforming people. You could say the most ridiculous thing, and most of the stuff that we talk about on this show are stories and topics that I disagree with the viewpoint of, but I'm never going to say we need to deplatform people. Okay, so wait. So you're saying in the name of the First Amendment, keep TikTok... Generally speaking, but because okay. yes, and but now we, like here, here we have the government stepping in, right? We we here's the thing: we we said in 2020 and 2021 we didn't like it when when Twitter didn't show the Hunter Biden story and we got censored. So the whole thing, you look at it from well, if we don't like being shut down, why should we be advocating for TikTok users to be yeah. shut down, right? Yeah, I mean, just create comprehensive laws that limit the collection and or misuse of Americans' online personal data that'll and make sure st- that'll that, stop it. And make sure that you don't export it. That's another issue because you're exporting the data, right? But but here's my biggest problem with all of this. We're talking about TikTok and personal information. We entrust this company with making all of our basically a ton of our prescription meds. So the, the all the pills that you know your all your all your grandparents and parents take that many many Americans take that children take these pills come from this place that we're now saying oh oh, oh they might have my credit card number mm-hmm. and by the way we're in bed with this country right I, you know look at and I I have the figure somewhere that I had looked up in my research um, about this yesterday because I thought we'd talk more about it but we owe China. A ton of money. In yeah. other words, we they are our banker. We are in debt to them. They bought up so much of our debt. Yeah. And so what why are they incentivized to do anything bad with this? Mm-hmm. So when they say national security, well if you think that the Communist Party of China is a danger to us, maybe you ought to start with not having them make the pills we swallow every day. Yeah. Well now they're buying up farmland in this country, so where where we draw the line and where we start to well, enforce uh, and fight back against that country is uh, up for debate. Eight five five Sanders says no. Yeah, you're right. Eight five five eight three nine twelve ten. The number. Quick break. We'll come back. Wrap up the six o'clock hour next. If you want to jump in, you can certainly do so. Kale and Company Talk Radio twelve ten WPHD. So sixty six degrees today. We're in the seventies for the rest of the week. The grass is getting greener, and we're all dreaming of spring. It was out yesterday with. My buddy boy, he's 15, you know, and he's doing great. But it's more important than ever for Buddy, more than anybody in my family, that the lawn is safe for him to play on. And that really is one of the many reasons that I'm so proud that we've chosen a lawn care service that provides yeah, better results and is beautiful and lush, but is safer for Buddy Boy, safe for our family and for our pets 
And my husband, Larry's like, oh, great. She's more worried about the dog's health on the lawn than mine. But come on already. Buddy Boy spends more time in the lawn than any of us. Whether it's you, your kids, your dog, your cat. This is why I choose Natural Lawn of America. That is my lawn care company. And Natural Lawn's environmentally friendly approach to lawn care has been creating green lawns. I'm talking lush, beautiful green lawns more naturally and with fewer weeds since 1987. And this is not some one-size-fits-all company. Their technicians are going to work to determine the specific needs of your lawn. So Natural Lawn's exclusive organic-based products are designed to work with nature, not against it. And that means they're safer for every single member of your family, as I said, even the furriest ones. So kick that chemical lawn habit. Get started today with Natural Lawn's safer products and programs. Take advantage of their limited-time offer right now, free seating every year. Schedule Natural Lawn's full service program. Get free seeding every single year. 800 free seed, 800 F R E E S E E D, 800 free seed. Choose my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Greener grass, fewer weeds, guaranteed. Tell them Dawn sent you. Win a 2024 BMW 740i X Drive sedan during the Race to the Finish promotion at Borgata Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Now through April 27th, earn entries on slots and table games for your chance at being one of 1,575 lucky winners. Plus, two players will win a 2024 BMW. Drawings every Saturday with grand prize drawings on March 30th and April 27th. $1,575,000 Race to the Finish. Only at Borgata. Must be 21 or over. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. You're all set with your new Navian water heater. I can't wait to take a shower without running out of hot water. I'm just going to love my Navian tankless water heater. I just want to say thank Oh, no need to say that, ma'am. You'll always love Navian's high efficiency that will save you money on gas bills compared to other water heaters. I love how I have more space with its wall-hanging design. Please let me say thank Nope. Sorry, miss. I know you appreciate it, but I can't let you say it. Why not? Because with Navian, it's a tankless job. How long have you been waiting to use that? You'd be surprised. Find a Navian installer near you at tanklessmadesimple.com. If you want jazz music, go to New Orleans. Bagels, New York. And for psychics, think California Psychics. You want the best, you go to the best. At California Psychics, home of free spirits and open minds, we know better than anyone what makes a good psychic. That's why we guarantee, if your reading isn't life-changing, it's free. Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com and experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Lose 20 to 40 plus pounds guaranteed with NJ Diet. NJ Diet uses DNA and blood work to help you lose weight and keep it off. Tune into their radio show Sundays at 2 or visit NJDiet.com. Chronic pain, cancer, fatigue? Find out about the benefits of medical hydration therapy on Health Watch with Dr. Molly Fantasia every Sunday morning at 8 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Tune in to Crash Proof Retirement Show Saturdays at 11 a.m. to hear Phil Canella and Joanne Small. The Crash Proof Retirement Show Saturday mornings at 11 on Talk Radio 12. 1210. Hey, Paoli, we know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Always live on the free Odyssey app. All right, it's Kale and Company, 652, as we put a bow on the first hour this morning. Still so much ahead, including the cut sheet in less than one hour. 
We will get to the dead spin update and also criminal justice reform as less than four years later, we are seeing many blue cities go back to tough on crime, red policies. That's coming up after Dawn's news in the seven o'clock hour. And also maybe we could throw up a poll question. Uh, Phil, if you could put this up maybe in the YouTube chat, something to the effect of whether or not you think TikTok will ultimately end up uh, being banned in America or, it has, or something to that effect. It has bipartisan support on this. I know. TikTok, which is, yeah. Which is scary, by the way. It's scary. I'm just saying I, I don't I do not like this idea at all about banning things. It's 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 a bad precedent to set. set. Yeah. Well, to Craig's point, I want to know, you know, the devil lies in the details. Because the more I look at this, I don't like the fact that one of the, the, the negotiations that are ongoing that we talked about with the Biden administration, what they're pushing for is to make sure they don't export. So they're, what they're saying is if you gather the information, you cannot export it to China and uh, oh, we'll hold it for you here in America. <laughs> yeah. So to Greg's point, I don't want anybody. Why don't you yeah. just make data privacy laws across the board for all for every, Facebook, like everybody, just make it make it uniform, make it fair. By the way, almost trillion dollar holdings that China has for the U.S. Oh, yeah. and our treasury bonds. So why they're not incentivized to do anything to us? Why? Why? Yeah, no, you're spot on. Maybe for, as far as data goes, take a page out of the Duck Duck Go playbook, and people will be amen. Uh, far safer all right coming up next dawn will have some news to kick off hour two and then it's bye-bye to deadspin kale and company hour two is next and hello to piazza auto group and congratulations to piazza premium automobiles continuing to grow their luxury collection of brands right now piazza is so excited to welcome in these two newest members to their family of dealerships infinity ardmore as well as maserati of the main line both located right there on Lancaster Avenue. You notice the way I say Maserati. These are some of the most beautiful, sleek, powerful vehicles on the roadway right now. You're going to receive the same first class customer experience you've come to expect, of course, from the Piazza family of dealerships, including Piazza Premium Automobiles. So I'm talking about your new or your certified pre owned Infinity, Maserati, or other Piazza luxury brands like Jaguar, Land Rover, Mercedes Benz, BMW. Check them out, PiazzaPremiumAutos.com, P-I-A-Z-Z-A, PiazzaPremiumAutos.com. Tell them Dawn sent you. For more expert appliance shopping advice, here's National Appliance Warehouse's own appliance guru. Hello, let's talk about prices. At National Appliance Warehouse, we have billions in buying power that we leverage in order to pass dramatic savings to our customers. We're passionate about offering the lowest price, so we developed Price Assure to ensure we always are. Price Assure uses powerful technology to scan chain store prices online and make sure ours is lower. Because Price Assure is connected to electronic tags throughout the showroom, it's able to update them instantly if an adjustment is needed. Our customers enjoy great service that rivals that of a small independent. While shopping with confidence, they're seeing the lowest possible price. The Friends and Family Savings Event is underway. Upgrade your laundry for less with LG. Get a high-efficiency front-load washer with stackable dryer from LG. Regularly $17.98 for only $13.96. Save over $400. Click NationalAppliancewarehouse.com or visit their showroom in tax-free Wilmington today. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies. Because when people don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from, they can truly thrive, like Marta. And now we'll hear from our class valedictorian, who with our hard work never ceases to amaze us. Please welcome Marta Moreno. And Alex. Hey, Alex. How did the interview go? I did it! I got the job! I can't believe it! I knew it. Let's meet up later to celebrate. And Diego. Mom! I got first place at the science fair with my volcano project! That's amazing, sweetie. Congratulations! Because when people are fed, futures are nourished, and everyone deserves to live a full life. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. feedingamerica.org slash act now. A public service announcement brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Just like our offensive line protects our star quarterback. 
Plumbers protect the health of the nation, and Philadelphia Plumbers Union Local 690 is no different. In hospitals, commercial, industrial, and residential, with the best trained plumbers in the world, you can be sure your project is done on time and on budget, no matter how big or small. So when your business needs to build new or expand existing facilities, you can count on the members of Plumbers Union Local 690. Visit plumbers690.org. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Hi, Stephanie from Emmons. Are you not loving your bathroom? Is the King's Throne looking a little outdated and run down? Let Emmons Design Specials design a bathroom that you will love and one that Emmons will redo in as little as one day. An affordable, maintenance-free bathroom with little to no inconvenience to you and your family. With finance options available, there's really only one problem. Your bathroom will be so nice, your king may never want to come out. Call Emmons today at 856-885-6677 or visit us on our website at callemmons.com. Hi, this is Dom Giordano, Italia, my favorite destination in the world, Italy. It's called the Grand Event for good reason. Rome, Tuscany, Florence, Orvieto, Siena, Venice, Milan, and the Northern Italian Lakes region. 12 big days of touring, the kind of dining events that Conservative Tours Tour Company is famous for in Italy. 5371, that includes your airfare, the Colosseum, the Vatican, Treve Fountain, Piazza Navona. Fully escorted by my friends at Conservative Conservative tours team in Italy, the Renzo, Romina, and Giuseppe. Call them toll free at 888-733-9494 or go to conservativetours.com. Tuscany beckons and it's a time to answer Florence, the history, the beauty, San Gimignano, bustling Siena, and then it's on to the grand finale, Venice, Milan, the pristine resort of Streza on Lake Maggiore, Bellagio 2, this fall in Italia. Ciao. Riverton. We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Welcome back in. 7 o'clock hour is underway here on this Tuesday, March 12th. Good to have all of you in. Hopefully having a great start to your day. What's on the cut sheet? You're going to find out. It's coming up 7.45 this morning. All sorts of good stories along the way. Very interesting story in the USA today about criminal justice reform. As a criminal justice uh, major in college, I have some thoughts on that. Snickers firing back at the big guy. Also had a dining experience last night that um, I might have to defend Joe on in one regard. What? Yeah, well, it's coming Ooh. up. It's coming up. Might have to defend the big guy uh, for just a, just a moment in time. Also today, um, a little refresher course for the Travis Mannion Foundation Radiothon, which is coming up next Friday, March 22nd. So going to take that nice little windy road up through Bucks County, go up to uh, the Travis Mannion Foundation office, the location. I tell you what, when I went in there last year for the first time, and I'll probably get the same feel um, when I go in this year for the second year, you just get, um, if you've ever been there, you just get the... um, the chills you get like the goosebumps you do like if being like um like and i love how a lot of these people always like claim they're patriots like on their twitter feed like to me if you're a patriot you're you served your nation so i can sit here and love my nation for sure but i never served my nation like travis Mannion and those guys god rest their soul those are the true um the true patriots and when i walked in there last year i was like you could just you could just feel the sense of pride. So uh, looking forward to going in there today, and I'll do that later this afternoon. And I'll report back to you tomorrow morning, Dawn. Maybe get some pictures, and we'll 
you know, yeah. put them out on social media. There's all sorts share. of, yeah, all sorts of memorabilia there. Yeah, we'd love to see yeah, it. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very cool little spot, just kind of uh, right in the middle of a neighborhood, just kind of looks like a little law office that used to be a house, one of those type looks. Uh, so we'll check that out again coming up this afternoon. All right, let's get to the news, round number two at 703, the great Don Stenzel. And good morning, Kale & Company News Live, sponsored this morning by Budget Blinds. We're at 43 degrees right now, clear skies, heading up to 66 degrees, sunshine, and a spring-like week ahead. So you're going to love this forecast moving forward. We do have word confirmation from investigators in Philadelphia police as they have arrested two suspects arrested facing very serious, obviously, um, murder charges among or attempted murder charges among them after last week's shooting of students, gunning down of students at a school bus stop, which is also a SEPTA bus stop in northeast Philadelphia that injured eight teenagers, leaves one 16-year-old in very critical condition this morning. Seven other teens remain in stable condition. We know the identity now of these two 18-year-olds who are under arrest facing Syria, baby-faced 18-year-olds, I might add. And to think about the firearms that were detailed yesterday during that news conference by Deputy Commissioner Frank Venour and law enforcement. Among them, uh, fully loaded, you know, 40 caliber Glock 22 pistol, extended magazine. That was recovered, uh, according to Venour, as well as another gun with laser light, laser sights and a Glock switch, which, which they said transformed that pistol, which obviously is semi-automatic, as most are into an almost fully automatic machine gun. If you think of a bump stock, which were made illegal, but proving the point, and I know, I believe this is going ahead. This is a case that's gone before the Supreme court about the bump stocks, but proving the fact that these things are out there and they're available online and unfortunately through the mail. And so that's a whole nother angle that Philadelphia police, the feds, everybody continues to look at how these, teenagers anywhere between 12 18 plus are getting their hands on all these firearms that's another branch of this investigation they've been able to match the guns to the shell casings a lot of police work going into this shooting that happened last wednesday as well we're learning more about the mayor's plan the governor has spoken out about this as well to keep children school children safe as they're headed to bus stops this morning because especially for school kids that have to take SEPTA, which increasingly we talk about the crime. As far as the two 18-year-olds, they are behind bars. No chance of making that $2 million bail. Preliminary hearings scheduled March 20th for both of those individuals. We also know that there is a search right now for two others involved, including the getaway driver. And keep in mind that the vehicles being used in, in some of these, including this one, were stolen vehicles as well. The license plates had been covered or removed, and then one of those paper temporary tags had been put on. So just just showing you the level of law enforcement investigation that had gone into it, and it, it really brings forth many of the problems that we have in the city of Philadelphia because of some of our, our equity laws, driving equity laws, that police would not have been able to pull over that stolen vehicle because of those so-called driving equity laws, uh, just because of that fake paper tag. So just putting that all out there at once for you. We have uh, a former Harriton High School teacher admitting yesterday, and this is, this is, uh, you know, cringeworthy and for all the law enforcement involved, school officials involved, and I know many of you parents, especially if you're a dad of girls, and teenage girls, This former high school teacher admitted yesterday he spent years posing as a teenager online to solicit sexually explicit images from underage girls, including at least one of the school students where he was a teacher. So Jeremy Schobel taught English, English teacher at Harriton High from 2021 until he was fired after they arrested him last year telling a federal judge that admitting, confessing, that he communicated with hundreds of these girls through fake social, he created fake social media profiles that he had created for the purpose of 
trying to groom these girls, persuading them to send him nude videos and nude photos. And where was this at? And this is uh, Harriton High School. Harriton High School. He's uh, he's a Philadelphia guy. He lives okay. in a 32-year-old I'm not uh, familiar with the man. school. I'm, I'm not familiar with the school. That's why I was asking. Where is that a city in the city? Yeah. So he's a was a was right. a public school high school teacher. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna have a good. They're gonna have a field day with him in the joint. He's toast. He was on. He had created just so you know the Snapchat. He was all over like all of these different social media platforms. The FBI in, got involved. Good with the investigation but he the confession that's concerning and uh, is because he was uh, this went on for years did he act off of these images or was he just collecting not that i'm condoning it but was there there wasn't any um sexual encounters with minors what was there i don't believe so okay um so i know as far as so this involves two different school districts okay lower marion school district where he was a teacher but also he taught, before he taught at Harriton, he taught at the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts, Kappa, where my stepson Jonathan went. Oh. And I will tell you, the, 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 the thing all everybody says about Kappa, Creative and Performing Arts, it's the so-called fame school here in Philadelphia. Was, that's where fame, if you ever saw that show, was mm -hmm. based off of Kappa. Okay. Right on Broad Street. Right. It's the beautiful school with the pillars and it's an amazing creative and performing arts school. But the one comment we always made is these, all the girls are, uh, all the students are dancers and they're singers and they're perform. They're your future super, they're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that he was a teacher there, just when I saw that, I just, yeah, I, you know, I just cringed. Yeah. What, because, a, cre what a creep. Um, but as far as your point about Harriton, so, so then he went from Kappa to Lower Marion. I don't know other districts where he, um, where he taught. Obviously, the statement from Lower Marion School District, uh, you know, for many of these individuals are that this was egregious. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, Nick, I don't see in the court records any situation where they thought that he was um, physically, you know, touching these girls. But it, it just does give you the. Yeah, the cringe, and it also gives you the ammunition as because you have little girls. You oh just yeah, said they're on social media, uh -huh. and they dance, and yeah, and that's who these yeah. predators, you know, may go after. Uh huh. And so, just to understand that some of the little kids, some of the kids that they think they're interacting with another girl who's mm -hmm. a dancer, may in fact be a creepy guy like this. That's correct. We need to bring back um, Chris Hansen. Remember him to catch a predator, that yeah. TV show. Yes, where he would show up and bust these perverts. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we have a lot of exciting news in the world of sports and Eagles as running back, Eagles. <laughs> running back Saquon Barkley, Penn State, grew up, was, you went to school not too far from where our own Nick Kale yeah. graduated Whitehall. high school, right? Yeah. So, suburbs of uh, Allentown, Whitehall Township. So this is where he grew up. So he's Pennsylvania native, coming home, Penn State. Um, a sign that reportedly reached the deal with Philadelphia Eagles three year, almost $38 million contract. That's the same deal I got from Odyssey. Woo! Three could years, be worth, 38 million. Well, it could. So the totality, this is not as good as your deal because no. the total deal would be worth nearly 47 million. Yeah. But he got the 26 million fully guaranteed signing bonus. I, I'm telling you, if, if, if he stays healthy, and that's the key. This offense is going okay. Now, they might not be able to stop anybody on defense, but Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, and Saquon Barkley. I'm thinking about my fantasy football draft already now. I'm getting excited. So, I, the fun, I, I heard um, my friend Ike Reese on our brother's state, our sibling station, and mm -hmm. he was like, and Ike already has that raspy voice. Oh, I know. And then he was like, I thought, Ike, you're going to lose your voice. He was so excited uh -huh. and saying, and a lot of people praising how Howie Roseman for this. Yes. So that was kind of cool. I'm excited for it. I know. It's, it's a wonderful thing. All right. Yes. Sponsors, budget blinds. Spring is, it's, spring feels like it's here today and this week. So now's the time to budget. Budget blinds is your one-stop shop for blinds, shades, shutters, custom drapery, motorization. Visit budgetblinds.com for a free in-home consultation and the only no questions asked warranty in the entire business. 
BudgetBlinds.com. Thank you for sponsoring Kale & Company News Live on this 66 degree sunny day the rest of the week. Woohoo, we're in the low 70s, a lot of sunshine. Kale & Company News Live. All right, Dawn, thank you very much. A lot of sunshine means happy days ahead for Greg Stocker. We look yes. forward to that. And we look forward to getting into a couple of other stories as we get closer to Stocker's Cutchy coming up at 745. Uh, on the other side, once again, we have more proof that if you just stay in your lane, odds are you can succeed. It's when you deviate course that you go belly up. We'll get to that story when we continue next here on Kale & Company on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. FanDuel in partnership with the Valley Forge Casino is putting the ball in your court for the rest of this NBA season because right now new customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. You can bet on all the NBA action with a wide range of betting types, including quick bets, live sim game parlays, player props, so much more. All you need to do, do it now, unless you're driving, watching on YouTube, or listening on YouTube, listening on the Odyssey app. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Greg, FanDuel.com slash Greg. Do it during this commercial break. FanDuel.com slash Greg, Greg, and make your first laugh. FanDuel Sportsbook, the official partner of 1210. WPHT and the NBA 21 and over President PA first online real money wager only $10 first deposit required bonus issue does not watch all bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt see terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com gambling problem please call 1-800-GAMBLER You've heard about the thousands of patients finally getting relief from chronic joint pain thanks to QC Kinetic's non-invasive treatments. And here's one who was determined to avoid surgery. Meet Vicki. The orthopedic surgeon said, well, you're going to need knee replacement sooner rather than later. I kept hearing commercials about QC Kinetic's and thought, well, I'm going to check them out first. QC Kinetic's has treated over 20,000 patients like Vicki around the country. People who were told they needed surgery but chose a more natural, less invasive approach that uses regenerative treatment to help heal and restore painful joints with no downtime. If QC Kinetics had not been what I expected, I would have gone through with the surgery, but I got so much relief and now pretty much pain-free that I don't have to have the surgery. Before going under the knife, you need to check out QC Kinetics. The consultation is free. Call today. Call QC Kinetics, 215-999-3000. That's 215-999-3000. 215-999-3000. Do you have three ex-wives and your current trophy wife wants a life insurance policy three times the size of the policies you had to purchase for your previous mistakes? If so, you need to call Big Lou at Term Provider, 800-700-6898. Big Lou is intimately familiar with your problems, and if you're 50 or 60, years old and in reasonably good health, a $1 million policy should only cost about $100 to $200 per month. Big Lou may have a solution for your previous policies as well. You may even save enough money to lighten the load on your new $1 million policy. Remember, call Big Lou. He's like you, except he's only on number two. Call Term Provider at 800-700-6898. That's 800-700-6898. For a million dollars in term life insurance that you can live with, call Big Lou at 800-700-6898. 800-700-6898. Are you tired of dealing with those old, inefficient windows in your house? Well, maybe it's time to go Guida. How about that drafty, beat-up-looking entry door? You've painted over more times than you can count. Well, go Guida. Need added protection from the elements with a new storm door? Go Guida. And what about that sliding patio door or garage door you've been meaning to replace? Go Guida. Whatever your home improvement needs are, I suggest you go Guida with the great people at Guida Door and Window. To help you get your project started, Guida is offering 20% off all windows and doors while allowing you to start your project with no money down and up to three full years to pay it off interest-free. That's right. Receive 20% instant savings with the luxury of paying off your project interest-free for up to 36 months. Restrictions apply. Offers for a limited time. So what are you waiting for? It's time you finally go Guida. Call today to schedule a free in-home estimate at one eight seven seven go guida or visit them at goguida.com. That's go, G-U-I-D-A dot com. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things for our planet. This spring, Fairmount Park Conservancy invites you to connect with your Philadelphia neighborhood parks. Join your local park friends group during Love Your Park Week in May. Or join us for weekly volunteer events all year long throughout the city. 
Fairmount Park Conservancy works with the City of Philadelphia and its communities to bring parks to life. For information and to sign up, visit myphillypark.org. Doors take us to summers away or winter adventures and afternoon getaways. Your dedicated Fidelity Advisor can help you open those doors by working with you on a comprehensive plan to help you reach your wealth's full potential. Because doors were meant to be opened. Visit fidelity.com slash wealth. Investment minimum supply. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. Member NYSE SIPC. Networks make it possible to share data from lots of places, like a bird sanctuary. Good eye. There is a typo. Thanks. But to make them powerful enough to deliver new opportunities at the edge, you need CDW and Aruba. CDW experts can help design and implement an Aruba Edge Services platform, which unifies, secures, and automates network environments everywhere, so you can translate data into innovation. Sorry, do you mind? This is confidential. Aruba makes visibility at the edge possible. CDW makes it powerful. Learn more at cdw.com slash Aruba. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. The Phillies are back. And it's gone! Listen to Philadelphia Phillies spring training games every Saturday and Sunday live on the free Odyssey app with Sports Radio 94 WIP. Walk him off, Kyle Schwarber. Fransky in L.A. Live this spring on Sports Radio 94 WIP. Your Phillies, your Odyssey. A-U-D-A-C-Y. Download the free Odyssey app today. Live games available for fans and market only. Don't let woke win. Follow 1210 WPHD on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. All right, welcome back in. Kale and Company, 720 on this Tuesday morning. Another busy day, another busy week. Robert Hur will testify today. Looking forward to that. We will certainly react to that coming up tomorrow. And, of course, tomorrow the uh, ruling on TikTok could very well come down, and we will have plenty of coverage on that and reaction to that on Thursday. Never seems to be a slow day Um these uh, these days with this format, I'm telling you, this is like a content buffet. But I do want to get to this story. If you recall, uh, Deadspin is one of these websites that is, I would guess, I, I mean, I, I first came across Deadspin probably 12, 13 years ago. Uh, and this past November, you'll recall, we talked about the story of Deadspin taking a picture of that young nine-year-old Kansas City Chiefs fan of Native American ancestry wearing the headdress and having his face painted. Half of his face was painted red. The other half was painted black. Deadspin found a picture of him in the stands with his head and his body positioned that you only saw the black face paint. And the writer for Deadspin a race hustler for his entire career. Uh, I would say he's like Al Sharpton of sports, uh, and he was with Deadspin most recently, wrote this hit piece framing and portraying this poor nine-year-old kid to be a racist wearing blackface. And if you recall, there was major pushback to it, rightfully so, and the picture remained up on the website without any edits and any editorial correction for about a week and finally deadspin um made the adjustment and they probably thought the story was over the parents went on to file a defamation lawsuit 
and sue Deadspin. And finally, yesterday, I believe Deadspin um, was granted its um, obituary, finally. And they have gone under multiple times and have been repackaged and reincarnated a slew of times. But yesterday, the news came out from FrontOfficeSports.com that the sports, I love this too, the sports media company. They haven't been a sports media company for years. But the sports media company, Deadspin, has been sold, and all of their staffers were let go. Employees were told Monday during a company meeting, which Front Office Sports confirmed with one of those workers. The European firm, Lineup Publishing, bought the company. Uh, An email was obtained from Front Office Sports in which it read as the following. While the new owners plan to be referential to Deadspin's unique voice, they plan to take a different content approach regarding the site's overall sports coverage. About a dozen people were on their staff before the meeting and immediately were locked out of their emails and their company servers and platforms, the employee told Front Office Sports. A former editor that left the company and quit five years ago in 2019 said it seemed pretty clear to me that this was the only way it could end it was only a matter of time and I, when i when i see this story this to me is not a surprise at all and i i want to highlight a couple of things when it comes to companies like deadspin that initially started off as kind of a gossip and rumor, non-mainstream story type of website. There was humorous stuff on it. There was a lot of guy content. There was some sports stuff that crossed over, like if an NFL player was dating an adult film star or stuff like that. It was kind of like if you were 18 to maybe 27, 28 years old, it was kind of one of these websites 10, 12, 13 years ago that you might frequent two or three times a day to see what's going on really before the the social media explosion, but right maybe almost simultaneously in the beginning of it. And this to me is exactly what happens to all of these outlets that leave the lane that they initially intended to be in and they deviate away from their mission statement, and they go super left-wing, they become preachy, they virtue signal, they take life so stinking seriously. I'm not going to steal the old phrase of, you know what, you know what, it's, you know, get woke, go broke. I'm tired of hearing that phrase, to be honest. But people, here's my thoughts. People don't want to be lectured. They want to be entertained. We are all looking for distractions from reality, from our everyday life. I think if you are authentic, if you are original, if you can entertain and be funny, give an opinion, talk about the content that people really care about and show your personality, you will succeed. And I think Deadspin is a microcosm for where the media is today. And I want people to think about this for a moment. Look at the media that is either struggling or they don't have one endearing quality to their coverage. CNN is dead. They are completely toast. The only thing keeping CNN alive is they make a lot of money from a lot of their advertisers. Despite their awful ratings, they print cash. MSNBC does left-wing better than CNN, but they get beat by Fox. ESPN is a shell of themselves because they always are looking for a racial, social, or political angle to incorporate into their sports coverage when they're not broadcasting games. The Washington Post, the New York Times. I think about this too. The Rolling Stone. Soccer, you're a music guy more than I am. Wasn't there a time where the Rolling Stone was less uh, social and political than they are today? Or have they always no, been this way? They've always been this way. They've always okay. had a political uh, activist um, okay. slant to them. Okay. And then I look at companies that are thriving today. You don't have to like these people or what they stand for or what their platforms are or how they go about their content. It doesn't appeal to everybody, but look at Barstool Sports. It's just a bunch of dudes doing goofy stuff, being guys, saying the stuff that you probably can't say in the workplace. And that crazy nut job, Dave Portnoy, has more money than he knows what to do with. Same thing with Clay Travis at OutKick. The same thing with Pat McAfee at ESPN. He's gone in, he's not cookie cutter, he's different. He has fun. He's not trying to make everything about race and politics. The same thing with Fox News. Dawn talks about it all the time. 
how much more likable and pleasant their personalities are compared to what I like to call Dana Bashface on CNN, where everybody just looks like they hate the world. And we live in this day and age now where everybody has a podcast. A lot of people are starting YouTube channels. I would say this. Use Deadspin as your guide not to fail. If you are starting a podcast or doing a YouTube channel, just be entertaining. Don't take life too seriously. Don't try to virtue signal and act like you're the Pope and everybody else is below you. That's what I think Deadspin got in trouble here because they hired a bunch of left-wing advocates and they were literally looking to look for race and everything that we are trying to get away from. And when you're Karan J. Phillips, this writer, you wrote a hit piece on a nine-year-old kid. Now, in, in, in all reality, I don't like seeing people lose jobs. And if you lost your job because you went after other adults, and I, agree, I disagree with your politics, okay. But there's a part of me that is enjoying the fact that they went down because of that kid specifically. A nine-year-old child has to be portrayed by an adult seeking clicks and attention, and you labeled that kid as a racist, and you had no knowledge that he was racist, and oh, by the way, he is portraying a Native American, which he happens to have Native, Amer Native American blood in his own body. So, you know, you should be more careful before, and this I've said this for years, we are way too cavalier in labeling people as racist. And I hope this is a precedent for everybody with a platform. You better think long, hard, and good before you hit send and say somebody's racist. Because, I, Dawn, I don't know about you, I'm so tired of the he's a racist, she's a racist nonsense. Because if I'm on the receiving end of that, and this is a, this is a disclaimer for anybody out there in, in this city, in this media that wants to come at me and thinks I'm racist, you better have proof. Because if you ever try to smear me that way, I'm coming for every dollar you have and then some. And I want interest yeah. on top of it. So I'm off my horse now. Yeah, I think if there's any good that comes out of this, nobody puts somebody's kid up there, identifies right. them as anything. Just mm -hmm. leave, leave other people's kids off social media, and especially for these news sites, it's not okay. Yeah. And these, they, all of these writers, and, and I have no idea what this guy was being paid, but I'd be willing to bet it's probably somehow in a blueprint or a formula of the more clicks he gets, the more the compensation is. So, hey, let's, oh boy. And, and all it does, all it takes is one moment of due diligence. I mean, my God, we saw the pictures. The kid had black face paint on one side and red face paint on the other side. It was not a display of blackface. It was like that kid that went to the high school football game in California. We talked about that story. The, the eighth grader or seventh grader that was there to support his team, and he put the war paint on like the kids wear under their helmets to keep the glare of the lights when you're playing a night game out of your eyes and your vision. And people were like, oh, this. And they, and they suspended him from school. We should probably look for an update on that story. I'd be willing to bet that those parents have either gotten some sort of settlement or some apology and um, some re redaction of the uh, suspension for that kid. Another kid that didn't need to be smeared by these nut jobs. So there you go. 855-839-1210 is the number. Coming up next, blue cities going back to red policies when it comes to crime. It's about time. Kale and Company, we're back after this. But first, a word from my friends at Blue Chew. To all the male listeners out there, pay attention. Is Father Time catching up with you when it pertains to your adult interactions behind closed doors? Look, not everybody provides you the solution at a financially feasible rate. Well, that is, of course, until now. Kale and Company listeners, here's a special offer for you. BlueChew.com, promo code 1210. That's right. BlueChew.com. Use the promo code 1210 for your first month free. That's right. First month free. Free male enhancement that will inspire confidence and provide results. The great people at Blue Chew offer a unique, one-of-a-kind online service that delivers men the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable tablet at a much cheaper price. That's right, free. Just pay five bucks for shipping, and your first month is free. BlueChew.com, promo code 1210. 
Don't miss Dr. Mary Ann Ritchie, your radio doctor, Saturday afternoons at 5. Tune in for accurate information so you can make the right medical decisions. Your radio doctor, Dr. Mary Ann Ritchie, Saturday afternoons at 5 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth, and if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes, and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Hey, it's Rich Zioli. This spring is your chance to get the perfect smile from my friend, my dentist, Dr. Mike Venaria at Venaria Dental. Dr. Mike is the master of implant dentistry. I've been telling you about Dr. Mike for years. My entire family goes to Dr. Venaria because the level of care and commitment to dental excellence that Dr. Mike and his team delivers to every patient is unmatched. He's been delivering results that surpass expectations, and that has made him a top dentist in New Jersey for 10 consecutive years. He has one of the most respected reputations among his peers as a master of dental implants. So, if you've been on the fence about getting that dental procedure done, reach out to Dr. Mike today. You have a choice, a clear choice for you and your family. So give Dr. Venaria a call. I promise you won't be disappointed. With two locations to serve you in Cinnaminson and Woodbury right over the bridge, schedule your free implant consultation today for your perfect smile. Call 856-786-2020 or VenariaDental.com, V-A-N-A-R-I-A, VenariaDental.com. Here's retirement phase expert Phil Canella with today's report. While Wall Street's markets continue to go up and down with no guarantees of going forward, many concerned investors have been tempted by the idea of guaranteed income for life. Although it sounds desirable at first, guaranteed income products are not what they're cracked up to be. When you purchase a guaranteed income product, the first thing that happens is your investment immediately becomes less liquid. There is no principle to tap into when an emergency strikes and you need to make a lump sum withdrawal. With these contracts, your scheduled payout is a set specific amount based on your life expectancy. This amount does not keep up with inflation, which paints you into a corner later in life when your monthly income has less purchasing power than it did the day you signed the contract. Now, in most cases, the monthly income payments are structured to exceed your life expectancy, making it a whole lot less likely that you'll ever receive back your initial investment amount before death. Lastly, there is no legacy or estate planning with these guaranteed income products because they're meant to go away at your demise without leaving a dime to your heirs. It's best to avoid a product sale whenever possible. By utilizing a system of investments, however, with guaranteed income capabilities, you can mix and match vehicles that pay a lifetime guaranteed income with others that are designed to grow principal back and still give you access or increases of income. Seek out a qualified retirement phase expert who can offer the best of both worlds 
and provide a legacy plan for your heirs, guaranteed. To hear more reports that will impact your financial future, join Phil Canella and Joanne Small this Saturday at 11 a.m. on the Crash Proof Retirement Show, only on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hey, Audubon, tell your smart speaker to play 1210 WPHT. WPHT. Mustard. Kelly Company, as we continue. Sometimes the mustard drop just matches the song perfectly. This is one of them. Mustard of puppets. That's correct. Kelly Company, as we continue here on this Tuesday. Cut sheet coming up in about seven minutes' time. So we know in New York City that the governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, has deployed the National Guard to uh, the mass transit system in the Big Apple. Governor Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania will not do the same thing at this current time here in Philadelphia as Sherelle Parker begins her stint as mayor of this city. Uh, But you are starting to see slowly but steadily a reversing of the course where blue cities are getting tough on crime, which is a staple of what red lawmakers and politicians always advocate for this is a very interesting story from the usa today uh from louisiana to dc lawmakers backtrack on criminal justice reform kinsey crowley for the usa today writes a stunning turnabout less than four years after george floyd's murder sparked a mass awakening to the inequities of the criminal justice system Political leaders across the country are returning to a tough-on-crime approach. In some cases, voters and lawmakers are opting to reserve reforms, uh, excuse me, reverse reforms that were passed just years ago. In San Francisco, they voted last Tuesday in support of two propositions that give more power to police and require addiction treatment as a condition for welfare assistance. And in Washington, D.C., council members have passed a package of public safety measures, including bringing back drug-free zones. What a concept. Places where there will not be any tolerance for drugs. The Tuesday votes followed movements from rollbacks and reform in Louisiana and Oregon as well. Quote, it is a stunning turnabout, especially so soon after the wave of national protests against the system for being too harsh, said Adam Gelb, the president and CEO of the Council on Criminal Justice. Quote, I think there's very little chance that we return fully to the notion that we can arrest and punish our way to safety. Uh, I completely, completely disagree with that. And like we talk about crime on this show, Don, you highlight it with the news. You talk about it on your show. Dom makes it a big chunk of his show. I don't want to hear any of these criminal justice reform advocates that want less police or softer sentences or um, holistic approaches to tell me it can't be done. I've got one prime example for you. Have you guys paid attention to what the president of El Salvador has been able to accomplish in less than 18 months? President Nayib Bukele, he reduced the number of homicides in El Salvador by nearly 70% in one year from 2022 to 2023 by getting super tough on crime, building more prisons, creating a a stronger jail system, and letting law enforcement do their job. You can absolutely do it. We saw it, what, 25, 30 years ago in New York when Giuliani got tough on crime and Bloomberg was relatively tough on it, and then it slowly eroded away under, um, obviously, Eric Adams now, de Blasio Blasio, before him. So th- these people that think, oh, well, we we just, you know, it's only been a couple of years. First of all, the Harvard study from that one writer that we talked about completely debunked the police brutality of targeting certain demographics. We gave you that story a couple of weeks ago. But to me, it's always been very simple. You can't commit crimes if you are incarcerated. So we need to lock these people up. And I love the fact, I I mean, I hate the fact that it took three or four years of lawlessness and by no way and no shape are we going to be back to where we need to be overnight. 
But this is so long overdue. And I hope this is the beginning of something bigger here. Yeah, and I hope, unlike Venezuela, where they just sent all the criminals here, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I think in El Salvador, the key was cracking down on the gangs. They yep. had a huge gang problem. I mean, it was, I think at the height, it was like 40, 50,000 gang members or something crazy like that. Uh-huh. And so it was also cracking down on, on the gang recruitment and the gangs mm-hmm. and infiltrating the gangs. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in Philadelphia, in cities like ours, uh, we're just seeing the we, impact of the gang violence. We need we need a gang task force. I said this last week. Yeah, right? I think we have one, but it needs to be supersized. In in the nineties, uh, what was happening in Los Angeles, and then Daryl Gates came in and just completely like. There were a lot of people critical of you know they said it's it's like a police state because they had like tanks that were that were ramming into homes you know where 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 mm-hmm. gangs were and stuff. But you know what. Tough times require tough measures sometimes. And sometimes you need to do stuff like this and take the fight to them. Tell them that this this kind of crap won't be tolerated in these cities. Mm-hmm. And 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 watch how quickly oh, yeah. these gangs flee. All of these people, are even though they're bad people, they're not stupid. They know the system is set up in their favor. That's why you give them an inch, they take a mile, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just feel like we have... You know, we have all these resources. I, you know, bring in, bring in them. I, I don't care. Bring in people with, 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 with guns and and just just go after these gangs because they're a menace to society. Yes. they are. Yes, I think I did. I, I thought I saw this over the weekend with with Kathy Hochul deploying National Guard members uh, to the subway system. They, but she uh, put a, a a little caveat on it that the National Guardsmen could not have the long rifles. Uh, I guess that was too triggering and, you know, and I'm so tired of the, oh my God, the presence of police triggers my anxiety. If you're not doing anything illegal, you have nothing to worry about. The problem is at some point we got to this part in society where we're just like, let's, let's figure out why these kids are in gangs. Let's Mm -hmm. figure out why, who cares why they're in gangs? They're shooting innocent people for Mm -hmm. no reason. No fathers, usually a big reason. Who cares? Put them away. Yeah. Put them six feet underground. I don't care. Just get them out of my city. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I to me, I remember when I was when I was studying criminal justice at Temple. There's all these different modalities of the criminal justice system. There's uh, restoration. There's rehabilitation. There's incarceration. Incarceration is the only one that statistically overwhelmingly works because when you have a barricade and you have concrete and you have steel bars in your way you can't get out and do what you used to do in your past now i i I think rehabilitation works for some not all but the recidivism rates in these big cities is off off the charts it's usually well over 50 percent and i think you know select adults can be rehabilitated certainly more minors can be rehabilitated which is why there's different punishments for for adults versus youth but like i'm so tired of the kitty glove stuff uh you know oh george floyd get over it uh it, you know what it's time to reestablish who's in charge and the criminals should not be dictating policy they are though i know they are that's the problem they are and and, and until we get tough on this and we don't need more laws we don't need more of this we don't we just need people mm-hmm. in power but we do need bodies to, and because the yes. defund movement created this <laughs> this true. uh desire for people not to want to work in law enforcement and i don't blame them we- the one thing i will say to you that that i notice more and more is that even though it's a gang violence task force i'll, I'll point out to you that da larry krasner calls it a gun violence task force and blames the guns no of course, of course so he does. The, so krasner says the real problem, the root of the problem, is the guns. I would say it's well, the sinister person behind the gun, but... Carl Mayer on YouTube says, no consequences. These kids yeah. receive no jail time. Not, I, I will, juvies, especially. Oh, well, re- remember, remember the two punks that ran down the retired cop on the bike in Vegas and filmed it? Yeah. And remember when one of them got arrested, he was laughing in the in the uh, the video saying, I'm going to be out of... I'll be out of well, jail that, in, the, in the next week. That's the problem. That's the problem with... Yeah, you can threaten jail time, and you can say, hey, if you do this, you're going to go to jail. Some of these punks, thugs, want to go to jail. They don't care about going to jail. You know what's going to stop them? A bullet between the eyes. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, but like if, if, you know, if five gang members are taken out by a SWAT team, you know what that gang is not going to do? They're going to gonna think twice about doing it. Yeah. I'm telling you. 
I do, and you know what helps? Not only with having uh, a fully funded police, but prosecutors that want to actually act as prosecutors and not defense attorneys. And I'm a big believer in mandatory minimums. Yeah. Hit these people with an absolute guarantee. If you do this, I don't care about your past history. They're, You're absolutely getting two years or four years or 18 months. You know what you can do to clean up? Can you imagine what Philadelphia could accomplish in 18 months with clean streets? Some of these, some of these kids uh, that are in gangs, they they grow up this way, and 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 jail is not a, it's not a deterrent for them. They don't care about going to jail. Well, they, when they just get, don't. Right. Well, when they get out and commit a more serious felony, then they'll go away for 20 to 40, and uh, you know, in all likelihood, never make it back out again because they'll probably get into fights in jail, which will further their sentence, and they'll never see the light of day again unless they're in a prison yard. All right, 748. Oh, we got a lot of good stuff lined up. It is time for a Tuesday edition of What's on the Cut Sheet. What's on the Cut Sheet? What's on the Cut Sheet on this Tuesday is sponsored by Cherry Hill Volvo, where right now you can lease an XC40 for $459 or an XC90 for two, uh, for $629 per month. And interest rates as low as 4%. Hurry into Cherry Hill Volvo for details today. Check them out over at 70 in Cherry Hill, Cherry Hill Volvo, where relationships matter. Thank you, Cherry Hill Volvo, for sponsoring the ever-important Tuesday edition of What's on the Cut Sheet. Piggybacking off of what you uh, were just talking about, Nick Hale, uh, Pittsburgh police will no longer respond to certain calls and will instead be redirecting people to a telephone unit. (laughs) That's all this. These crimes include thefts, harassment, criminal mischief, burglary alarms, etc. Additionally, there will only be 20 police officers patrolling the entire city from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., you know, when the most crime happens. Right, right. This comes amidst staffing shortages. Mm-hmm. So this is happening in our in our state of Pennsylvania, but on the other side, the, the bad side of uh, the western yeah. side of PA. It's Out towards Fetterman country. Horrendous place. Yeah. Uh, this I, call is, it, I call it Pittsburgh, Ohio. East. This, this is cut... <laughs> I kid. Uh, this is cut 12, uh, Phil. Go. Rick, what was the big takeaway today? Yeah, Susan, residents of the city will see a major change in the way police respond. They will no longer respond to calls that aren't considered in-progress emergency. That means calls like criminal mischief, theft, harassment, and most burglary alarms will all be handled by an enhanced telephone reporting unit. That means residents will file a police report over the phone. Officers will not respond unless it's an emergency. Also, between the hours of 3 a.m. and 7 a.m., there will be no officers at any of the six stations throughout the city. Call boxes that link directly to 911 have been installed for people to use in case of an emergency. And during the overnight shift, there will be as few as 20 officers to cover the entire city. The chief said today the data supports that. Yes, it's enough to cover the entire city in in those hours when we have 8% of the time people are calling. I'm confident in the decisions that we make that it impacts this bureau and the city in a much better way than we have in the past. There's no chief also acknowledging today that some of these changes are due to staffing shortages. He's down to 740 officers, well below the 850 they would like to have. Now coming up new at five, residents, city council, and the police union all weighing in on these big changes that begin Monday. Live in the studio, Rick Earl, Channel 11 News. There's no way that officer believes what he just said. <laughs> There's no way. I mean, whether you're talking budget or you're talking policy changes from above him, there's no way he believes what just came. Imagine actually feeling the need that you have to have police uh, presence and you're calling and you get rerouted to a, an answering service or you get put on hold. Like, this is not calling uh, customer service for AT&T because you're having a cell phone. I mean, these could be legitimately, seriously scary issues. And... The police is just going to be very, and Pittsburgh's a relatively, you know, relatively big. I mean, we're not talking about uh, Jenkintown going down to, (laughs) you know, know, four cops or whatever that story was we had a few weeks ago. That's scary. I I don't care that it's 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. Yeah, I just. How quickly till they reverse course on that one? And by the way, you're just telling all the all the criminals and thugs, yeah. hey, hey, you want to cr- commit crimes? Yeah. Go between three Wake and seven, early. yeah, mm-hmm. three and seven a.m. or stay up late. Yeah, you know. And uh, did he say burglary was included in that? Yeah, 
Yeah, because it wow. has to be an emergency. <laughs> Thefts, harassment, criminal mischief, burglary alarms. So it's 3.45 in the morning. You're uh, dead, dead asleep. Somebody decides to burglarize your home. You're scared. You have no idea if that guy's got a crowbar or a shotgun downstairs. And uh, that won't amount to police uh, dispatch. Okay. Boy. It's unbelievable. It's really comforting as a taxpayer. Uh, yesterday, FBI Director Christopher Ray speaking is sticking on this uh, crime theme here. Yesterday, uh, Christopher Ray uh, testified that from an FBI perspective, we are seeing a wide array of very dangerous threats that are emanating from the border. Yeah, today's so. also Tuesday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cut one, Phil, go. From an FBI perspective, we are seeing a wide array of very dangerous threats that emanate from the border. There is a particular network um, that uh, has uh, where some of the overseas facilitators of the smuggling network have ISIS ties uh, that we're very concerned about uh, and that we've been spending an enormous amount of effort with our partners investigating. I've been trying to tell people it's not just people coming from South American nations like Venezuela or any other country. You heard him say ISIS. They're coming from the Middle East. They're coming from China. We've seen the visual confirmation of China. How many times is Bill Malusian stationed at the border interviewing people from an Asian country or China specifically? Um, so if you're if you're keeping track of who thinks the border is an issue and who doesn't, um, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris and Alejandro Mayorkas are in one camp. In the other camp, you have Republicans, uh, you have the FBI, you have Border Patrol, the Border Patrol Union. So we're all crazy and three individuals are correct. Okay. Well, Joe Biden says that we just need an orderly process at the border. <laughs> the problem is, is that it's not an orderly process. Yeah. That's what, that's the, that's the solution uh, at our southern border. Uh, this is Joe Biden yesterday. Looks like he's talking to a classroom. Uh, this is because there's nobody there. That's why I'm saying that. This is cut nine, filled go. Look, what we need is, what we need is we need just an orderly process at the border, not to keep, they're not vermin, they're not scum, they're not people who are all criminals coming. Just, there you go. Yeah, clear that throat <laughs> out, buddy. <laughs> he loves using that word vermin, doesn't he? <laughs> he's gone back to that one like, what, five times since last Thursday? Um, I believe also in that clip, uh, if if it go if it went further, he asked his staff if he was allowed he to did, take yeah. questions. Yeah, I want you to think about that for a moment. We have one guy who doesn't know if he's allowed to ask questions, and then and this is not a shot at Trump, but this is just a comparison of the two. One guy seeking permission uh, to expound upon something because the fear is. If he talks too much, he will basically shoot himself in the foot. And then we have another guy in Trump who literally doesn't have to ask anybody anything, but also can't stop talking. Really remarkable. Uh, let's go into the way back machine, shall we? I liked, We played two clips yesterday, one from Joe Biden in 2006 and one from Chuck Schumer in 2009. Let's go back to uh, then-candidate Barack Obama. Uh, discussing how we can't have half a million people pouring across the border what was that what was that total again uh under the under the joe biden administration nick uh, 7.3 okay million. well that's the minimum that's but, on the books <laughs> so uh, barack obama says we can't have a half a million people so uh, forgive me if i'm wrong that's five hundred thousand, right yes okay yes. and you said what seven point what million that we know 7. of point gotcha okay yeah seems like a stark uh, difference <laughs> Cut. and remember who was vice president during during this administration big guy two terms uh cut three phil go this is not going to be a free ride uh oh it's not going to be some instant amnesty uh oh what's going to happen is you are going to pay a significant fine Ooh. you are going to learn english no it's racist <laughs> you are going to wow you are going to go to the back of the line so that you don't get ahead of somebody who was in mexico city applying legally but after you've done these things over a certain period of time, you can earn your citizenship. So that it's not, it's not something that is guaranteed or automatic. You've got to earn it. But over time, you give people an opportunity. Now, it only works, though, if you do all the pieces. I, I think the American people, they appreciate and believe in immigration. But 
they can't have a situation where you just have half a million people pouring over the border without any kind of mechanism to control it. Uh oh. So we've got to deal with that at the same time as we deal in a humane fashion with folks who have put down roots here, have become our neighbors, have become our friends. They may have children who are U.S. citizens. That's the kind of comprehensive approach that we have to take. What happened to that Democratic Boy, Party? It, isn't it funny how 15 years ago <laughs> Democrats actually sound like they made somewhat of somewhat sense there? Uh, here's a guy in Barack Obama. If you look at his border numbers, for the most part, early on, especially 08 through I think 12 or 13, had a pretty relatively good grasp on the border until the last two years or so. Uh, you look at Trump's numbers at the border and Obama's numbers, and then you put them both up there against Biden. I mean, it just jumps off the page at you. And and by the way, that was 15 years ago. That looks like it was from like, from like 1940, by the way. <laughs> it's amazing how things look so archaic in it's time true. now. It's true. Wow. But it, it, it's, it really is a, a phenomenon how... Democrats, whether it's Joe from 1996 or Obama from 2009, the things that they said then that nobody batted an eyelash over that. Repu- now, if, if you took a, a Republican politician right now and he plagiarized that and reiterated that speech word for word yeah. on MSNBC today in 2024, that would be viewed as racist and um uh, every, every phobia or hatred term under the sun. Yep. By the way, uh, streaming live on YouTube, youtube.com slash at 1210WPHD, youtube.com slash at 1210WPHD. Please hit the subscribe button. Um, we'll Trying to get to 6,000 subscribers. So please hit the subscribe button if you're watching right now. Also, please hit the like button if you're watching right now. Also, if you're listening on the Odyssey app, uh, if you're not, you should download the Odyssey app. Uh, if you're listening on the Odyssey app, please hit the follow button on 1210 WPHT. Our numbers are skyrocketing exponentially. I want to keep them going. So please make sure you hit the uh, the follow button. Um, last week during the State of the Union, uh, Joe Biden said about Lake and Riley's murder, alleged murder, I guess we have to say that, right, Don? Um, yes. uh, that he was in illegal. And that was parsed picked apart by every journalist that, and I use journalist in quotations um, they seem to be more upset with that than they do actually about the actual violent murder that uh, took the life of this 22 year old that's correct human being mm-hmm. uh, so here's a little montage put together by our friends at Gravian of all the journalists that think the term illegal <laughs> is more upsetting uh, than the actual violent murder mm-hmm. this is cut to Phil Go. The president is walking back a controversial term he used during his State of the Union remarks. Biden used the word, quote, illegal. He used the term illegal. He used the word illegal. (laughs) He used the word illegal. He used the word illegals to describe people. He did use a word that did bother people. Uh, Immigration advocates don't want to hear him use the word illegal. Do you regret using the word illegal to describe immigrants last night, sir? I kind of jumped as well when I heard that word. We normally don't use that word because people are not illegal. To be clear, no human being is illegal. Congressman (laughs) Chuy Garcia saying he was extremely disappointed to hear the president use that word illegal. Joaquin Castro has said like this using that word and illegal uh, dehumanizing is problematic. What did you make well, of that? Well, that's moment? probably true. He probably should have used a different word. Like Joe Biden's ad libs in the past, this one kind of got him in some trouble, particularly with Democrats who don't use the word illegal, call undocumented workers. Saying to uh, the broad Democratic base, um, you know, I hear you. I hear your concern. And, and I shouldn't use that word, is a smart thing to do. Yesterday, Biden attempted to rectify this by apologizing for using that word to describe an undocumented immigrant. You use the word illegal. So you, you regret using that word. Yes. He understands <laughs> or, or understood the damage um, that, that he caused, and he was very eager to make amends. You may be wondering, why does this matter? Right? It's just a word. Who cares? Well, his language matters. Uh-oh. The words we use to describe each other matters. And unlike Trump, Biden understands that words can shape our reality and that words can have real world and dangerous consequences. Oh, they <laughs> used words I don't like. <laughs> you know, it's amazing is they're more offended by what people say than the actions and the crimes that people commit. That is just where the left is today. And he- here's the politics of all of this. It's by design. They're not, I don't really think they truly are offended by the word illegal. But if they deviate away from the propaganda 
and are forced to address the root cause in the issue at hand here. The issue at hand is that a woman is dead because we have an open sieve of a border. So instead of addressing that issue and using your outrage there, because it would be an admission of your failed policy, the pivot is to be triggered over people's choices of words. If I were to go into a Starbucks and they close at nine o'clock, and I walked in at 9.45 and I jimmied the lock, I popped it and I went in and made myself a cold brew. Would that be considered illegal entry? The answer is yes. So if you come into this nation across our border illegally, that makes you commit, you're guilty in my opinion of illegal entry into this country, which makes you either an illegal alien, an illegal immigrant, an illegal migrant, whatever terminology you want to use. Because we're not a sovereign nation if we don't have protected borders. Uh, White House spokesperson, deputy spokesperson, Olivia Dalton, um, she said yesterday that Biden actually didn't apologize for calling Lincoln Riley's illegal alien killer in illegal. Um, we played that clip yesterday, and it was just in that montage of him saying that he, he regrets calling it. So that seems to be an apology to me, no? Yeah, again, we're mincing words here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cut four, Phil, go. Um, President Biden apologized for calling Lake and Riley's killer an illegal. It just, does he feel like he needs to apologize to illegal immigrants for calling them what they are? Or do you think the term illegal? First of all, I want to be really clear about something. The president absolutely did not apologize. There was no apology anywhere in that conversation. <laughs> no apology. He did not apologize. No. Uh, he used a different word. I think uh, what's, what's what we should be really clear about is the facts. So. In addition to the fact that, uh, you know, the president did not apologize, uh, I want to make another thing clear. The president spoke directly to this in the State of the Union address not four nights ago uh, when he um, spoke passionately about knowing what it means to lose a child and extended his deep grief and condolences to Lake and Riley's family in, in front of the entire country uh, in, the, in the House chamber. Um, and beyond that, I think it's unconscionable that there are some people who are playing politics with this young woman's tragic murder, uh, and particularly at a time when, let's not forget, House Republicans are standing in the way of a bipartisan border security agreement that is the toughest bill we have ever seen in history, and they're doing so because Donald Trump feels that the uh, American people's safety is less important than his personal politics. That's the fact. Wow. Uh, she's for, actually better at this than Craig John I was just going to say the same thing. She's absolutely, and by the way, her Olivia, great name, uh, name of my daughter. Um, yes, uh, she's way better than KJP. Um, but so you can say, I regret using this word, but that's not an apology in this administration's line of thought. I mean, Nick, do you regret saying this? Yes, I regret saying that. Okay, well, that's kind of my apology. I might not have used the word I the words I apologize, but it's an apology. And you know, they want to talk about playing politics, really? You want to go down that road, Democrats? Because you took George Floyd's death and politicized the holy hell out of it, right? And a Republican party, if you want to say they are politicizing Lake and Riley's death, that's fine. I said they should, to be honest, because maybe that'll actually get your attention with the border. Let's add up the number of deaths of African-American men at the hands of police and let's compare them to the number of deaths of fentanyl overdoses of a drug that can kill you that came through our southern border. It has to be 100,000 to one, I would be willing to bet. So let's not talk about politicizing tragedies, all right? Weasels. Uh, Joe Biden released a new campaign ad over the weekend. Uh, he started it off by saying, I know I'm old. <laughs> uh, this is cut 11, Phil, go. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. I led the country through the COVID crisis. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. I passed a law that lowers prescription drug prices, caps insulin at $35 a month for seniors. For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. 
I've passed the biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you, the American people, and that's what I'm doing. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Can we do one more take? Look, I'm very young, energetic, and handsome. What the hell am I doing this for? <laughs> it was a good ad. Yeah. It, it was whoever produced that and put it together. It makes him likable and human and warm. It's, I think it's an excellent ad but if from, you, just from that production standpoint. See, yeah, production-wise, I have no issue with it. It's the timing of it and the leading off of the message of, look, I know I'm not uh, a spring chicken. I know I'm not a young cat. This is coming after all of the talk about his age, all of the gaffes, uh, whether it's being all jacked up on Thursday night or all of the mistakes I highlighted yesterday in the big take from his appearances in Philadelphia and in uh, Georgia on Friday and Saturday. So to me, it, I, I, my takeaway is it's an absolute sign of desperation of, hey, we need to do our best in, in, in any way possible to combat this mental cognitive decline in this age talk because America's running with it and they believe it because they see it and they hear it. Mm -hmm. I think their strategy clearly is who's, who's the grandfather you trust. And so yeah. here's this, oh. this warm, nice, wise man that yes, may have from time to time, like your grandpa might have a little, little gaff here and there, but look at what I've done. So he's claiming all of these uh, accomplishments and saying, look at all I've done, and I'm, I'm your nice, trustworthy grandpa. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the good guy. We know that's not true, though. <laughs> but that's what he, I'm just yeah. saying, the, yeah. what they're trying to, to spin here, yeah, right, and I you. think it's quite an effective ad. Which, it might yeah. work, you know, because you know, there are people, and we're going to be paying attention to it, Robert Herr coming up and testifying. Those in the weeds know what the report showed with his cognitive decline. He's just a... He's just an innocent uh, elderly man who's lost his faculties. He can't stand trial. But for those that don't live it like we do, that just see that ad, you're right, Dawn. They're like, oh, that, that's, look, that's pop-up, you know? Yeah, so who's who's the grandpa you're going to trust? Yep. Because yep. they're both, you know, so they put it out there. Look, they're not so far away in age, but here's the nice grandpa who's working hard, and he's he's a good guy, and he might stutter every once in a while. But he's the guy who's going to get things done, and he's the good grandpa. And then over there, that's that sneaky grandpa who's going to, you yeah. know, take your lollipop money or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Eat your ice cream. He's the selfish grandpa. Yeah. Trump's the angry grandpa that had one too many bourbons and started shouting. And Joe's, mm -hmm. Joe's the pop-up who, um, you know, he embellishes tales of his past. So going back to the Biden apology thing where she said he didn't apologize for using the term illegal misfit toy has an interesting point on the YouTube chat says I'm not a fan of Joe but I regret is not an apology mm -hmm. saying saying I regret is not an apology yeah. it was carefully worded he's that's a good point really see I disagree yeah I disagree too if you say something or you do an action and I regret saying you that get called means for it? I'm sorry for right. saying that like it, that's like, an apology. but then say you're sorry he like, didn't say I'm sorry for he didn't say I those. regret is the same thing as I'm sorry. If I, cur if I, if I, if okay, I curse, if, let me just give you a Go ahead. if uh -oh. you if you say if you uh, mess up yeah. to your wife. Yep. Steph, I saying, regret. And you say, I, I regret staying out all night, getting <laughs> liquored up and gambling away. <laughs> All right, I well, regret that. That's Nick Kale. Hey. <laughs> allegedly. Hey. Can we use the word allegedly? <laughs> How do you think that's going to go over? I re Like, I regret? Wait, hang on. She wants to hear, I am so, baby, I'm so sorry. So, I messed up. So I'm an I, idiot. I'm sorry. So I regret is, is not the same thing as I'm sorry? No. Oh, I, think I we, disagree. I think we are really I, mincing words here. No. <laughs> As I mean, like, if I if I were to curse and Greg has to hit the dump button <laughs> and I get in his ear and I say, hey, man, I regret that. My fault. Like, that's my that's my apology. I'm exactly. Sorry. Right. Exactly. Like, I, I take I that as apology. If you say I'm sorry, mm. that is different than saying, oh, apologies or I regret. I'm sorry <laughs> yes. is owning it fully. 
This is this, this yeah, is right up there some, with your pistol Pete take. I'm, some, I'm an expert. Yeah, I was just gonna say era. you have some <laughs> you have some me. expertise in this one. <laughs> um, I no, I trust me, you. you I have no I, idea. <laughs> I agree. If it's like if it's such an egregious thing, maybe you say you're sorry. But like, I regret something is the same thing as apologizing for something minor. Right, so, Don. Well, it's saying, minor to us. So you're saying an apology is I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. A regret is if I could d undo it. it uh, my oh, upon f after further review, yeah. I should have done X. Wish I had said such and such. Coulda, woulda. But to us, because we don't think we don't think this is a big deal. No. So we we, can, we right? say illegal. Yeah. yeah. We say. So we don't think it's a big deal. I mean, my God, alien is in the Constitution, for God's sake. I know. People get so bothered by that word, too. I, to me, look, if, if you're asking me, did everybody who was bothered by it accept it? I do. I, I do. I think that he, it was appropriate that what he said. So it was an apology. It, it was not an apology, oh, though. Oh, wow. It was okay. not an apology. All right. He got away with it because everybody knows it's a minor thing, but purposely did not Would say they have, I'm sorry. So well, did he really get away with it because MSNBC really tracked him down in Atlanta to talk about it over the weekend. I I'm wondering, does Joe get away with this 2 or 3 years ago? Does Joe get away no. with this today if the economy and the border is much better? If if it was a formality that Joe's kicking butt and taking names and he's going to get reelected. I I think it's the wolves coming out and really jumping and they're hanging on every word he says now. Yeah. Because he's getting called out for it by usually the ones that carry his water. Uh, new poll in the YouTube chat right now. Is I regret an apology? This is the great poll question. <laughs> this I'm is gonna, the poll question of the week. <laughs> I'm going to put up there, yes. And I would be wrong because there is, right now it's like 78% and say, no, it's not an apology. So everybody agrees wow. with Dawn. Yeah. I mean, that's that's no shock. That's yeah, voice of reason. Um. Go there and vote if you want to. YouTube.com slash at 1210WPHD. YouTube.com slash at 1210WPHD. Um, by the way, uh, the uh, Bill Maher over the weekend, w I had this yesterday. By the way, a lot of these I had yesterday, but I had five pages of cuts yesterday. So, um, you know, there's always the next day. Uh, Bill Maher suggested on his program on a Friday night that President Biden should ditch Kamala Harris and replace her with Nikki Haley. <laughs> That could explain a lot of things. I, I, I mean, this is just a, this is an absurd take. Uh, cut eight, Phil. Go. Um, I know it's crazy to think that she could run with Biden, but that's my dream: mm -hmm. a unity ticket, and then he would, I think, definitely win because nobody's going to. And of course, she said some crazy things. Mm -hmm. Most politicians have not as crazy as. We've never been a racist country. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Wow. <laughs> but you would literally destroy the, Repu uh, the Democratic base. I mean, take no, off the really? first African American mm. female vice but she's, president. She's office a again. woman of color. Wink, yeah, wink. but it's just like oh, black women are well, like the yeah, core I, I of it. the Democratic Party. So I guess Nikki Haley doesn't qualify to the extent of being uh, a woman of color to the threshold that the left needs you to be because you have to visibly, obviously be able to say, oh, that's definitely a black woman. You look at Nikki Haley, like, and I've said this in the past on this show, you had first glimpse at her, first glance, I never would have thought she was, quote, a woman of color. She just looks like a white woman to me, uh, but she's obviously not. Um, first of all, I'll, I, I actually agree with Bill Maher here. You do? If Nikki, it, like, it's never going to happen. But if Nikki Haley was to be swapped in for Kamala Harris, I mean, think, we're, look at all the numbers that we saw in these open primaries. You know, say what you want. And we talked about Nikki Haley getting trounced, but a lot of her votes were coming from Democrats, and there's still a little base, and she has a little bit of the, what I like to call the repackaged, rebranded, old school guard Republican, Bush Cheney, McCain. If if Nikki Haley pulled a heel turn and became the VP, I I do think that Biden would win. Absolutely. But I look you look at the stats. Look at the results of these polls or not polls. Uh, these primaries. But the, whoever the panelist there is, I think it was Tara Palmieri. That she's right. You would be abandoning your entire Democrat base. Yeah. That 
That's just silly. Well, yes, but she would also, and and and, and on the flip side, Nikki would also be, um, you know, killing her career. I mean, maybe she already has by challenging Trump and refusing to endorse him at this date. I'm just saying, if it happened, I think she would win. I really do. Not she, Joe. I don't, and no. I. I don't, and I think also with the Democrats would just never do it. They would infuriate. That would be infuriating, yeah. especially to the African American, mm-hmm. to an African American woman. Uh, that is just such an insult. She's, yeah, she, he he's Mm-mm. tied to Kamala. Yeah, he's tied to Kamala for better or worse. He's tied to Kamala. By the way, here's here's why I disagree. Okay, Democrats always rally behind their guy. They always get behind whoever it is. I think it's. You know, when we talk about, oh my God, you alienated a portion of your base. That's that. That's that's the terminology we use with Republicans. Oh, you can't alienate MAGA. Oh, you can't alienate the evangelical Christian. The Republican that's offended is not going to show up. We don't apply that to Democrats. By the way, the fact that liberals are even talking about this just shows you how far Nikki Haley has fallen. Where they're talking about her as as a unity ticket with Joe yeah. Biden. Well, can that's what she. I mean, that's really what she. I mean, the, you you saw. I, my initial thought on Nikki Haley when this whole thing started months and months ago was she was just kind of your classic conservative, successful two-term governor in South Carolina. But the more you listened to her and the more you saw her, I mean, it was like, and we 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 showed you the picture with the AI, how she morphed into what what did we call her, Hillary? Yeah, where yeah. We, we merged the Hillary <laughs> yeah. Clinton picture with Haley. I mean, she really is if you think about it. That's why I think it would actually technically work. By the way, guys, Colonel John on YouTube, says the thesaurus identifies regret as a synonym for apology. I understand Thank it's a much. synonym, but it's not the much. real thing. <laughs> it's a fake synonym. Okay. So a synonym is not I'm sorry. Yeah, so take I that YouTube sorry. research guy. I love this. I love this. This, is my fa- this, will be, this will be my favorite thing we do all day. You know, how you, you know how we say, like, how do you define a woman? You know how you define a woman? A woman can define... How it is, a woman can define, I'm sorry gotcha. for every man. You know how, how I that? define That's a woman? <laughs> Two breasts and no bulge. <laughs> and put that on a That's shirt. Sin. So not, Go for it. So not right, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true, but it's not right. It's not right. Which two breasts? Like, is there an option for four? <laughs> no, like, no there, there, there was an episode of Marry with Children. Oh, here we go. Where Al, Al, Al envisioned what it would be like if women had breasts on their back as well. <laughs> God. These references, dude. I got it. Yeah, just, come on, man. I'm just think, <laughs> they got quick witted. <laughs> you didn't hire some dumb dumb. Think twice about this. <laughs> uh, Pete Buttigieg's <laughs> husband. Pete's coming. Pete's coming to Philly today. Okay. He, well, his husband is. I don't know where. I don't, what? How do you know it's not his wife? This is a well. That's true. Sure. This is a class he's in where they're pledging allegiance to the LGBTQ flag. Oh boy. One word for you, folks. I I just okay. Yep. <laughs> One word. Let's play this and dissect it, shall we? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is cut six. Phil, go. Is that Sheldon from Big Bang? Let that ever happen in any school and classroom that my daughters are in, and they will be yanked out quick, fast, and in a hurry. I'm going to give you one word. One word. You know what that was right there, folks? You hear it all the time. Oh, it's a right-wing talking point. You know what that was? Indoctrination. Indoctrination. To be fair, though, I think all those kids were gay kids. Are we sure right. about that? That I think, wasn't just a standard classroom with no, a few LGBTQ n- members? No, I think that's some sort of like a gay camp or something like that. Oh, well, I could be wrong, but yeah, it, yeah if you want to go to a gay camp and salute salute your shorts or whatever, go ahead. You do where, that. where is this, Ohio? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, to Bill, remember Bill Maher had the famous statement. He said, how come, you know, there are all these gay kids in certain parts of the country and not in others? And that's part of Mm -hmm. what we're seeing here. By the way, it's why in places like Bucks County, they said, hey, you know what? We're just not going to have other flags or other pledges. Yep. We're just going to keep. Keep things just focused on math and science and reading. Keep it simple, stupid. Tennessee, uh, in the last two weeks, had a couple of bans 
one of which was uh, the banning of the LGBTQ uh, rainbow flag in classrooms. The only class, the only flag that I want to see in a classroom, and I, I'm going to be consistent with this. And I like I I love the thin blue line police flag back the blue, but I don't need that in classrooms. Just like I don't need LGBTQ or anything else. There's one flag in this country in classrooms. If Nick Kale was ruling the world, and that is the red, white, and blue United States flag. That's it. That's it. I, I I'm not putting slants or preferential political biases on kids. When, when they become adults, knock yourself out. Uh, former President Trump was on Squawk Box on CNBC yesterday, so doesn't Squawk, Squawk Box dozen of dozens of people saw it, um, where he says that he's not a conservative; he's a man of common sense. I want to see how okay. you this sits with the two of you. Uh, cut five. They'll go. Though, given, given how country, given how divided. It feels this country is. I, I, I want to play you uh, just a, a piece of tape uh, from Ken Langone, who I believe supported you in, in the last election, who was on Squawk Box earlier, uh, about a month, a month and a half ago now. And I want to show you what he had to say, because I think it represents a lot of voters out there. And I'm, I'm just curious if you would react to it uh, and uh, explain sort of how you feel about it to the voters. Look at this, if you could, for a second. I worry if Trump wins that it's going to be four years of getting even. And that's scary because we've got serious issues coming up that need to be addressed. What, what do you think of that, Mr. President? Because I think that there is a, there is a feeling that, that there is still a, a, an anger and a frustration that you have about certain issues. Well, look, I've never been a fan of Ken. Uh, I, I've never, I don't know if he supported me. Maybe he supported me because I was the only one that he could support because that's the reason. But I've never been a fan. I've been a fan of Bernie Marcus. A big fan, and Bernie Marcus is a big fan of mine, and uh, that was the side I chose. And frankly, um, you know, he's right in one sense. People think that there's going to be revenge, and I say, no, the revenge is going to be success. It's not going to be revenge in a revenge stance. It's really going to be success. We're going to turn our country around. We're going to bring sense and, and common sense. You know, people say you're conservative. I'm not conservative. You know what I am? I'm a man of common sense. And a lot of conservative policies are common sense. We're not going to have open borders. You're going to have to come in legally. We're going to close up the borders. I had the best border. I had the safest border in the history of our country. So a couple of things. Yes, I do agree with him. The revenge will be success. He's only going to have one term. He's not going to have time to go on vendetta tours. He's only got four years to turn around the slop that we've lived through for three years and three months. But no, as far as the conservative comment, if you're being honest, yes, of course he's not. First of all, he used to be a Democrat. I used to be a Democrat as well. But the reality is he adheres to a lot of policies that Republicans and conservatives like. They want lower taxes. They want less government. They want tough law and order on crime. They want secure borders. I, I, I think very much a lot of the stuff that we talk about on a daily basis, it's not necessarily conservative in quote nature. It's, it's just common sense. Men cannot become females. Uh, defunding the police doesn't work. All this stuff. So I have no issue with that. I mean, remember Trump used to be, and I know this audience knows that, the, Trump used to be a darling of the left. And all of a sudden, because he puts an R in front of his name, yep. yeah, he becomes, uh, you know, Hitler reincarnated. Come on. Dawn, your thoughts on him saying he's not a conservative? I think that he's clearly trying to reach that fraction. Uh, everybody, everybody who loves Trump and is going to vote for Trump already knows all everything about Trump. So the fact that he says something like this is because he wants to win that slice of American voters who are not crazy about either side, who are undecided. And it's a tiny but critical slice of voters, and he knows that. And the truth is, he's he's not lying. Mm -hmm. We all know. I mean, he. but here's the thing with Trump. He's been honest. He's been transparent about everything, and sometimes too transparent. Yeah. But, but he tells you everything. He's never lied about who he is, mm -hmm. how he evolved, as a as a business person he's been really consistent yeah i mean it's the same thing with me i said when i started this show i have only voted three times in my life in 2008 at the age of 24 i voted obama in 16 i didn't vote obama again in 12 
I voted Trump in 16 and Trump in 20. I voted in three elections, two for Trump, one for Obama. And as I've gotten older, my beliefs have become certainly, certainly far more conservative. But this notion that you can't be a Democrat growing up by default in the household you were raised in or just being ignorant and dumb to suit certain things and then become a Republican or a conservative is ridiculous to me. And even though I ridicule like Joe Biden, Joe Biden has every right to go from being a moderate Dem to being a left wing progressive nut job. You have the right to change political parties and beliefs as you grow, whether it's authentic or not. It's like, you know what? I used to always love when I was doing sports. Oh, if you were born an Eagles fan, you got to be an Eagles fan for the rest of your life. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you have to be an Eagles fan? If they stink and you get tired of it, go pick another team. Who cares? Reagan began as a Democrat, originally as a younger man, viewed Mm -hmm. FDR as a true hero. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of, a lot of, I think Trump, I think truthfully, if you look at Trump, he is very influenced in his life by Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Going back to make America great again. American we can pull, exceptionalism. Well, we can and we can pull up the we can pull up Ronald Reagan saying in a political ad, make America great again and saying it at different speeches. So I think if you look at that model, mm-hmm. I think that, you know, now do I wish now that Trump would become more Reagan esque in some of his comments and the way he he um, has comebacks? Absolutely. You want more decorum and elegance is what you're saying? I mean, I would say, you know, Reagan had some great comebacks and clearly people's now we know many people wrote those comebacks for him and he was prepared for them. And the comebacks, some of them were pretty tough, Mm -hmm. but he had them locked and loaded, ready to go. And so he knew that he would deliver those and that's it. That's all he would say. Mm -hmm. And I think for the Trump campaign moving forward, it would be great to write those, have them good to go, get them in his head, brief him on those. You know, he's on the campaign trail 24-7, and and that's what the Reagan campaign, that's what they did. Yeah. It's 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 a planned effort. I If people disagree with me on this, please let me know, either on Twitter, the phones, the YouTube chat, Don Greg. I, I, I don't view Trump necessarily as a conservative. I view him as a populist. I think that he's somebody who clearly speaks with his policy. He he speaks with results. He's the first president we've ever had who who did not come from a background of being a career politician. Yep. And I think that matters. And I think that's why at the end of the day, I do believe next November Trump wins. I do. I think that he just has to stay on course and keep talking about it. I mean, we're we're expecting economic numbers this morning. If he stays on the economy and stays on the border, I think that most Americans, whoever you are, you know full well, the one who gets results, the performer with proven results, is Donald J. Trump. Yep. You can compare the two resumes. You had them side by side. It's pretty simple. And, you know, for for those that might disagree, I, I would argue that when you think about what populism is, it's really the political approach where you are striving to appeal to ordinary people who feel that their concerns are disregarded and neglected by the established political elites. And I think that's kind of encapsulates, you know, the Trump presidency. So, okay, you want decorum and you want democracy. I I love that. I remember reading like two years ago, there was an article saying that Trump and populism is a threat to democracy. How is that a threat to democracy? You know, there was a movement in this country and Don, you've said it many times. Trump didn't create it. He answered it. He answered the movement. And we're tired yes. of the the political elites, yes. the the lifelong people. Yes, and the fact that Biden began his State of the Union address, basically praising the New Deal, and comparing now to that time, which I I don't think we should be comparing these two times. But the New Deal prolonged things. The New Deal, and you look at look at this, and I would say Democrats and Republicans would agree. The New Deal spending failed to lift the American economy, failed workers, failed union workers. And no matter what you tell me, look back at those numbers. And I can't believe that Trump actually is not talking about that more, that 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 Biden started his State of the Union address running for reelection, which, as Greg Stocker said, was a campaign. That was that was a total campaign. Thousand percent. And he started it by basically telling you he's going to grow the government, which is a disaster for our economy, 
for jobs for all of us. Um, going back to the apology versus regret conversation. Yeah. Maybe the best tweet from Hasn't Been Sober I've ever read from Hasn't Been Sober. Hey. He says, I'm sorry is apologizing to someone else. I regret is basically apologizing to yourself. Hmm. I like that. That's deep. I like that. The, but it's but it's still an apology. Yes, yes. I'm it's still form, in that camp with you. But it's yes. a form of an apology, but it's... Yes, Dawn's still wrong. There's no doubt about it. I'm right. <laughs> Let me grab... Uh, <laughs> do we have time for a call sure. or do you have more cuts? Sure. Okay. Uh, Vincent Media wants to break down regret versus apology. Oh Vince, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? <laughs> good. I agree with what Hassan said because it'd be like saying, I regret marrying my first wife or I regret taking that job or even better, I regret voting for Joe Biden. <laughs> yes. But you're not, you're not apologizing to somebody else. You're not, you're just saying like what he said, you're kind of just wishing you had done something different. I regret marrying my first wife. So that's all I got. I just it's, think yeah, I it's, like, it. it's like a personal mea culpa, right? Yes, agreed 100%. There you go. Vincent Media, sound logic. Love it. That, okay. <laughs> Fucker's head's going to explode. I just, <laughs> Holy crap! It's an apology. You said you like... That's an apology. You, you like this type of stuff. Uh, no, no, I do. Uh, <laughs> what I don't like is uh, two, uh, uh, two people yucking it up on... on on a podcast, oh, who, boy, used, here we go. who uh -oh. used to who used to hate one another? Mm -hmm. They're a threat to democracy. CNN, they're liars. Uh -huh. Tucker Carlson is the devil, and then they go on each other's podcasts. And they, I, I sent and they you this because I knew it. this would be your take. I, I was just, hoping you would yell at me in a text, but you're going to do it on the air. I better. just despise the <laughs> the anybody who falls for any of this crap, and I don't mean this crap. I mean the stuff that you see on TV mm -hmm. or 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 on Twitter. Like you're gullible because these people don't hate one another. They're all just trying to get clicks and reactions. That's all they're trying to do. This is Tucker Carlson. Can we Car stop getting Thank our you. news from Twitter? Uh, Tucker Carlson. They're like they're, they they talk about why they hated one another. You know, uh, you know, I, I, I was sent things and I, I I didn't really know any of this stuff. Cut sixteen. Phil, go. So I'm not going to advance something that I thought was dirty when it was done to me, and I don't think there's value to the American people. They don't know what to believe because nobody ever shares ideas. And, you know, we can go through different stuff that I say, that you say, because I still want to know why you came after me as much as you did, by the I'm way. Probably. Because <laughs> it was easy. <laughs> I like CNN, and I really mean that in, in my heart of hearts. I really just don't. But why me? I don't know. Um, How can you not know? It was so <laughs> intentional. It was so frequent. Because people kept sending me videos from Instagram. You. It was me. It was <laughs> you. I sent the first video and then it was mesmerized. Well, what was, was wrong with me lifting weights? You're an outdoorsman. I just couldn't. I, I mean, I was pissed about the COVID thing. That is totally true. I didn't buy any of this from day one. That was totally real. But that's not... What I did was not really uh, a pure refutation of your positions on COVID. It was me taking the cheap shots. Oh, I'm not always above. And uh, but you should Yuck. be. You should be above that. Did it Yuck. feel good when you would come after me? Like felt that? a little dirty. Felt like, a little like dirty. dirty good. What are they on a date? You dirty. know, I'm not what really a dirty here? good guy. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because <laughs> like, you enjoy it. I, Let me know, tell you, there, there, there is no a moment shame in, in your the game. room. No, I guess cameras aren't picking up all the people sitting here. But <laughs> I mean, in the sense that, you know, I don't want to use any kind of sexual metaphor, but there, there is one for this. It's like something you shouldn't be doing, but there's kind of the animal thrill of what? doing something wrong. What the hell is happening here? Mm -hmm. You loved it. <laughs> You loved it, and it worked but for I you. But I will say this. I will say this. Wow, that, that, that is just, the, so the, there's a lot you, of sexual tension there between yeah. those two. So you're claiming a lot of fraudulence from all of these television talking yes. heads. Yeah. I totally get that. Uh, and Twitter. Ev everybody that's a, a Tucker fan said that this was, uh, this is what makes Tucker great. He's willing to talk to the, because I saw all the comments. This is what makes him great. He's willing to talk. But I think the big takeaway should be this. Forget Tucker Carlson and Chris Cuomo. They're, they're the elites, okay? They make tw $25 million a year. But ultimately, to me, what this is about, this is where we need to get back to as a country 
not deplatforming other people. And I'm not talking about talk show host first. Talk show host. I'm not talking about anybody on Fox versus CNN or this station right here against the Philadelphia Inquirer. I'm talking about Bob Smith against Rob Johnson, who are just random guys I'm making up here. One guy believes X, the other guy believes Y. This is where we need to get back to healthy debate, discourse, discussion. Not shouting the other one down, not deplatforming the other one. Well, you disagree with me, so you should be removed from the site. That's not what America is about. That, to me, is the takeaway. If you get away from all the, oh, look at this, and they're young, and everything that you're saying. And I'm not saying your opinion's wrong, because the, a lot of these guys are all full of crap and egomaniacs. By the way, two things. Cuomo never seems to miss upper body lifting day. He's jacked. And two... Why does Tucker always wear that blue shirt? You make 25. Can you get a second shirt from Michael Kors? <laughs> or do you only have one shirt in your wardrobe? I, I am so disgusted by this. Like, I just... See, I was intrigued I, by it. I don't... Look, I don't care. I don't care who you're friends with. I don't care who you're... You know what I mean? Like, like you can have friends that don't agree with you. You can have conversations with people that don't agree with you. That's not what this is about. What this is about is two people that when they are on their rival shows would sit there and, and degrade one another. And, this one's lying. That one's lying. And now they sound like they're on a date together. Yeah. Like, there's definitely a bro. Yeah. Like they just like here. swiped grinder and, yeah. and it's like, Hey baby, uh, animal magnitude. Hey, like it's gross. Well, I, it's I do just think gross. And, and Tucker said it there. He was honest about COVID. And I do think the way uh, COVID was handled by uh, the, uh, you know, the, the whatever you want to call him, the greater Cuomo, the lesser Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo. Um, I mean, what he did during COVID was was inexcusable, stuffing these people in uh, nursing homes and retirement facilities and elderly assisted, you know, these these places where COVID was spreading like rapid fire. And Cuomo deserved to be whacked at CNN for everything that was going on with him and his brother and everything behind the scenes. Chris Cuomo, to me, and I'm not defending Tucker Carlson. I think Tucker's a little squirmy as well. But like Cuomo is just, I, I remember, I've told you this story in the past. In 18, 19, especially 20 in the pandemic, the early days. I remember having FaceTimes when I was down in Nashville with my mother-in-law and she'd be watching Cuomo. And I, I told her, I said, Judy, I'm telling you, Chris Cuomo might be the biggest fraud on television. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's, that guy's got skeletons. And lo and behold, they eventually came out. Yeah. Well, the skeleton, the biggest one was that he was <clears throat> advising his governor brother and even giving him insider information as to what reporters were working on. Yep. And that's that's a huge violation. It's one thing to just give your brother advice and try to empower him when he's in battle, but that's not what this is. J JK13, like, st he's a stalker. If you had the chance to interview the king of all wokeness, Stern, you would kiss his butt. I, look, I'm not, This that is so, like, I make no bones about the fact that I say that Howard Stern influenced me more than any other human being as far as my career goes. I so, am woke, mother <laughs> and I love it. So yes, of course I would. And I'm not really the one trashing him on this show. It's usually Nick. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> so I would have, and now we don't do a lot of guests on this show, but if, if we ever could get Howard Stern on, regardless of how I feel of this incarnation of Howard Stern, I, w I don't want somebody sitting across from me in this chair for 20 minutes agreeing with what I say. And I would love to have conversations with people that ideologically disagree with me. So, like, get out of your bubble. What's his name? JC13? Yeah. Yeah, like, I would take Howard Stern. I would take Don Lemon on this show. I would take Tucker Carlson, obviously big names. But I don't want a bunch of yes men. Oh, you're right, Nick. That's a great point. <laughs> I, I don't... Yes, I'm... Uh, I would I would love to talk to Howard Stern and and I like it has nothing to, but Tucker Carlson didn't sit here and say that uh, Chris Cuomo influenced him and was a huge uh, and was a huge mentor to his career and this that and the other like they hated they hated one another. Mm -hmm. Hey Zeus says Greg, don't you Nick and Dawn crap on the sports show, but then hug it out afterwards? Sounds like the Lesser and Carlson have the same relationship. Ew. I mean, I mean, do we crap on what sports show? I, I mean, like, uh, the camera and Richie. Do we, I mean... Oh, I mean, I crap on the format. I don't crap on them specifically, because I like those guys. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I'm just not. I'm just not going to, you know, be a switchboard sure operator. Make yourself. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm just not going to take phone calls for four straight hours. Is it Super Bowl or bust? Like the the format is just going to poop in my. Opinion. I was just praising my friend Ike. Yeah. Great Ike Reese. You like his raspy voice. I know. We like to we like to throw jabs. What they're doing, guys, is not throwing jabs. Fox News, when Tucker Carlson was there, was telling you that CNN was evil and it was the devil and it was it, fake news, this, that, and the other, and he's yucking it up with the king of fake news. That's what I'm talking about. I, I just think, I think most people realize this, but like at the end of the day, even though, and we all have our, you know, our favorite, um, you know, channel, uh, I'm, I'm a default Fox News guy by default. Some people that are very, very, very super right don't like Fox anymore. They go to OAN or Newsmax. Uh, you know, some people don't, obviously, the, the, the moderate to the left, they hate Fox News. You know, but I don't sit there and take Fox as gospel. I know they're putting a slant on things. In, in general, do I agree with the opinions and the policies and the ideology? Yes. But if you don't think like that Jesse Waters or somebody's getting on there to put on a performance, yeah. then you really are a gullible fool. <laughs> All right, we really have to break. Do we have to? I'm really enjoying this. Let's go commercial free till 10. <laughs> no, we can't do that. We can't right. do that. Right. I'm, I'm I'm already yelling at myself. Yes. I need to have a meeting with myself. I agree. Well, for, I'm going to need to have a meeting with express myself. Express his regret. Yes. Blowing, off, blowing off a half hour worth of breaks. I'm a capitalist and a <laughs> corporate whore. All right, we'll come back and uh, well, we'll get to Dawn's big three uh, as we wrap up the 8 o'clock hour. And we'll do that next. But first, a word from my friends at the Piazza Auto Group, which uh, provided for us, uh, as you saw last week in all the videos on social media for the debut of Kale Pool Karaoke. It was the 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. That is how we, uh, that was the vehicle that we filmed the first episode. I gotta tell you, really interesting SUV because it's got the rugged off-road capability type stuff that guys like when it's just guys doing guy things. But when you're married and you have children and you're raising a family and you start to settle down, the big thing now, the big, the big trend, the new thing, third row seating. It's all I hear from my wife. I want something with third row seating for the girls and their dance bags. You get all of it with the 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport, which features a seven mode drive system, trail watch, multi-camera view, 18 inch alloy wheels, and wireless Apple CarPlay. And you can check out all of their options at one of their five Honda locations for Piazza. It's in Philadelphia, Pottstown, Redding, Springfield, and Langhorn. Check out their locations today or shop all the inventory at piazzaautogroup.com. Bet the NBA with a no sweat. Same game parlay from FanDuel in partnership with Valley Forge Casino. Every Thursday with TNT Thursdays, it doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. You'll get bonus bets back if your same-game parlay doesn't win on any NBA on TNT game. NBA same-game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance to score an even bigger payday. However you want to play, just head to FanDuel.com slash Greg. FanDuel.com slash Greg to bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay with TNT Thursdays. That's FanDuel.com slash Greg. Do it now. FanDuel.com slash Greg. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA and 1210 WPHT, 21 and over. President PA, minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued is not withdrawable. Bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem. Please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Wendy's breakfast, two for $3 piggy bundles. Let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best. Sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's two for $3 piggy bundles. Limited at a time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? 
The crazy thing is, this never ends. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-329-2121. That's 800-329-2121. 800-329-2121. Follow Talk Radio 1210 on Instagram and Facebook at 1210 WPHD. Welcome back in, Kale and Company, Tuesday morning. This segment brought to you by Best Work Industries for the Blind. And they are changing lives, a nonprofit organization located in Cherry Hill. Best Work Industries for the Blind provides training and employment for people who are blind or visually impaired. For employment opportunities or to donate, go to bestworkindustries.org. Good to have everybody in here on this Tuesday morning. Shafe on the YouTube chat. I very rarely look at the YouTube chat, but Shafe says, uh, Greg, do you apologize or do you regret for going long in the cut? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize and regret it. <laughs> Boy, that's going to be that's going to be an all timer. That, that might do we still do like uh, the, the best of on the weekend with the show? Yeah. Uh, if so, that, yeah. that might need to make uh, the best of for sure. Eight, five, five, eight, three, nine, twelve, ten. If you want to jump in and apologize. Uh, oh, there's about an anything. important question. What's that? And this is actually this is actually an important question. Okay. Because Jesus wants to know about or wait, uh, Fees actually wanted to know if you order Blue Chew, it shows up. When it shows up, it's confidential. Nobody's going to know it's a Blue Chew box. That's that's, cr- that's a real that's a real yes answer. Discreet delivery. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Promo code twelve ten. Yeah. Thank you. First month free. First month free. Your folks. privacy protected. Yeah, that is exactly. Right. There you go. All right. Uh, a couple of things to get to before we wrap up the third hour. Actually, no, we have to get to. Uh, yes, we yes, do. Yes, we do. Yeah. 848. Let's get to. Uh, <laughs> we'll save the uh, shrinkflation Snickers uh, rebuttal to Joe Biden's State of the Union accusation. That'll come up at the top of the hour. Right now, it's time for Dawn Stenzel's Big Three at 848. It's the Big Three at 8 on Kale and Company. Big Three sponsored this morning by American Heritage Credit Union. And we should have some uh, economic numbers today, so we will watch for those. So, number one, as we look to hmm, number, I'm going to switch this up. Number one, uh, we're going to have today's hearing on special counsel Robert Hur is going to testify before the House Judiciary Committee about his probe into President Joe Biden's handling of classified documents. And this is going to be fierce questioning that's going to start at. 10 o'clock in the morning Uh-oh. from both parties. <laughs> right off of the top of the I know, dawn show. Always a 10. Uh, over his decision not to charge Biden while characterizing him as, quote, an elderly man with a poor memory. So both sides are expected to rip him up to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes this guy. Nope. Ripping him a new, yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> So we'll see if he yeah. regrets anything, apologizes mm. for anything. Which is very fascinating. It's hard for Republicans and Democrats to hate you yes. equally. If Republicans I... want him charged, and Democrats are like, no, how dare you say our guy's old and not with it anymore? We're trying to get reelected, gosh darn it. <laughs> and we've talked a lot this morning and debated the terms of apologies, saying apologies, I'm sorry, regrets. Yeah. <laughs> and that brings us to Princess Kate. And Princess Kate, uh, Princess Kate Gate, this and so her bizarre. apology. I didn't even do the story yesterday because I think it's so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's bizarre, though. No, it is so bizarre. So she recently had some abdominal surgery after the, you know having three kids. Went away, had some surgery. Nobody saw her, probably because she's recovering. Mm-hmm. But they were all making a fuss about it. So on their UK Mother's Day. She released, she put out on their social media, on the official Kensington Palace social media, put out a picture of herself and her three children. And that sparked this whole new controversy about the fact that she, that obviously it was 
an altered photo, okay. touched up or whatever. So did she just have basically the lap band or like lipo? She basically wanted to go from being bigger in the midsection to being tighter again? She was pretty, she's pretty thin and fit. Okay. She never looked big. Okay. So who knows? Maybe she has like Crohn's disease. Like nobody knows what her personal, why she had the surgery. I have no idea. All right. But uh, the abdominal surgery, but the, the, they're not happy in the palace because she played with the photo. Seriously. So there, so she released a statement that first of all, a lot of places retracted the photo PR disaster going on. It's a picture of Princess Kate with her three little kids who are adorable, but you can tell, they, and they've zoomed in on the fingers, and it's just goofy that they're focusing on this. Yeah. But she did release a statement and and basically saying that she, she wanted to apologize and never meant to start this whole firestorm. So she she literally released a personal apology, taking responsibility for the confusion that she had inadvertently caused by crop it by manipulating the photo okay what 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 is your stance on today's technology where and i'm going to tread lightly here with how i position this because i don't want any um random objects thrown at me it seems to me that from my extensive field research in this subject that women use photoshop and filters on pictures on social media more than men typically do. I think it's safe to say. I have no data to back that up, just random observations. I, I don't think, in this case, Nick, the weird thing to me is that I don't think that she did, the, like, I always whiten the teeth. I always, like, every photo, I whiten everybody's teeth. It's really? It's my thing. Yep, I whiten everybody's teeth. That picture that the three of us took, she's she she photoshopped that too. Really? Yeah, but then you put up the non photoshop oh one. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't like myself in any no. in any light. I thinned everybody. I did. I, <laughs> I shaved trust, thirty pounds off of Nick. I confess. Like everybody looks purtier than Cuomo. But you're a former TV person, so you you there's a there's an aesthetic thing to television. Like hacks like Stalker and I from radio. Like we don't you know for up until now until the YouTube channel, nobody ever saw us broadcasting, right? No, I mean for in in all honesty, women are no matter what anybody says. Okay, first of all, we are all judged by the way we look. Number one, that's a real thing, whether you want to say admit it or not. We're all judged. It's a judgy society, and in America, the worst for being judgy. But on women, absolutely. Women are definitely, women, look at Don Lemon's comment. And and why wasn't it immediately, why wasn't he immediately fired? Because mm-hmm. a lot of people went, meh, meh, she's kind of past her prime. Right. I mean, that that was like, that's American, That's a, that is a, an American philosophy, but it's also a world philosophy. Okay. But anyway, that's not what this is. She, I think she was playing around with, I think what happened is, it, and you know this, when your kids are younger, it's hard to get all of them to smile and stand nice stand and their still, eyes aren't closed. Pay attention. Yeah. And so they probably were taken and she went, well, this is the best picture of my little one. And so she probably said, well, I'm going to take this photo. I'm going to take Princess Charlotte's head from this photo because that's her and little Prince George, who's 10. And it was probably Prince Louis, who's five, who was the biggest problem. And so she was cropping the kids i think the kids they you know what i mean it was actually to make it look like a nice photo and everybody's eyes were open gotcha i think that's i don't think she whitened everybody's teeth all right I'm okay just gonna miss american that. heritage credit was- union unlock financial freedom with american heritage credit union secure your future with a 13-month ira certificate five percent annual percentage yield enjoy flexibility with a 10-month five percent APY American Heritage CU.org. Join today. American Heritage Credit Union sponsors us. All right. Thank you very much, Dawn. Coming up next, Snickers says, No, our candy bars have not shrunk, Joe. It's a lie, a bold faced lie. Kale and Company, fourth hour next. Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. You know what? If you don't call my friends from QC Kinetics and you're suffering with joint pain, you're going to really regret it. We've talked a lot about apologies, regret. So don't have to live in regret. Don't make yourself live in regret this spring, this summer. Just call my friends at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. I am talking lasting joint pain relief, no surgery, no drugs, no downtime. It is a fact. QC Kinetics is transforming lives in real time as I'm speaking. Why? Because QC Kinetics 
has advanced treatments which harness your own body's ability to restore and repair your damaged joint tissue. Pro athletes, they've been doing this for decades. They've known about it. And now this life-changing treatment is available for you, for me, for all of us. So you can do everything that you love, whether it's walking, running, climbing the stairs, playing some golf, whatever. Get out there, move again pain-free. And that means no pain pills, no risky surgery. This is an all-natural solution. QC Kinetics has tens of thousands of satisfied patients. They're the proof because they've reclaimed their mobility. So do this. Take action. Live your best life this spring, this summer. And what a great use of your tax refund check. Call QC Kinetics for a free consultation. 215-999-3000. 215-999-3000. Just call QC Kinetics today. 999-3000. Tell them Dolan sent you. At Consumer Cellular, you get the same exact coverage as the largest carriers, but for up to half the cost. Same thing, up to half the cost. Up to half the cost for the same thing. 50% the money for 100% the same thing. I hope I'm making myself clear. Consumer Cellular. When freedom calls, we're here to answer. Call us at 1-888-FREEDOM. Half the cost savings based on cost of Consumer Cellular single line 5 gigabyte data plan with unlimited talk and text compared to lowest cost single line postpaid unlimited talk text and data plan offered by T-Mobile and Verizon May 2023. Do you feel like you're going through life clouded by doubt? Talk to California Psychics. Our trusted and accurate psychics are available 24-7. And we guarantee, if it's not life-changing, it's free. Download the app or connect with us at CaliforniaPsychics.com. Right now, new customers get 80% off their first reading. Experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? The crazy thing is, this never ends. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your time share or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-329-2121. That's 800-329-2121. 800-329-2121. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies. Because when people don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from, they can truly thrive. Like Marta. And now we'll hear from our class valedictorian who with our hard work never ceases to amaze us. Please welcome Marta Moreno. And Alex. Hey Alex, how did the interview go? I did it, I got the job, I can't believe it. I knew it, let's meet up later to celebrate. And Diego. Mom, I got first place at the science fair with my volcano project. That's amazing, sweetie, congratulations. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished, and everyone deserves to live a full life. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. feedingamerica.org slash act now. A public service announcement brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Chronic pain, cancer, fatigue? Find out about the benefits of medical hydration therapy on Health Watch with Dr. Molly Fantasia every Sunday morning at 8 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Listen to Joe Yakovich on The Heart of Your Money Sunday mornings at 9 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Learn about investing, tax strategies, and more. Joe Yakovich on The Heart of Your Money Sunday mornings at 9. Hey, Riverton, we know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Always live on the free Odyssey app.
Welcome back in. Kale and company, Nick Dawn and Greg. It is a Tuesday morning. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. The sun has risen. The sales reps have walked by, <laughs> stared inside the cages of the studios like we're zoo exhibits as they make their once a week trek to 2400 Market. 855-839-1210, the number. Get us on social media at 1210WPHT. The free Odyssey app. Watch us live on YouTube. If you're not consuming us, that's I, I can't explain it. There's a million ways to get the show. Uh, also, by the way, we I, I had a couple of tweets yesterday. Um, I think we ultimately got nailed by the YouTube police again. We did, yeah. yeah. Oh, what happened? Yeah. I'm so tired of those scumbags. Uh, probably because we played the SNL clips yeah. and maybe the, um, the Oscar clips, too. Boy, they are the most ardent... Um, yeah observers of when we use their content it's also not going to stop me from doing it so like the youtube is a nice um little yeah. uh, uh you know appetizer but yeah. it's not the main course that's correct so uh, we're going to do what's best for the radio show first yeah. and if that takes gets us taken down off youtube then so be it look at you pandering to uh -huh. the the original radio base as a man who well, went that's to, where 90% of our know, audience yeah. is. So, but like, everyone was why would I go to, well, you know, everyone was, where 2% of it is? Everyone was like, oh, my God, stop pandering for Instagram followers. And then it was uh, Twitter followers. Yeah. We wanted to get the 10K. By the way, by the way uh, if you want to hear the, the, the regret versus apology discussion, <laughs> uh, uh, Phil clipped it. And it is on it is on Twitter right now, at 1210WPHT. Yeah. If you can uh, tweet. Mm -hmm. Retweet that or whatever, yeah. and uh, weigh in yeah. at twelve ten WPHD. It's good water cooler Twitter. talk around the office for you. There you go. You guys can have your own little show. Yeah. Uh, morning mystery movie clip coming up at nine twenty. What's on the cut sheet? Part due at the bottom of the hour. So um, you know when you're Joe Biden and you're putting your reelection uh, efforts together and you're putting together your campaign for four more years, you start to say, okay, what are our accomplishments? What's the spin? What do we want? A highlight, um, and Joe, amongst all of his um, his esteemed accomplishments, hashtag sarcasm, he is really big on junk fees and shrinkflation. And if you recall, during the not only the State of the Union, but I also believe it was he turned down CBS for the Super Bowl uh, Super Bowl interview. But ultimately, we talked. Uh, we saw that one ad. I think I actually think Biden put it out. Was on TikTok. It was his first mm -hmm. TikTok post, talking about shrinkflation and how you know ice cream and candy bars and bags of chips. And when I'm watching the big game, I'm like you. I like to have snacks. And he's mad that the snacks are getting smaller. So uh, an update to that story, courtesy of the New York Post yesterday. Snickers, the candy bar, denies Joe Biden's State of the Union accusation that it has reduced the size of their candy bars via shrinkflation. So uh, this is directly from the New York Post. President Biden blasted Snickers as an example of shrinkflation during his Thursday State of the Union address. But the candy bars manufacturer denied that it has been quietly reducing the size of its candy bars. Quote, snack companies think you won't notice when they charge you just as much for the same size bag, but with fewer chips in it, Biden said during his Thursday night State of the Union address. Quote, you get charged the same amount and you get robbed of about 10 percent fewer Snickers in it, Biden continued, claiming that his administration is, quote, cracking down on corporations that engage in price gouging or deceptive pricing from food to health care to housing. Also, Biden yesterday with the big proposal on a, a new budget bill. We'll get to that a little bit later in the show. Uh, but Mars, the parent company of Snickers, which manufactures the iconic chocolate, caramel, and peanut candy bar, debunked the president's statements. And now Joe's getting fact-checked by the New York Times and Snickers. It's a tough time for Joe. Uh, he says, uh, this is from Mars, We have not reduced the size of Snickers singles or share size in the U.S., the company said in a statement to CNN per a screenshot that was shared via Twitter, quote, like many industries, we continue to face high inflation and spikes in material costs. However, we work to absorb these extra costs wherever possible. 
to provide affordable treats and the best value, the candy giant added. Quote, final prices are always at the discretion of the retailer, but we make every effort to minimize costs to provide a full range of delicious products, Mars said. Scott Jennings, the CNN contributor who shared this statement, captioned the post saying, as I suspected, the president is literally slandering a candy bar company. Um, So a couple of things on this. Now, I I can't attest one way or the other as to what Snickers is doing or not, because I don't buy or consume candy bars anymore. I guess I could probably ask my daughters. I mean, they've got Halloween candy left over. They've got Easter candy from the year before. They've got candy, candy, candy everywhere. Um, Although they probably wouldn't even understand it, it being, you know, reduced in size. But I did come across this, and this is where I said earlier this morning on the show, I'm going to give Joe a little bit of credit because it's not candy bars, but I noticed it last night at dinner. Wife and the girls, they're up here, spring break, because Tennessee's school system, they go to school earlier in the year. So they're on spring break, and um, they're going to be moving up here in June, and we had to uh, go to a dance studio last night for a tour to see if it you know, meets the, uh, the high standards of the wife because, you know, my girls are going to end up on Broadway one day and make lots of money, and you know they're the greatest thing. They're the LeBron James of of dance studios, you know. So it's one of those proud things. Dad. Yes, oh yes, proud dad indeed. But you know, by the way, your kid's not going to play in the NFL, folks. All right, I got news for you. Statistics show it's almost an impossibility. But we went out to eat, and I won't mention the name of the restaurant. I don't know if they advertise on any of our stations. I'm and I'm not in the business of ridiculing local businesses. Um, but we go to this establishment. And I get this double smashed patty melt with um, a couple of cheeses, uh, habanero something. And um, it's probably my fault because I didn't even realize that it was a melt. So it didn't come out on a bun. It came out on Texas toast. And it came with with fries. And my my daughter, Olivia, she got a, a grilled chicken Caesar salad. And it was massive massive compared to my sandwich and fries my wife got a wrap and my other daughter mia the other twin mimics her mom so she got the same wrap everybody's got like these massive plates in front of them like more food than they can possibly consume right i already know there's going to be leftovers they're going to be taking it home and i'm sitting there and the waitress hands me my little basket it came out in a basket i I, don i kid you not Mm -hmm. i thought i ordered it off the kid menu it was so small and it was seventeen ninety nine for an Angus patty melt, a double. And you, you love this soccer, I know you do. Old man yelling. I know that now. Old this man was, yelling at cloud. We're not saying the restaurant, but um, which I believe is owned by a listener. But this is the one that's in Bluebell. I'm not going to comment on that. Okay. No comment. All right. So I think I know. It, I'm looking at the basket, and I, I looked at Kristen, and I said. I ordered off the adult and she's just like snickering and giggling because like she knows like that, like when I went, when I'm in the mood to house some food, I, I can kill a whole pizza yeah. in about four hours on a Friday afternoon, cheat day pizza Friday, which is about three days out. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, what is going on? I pick up the melt and I mean, the burger was relatively okay, but they also cut it diagonally. Like when you cut toast, you either mm-hmm. cut it straight across in half or you do diagonal. So it just looks so small. And I had about 17 or 18 French fries and I'm like, Seventeen ninety nine for this? I mean, I ate it. I wanted to order a second one. Mm-hmm. And, and this is where I do think, hold on to the steering wheel here. Uh, this is where I think Joe Biden is right on some issues when it comes to shrinkflation. And, okay, either the prices aren't going up, but the size of the product is going down, or that they're double whammying you. The size, the portion goes down, and the price still goes up. And look, I get it. You have profit margins and you got to pay for like I, I, as much as it kills me, you know, the mom and pop pizza place charging twenty two ninety nine for a large pie. It, I think it's outrageous, but they're getting killed on the price of cheese that the dairy costs are killing these places. And believe it or not. There's, a, I think there's a lot of people that now see like the chain pizza places like Pizza Hut mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah, it's crap, but you know what? $13.99 versus $21.99 in this day and age, I'll take the chain crappy pizza over the, the mom and pop place because I'm saving eight bucks. And obviously Pizza Hut can buy cheese in much bigger bulk. So they get it at a cheaper rate versus a, a local establishment that doesn't have the, uh, the purchasing power 
to purchase in such mass quantities to get the, uh, you know, the discounted rate. Now, we're bright. We're here's where Biden is wrong. And this is why it's embarrassing. Dude, you're 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 banking reelection efforts in part on junk fees and shrinkflation. Dude, focus on the border, focus on the uh, the economy, uh, inflation, crime, the, you know, the actual issues that Trump addressed and solved and pretty much perfected his first time around. So strategically, I think it's a terrible idea to build your campaign for president around shrinkflation. It, it's like, you know, it's got a little a little bit of truth and there's an element to it for sure. But I'm sitting there last night and I'm like, oh, my God, 1799. And, and, and you should have photographed yourself. Yeah, I, I, but then I, I, I don't want to. I don't want yeah, to. don't want to call don't rip the company. But you should photograph yourself and then say, if you want more beef, vote Trump, <laughs> because the truth is, it's point. shrinking with Biden. Yep. And it's going to be bigger and better with Trump. So the deal is that this, you know, these are family-owned franchises that you're talking about, and it's fresh, never frozen Angus beef. So they want to keep that quality. You obviously, if you have the fries, because I know this particular establishment, you, normally it comes with pickles and chips, but you upgraded it to I the did, fries. I did. I <laughs> did. <laughs> so I never do chips. Get that out of here. So you were paying. So they so they put it all out there so that everything is like fresh. Yeah. It's not from frozen crud. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not junk food, or you know. And so you paid the extra amount of money, yeah. but you're still getting that high quality. Yeah. Because guess what? They have to still pay everybody. They're they're struggling to even get the hired help. Somebody's got to drive. Everything's more expensive mm-hmm. under Joe Biden's eco- yep. economy, and that's what we're all feeling. And and Olivia, I know Stalker wants to jump in here, but real quick, <laughs> Olivia gets the grilled chicken Caesar salad, and she didn't get a kids one. She got the adult one, and I swear it's amazing. It's like you know, it's like when you go to Subway, they give you a, a brick and a half of lettuce, and they skimp on the meat and cheese. They've done that for twenty years, even when inflation wasn't out of control. So she gets her big plate of uh, the big bowl with the grilled chicken Caesar salad. And I'm telling you, there could not have been more than like five or six ounces of chicken. She, so she got like 13 pounds of lettuce. They skimp on the dressing. And if that was a half of a chicken breast, I, that would be me being generous in my assessment of the amount of meat she got. $14. I mean, mm-hmm. what's what's a head of lettuce cost? Two twenty nine. dollars Yeah. Uh, You're lucky you don't have teenage boys. We're being ga- We're being gouged. Nine, 91 Alex Exeter, who is my favorite YouTube <laughs> YouTube chatter of all time, uh, says, um, he's talking to you, Nick, <laughs> if a lot of these uh, Shikvozes would quit flushing their money down the drain on their bets, they'd be able to <laughs> buy their loved ones quality food <laughs> instead of mean. chain pizza. <laughs> you know what? My wife said the same thing. That might be my wife's burner account. I love it. If it is, uh, welcome, welcome, Kristen. But regardless of whether or not you lose money on bets or on alcohol, like I do. Um, here's the thing. It's this is something that is affecting everyday Americans, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just we're at a point where you and I, I had this conversation with Kristen and she's like, Wow, it's just um, you know, thirty dollars more for this and then uh seventeen dollars more a month for that. And I said, Yeah, but it's adding up. It's it's death by a million paper cuts is what it is. Yeah. Gas is up, energy is up, groceries are up. And you you add it up here and you add it up there. The average American is spending thousands of dollars more per year that most of us don't have for just the stand. And like, you know, when you go to some of these restaurants, these are not high end restaurants. These are you know, these are a tick above Red Robin, for God's sakes. Right. And, and, and we're, we're walking out. It's like one hundred and thirteen dollars. What did I just what did I buy? Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to ask Stalker for a weekend shift. Henry's dad says, wham, my burger's small. <laughs> Dawn, I like it. We got we to gotta make a shirt. If, if you have a beef, fire Joe. <laughs> That's right. Uh, 91 Alice Xer also wants to know, Dawn, if you used to buy Trump steaks. <laughs> he made ne- steaks? No, that's the one thing I never, I never bought kidding? Trump steaks. He made everything. I know. I, but I, I do have, I used to buy all the Trump ties. I'm fleecing the people. Sorry, um, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? No, the Trump ties are high quality. Oh yeah, made in so, China. Well, see, I no, would they're, buy, not, they're I, beautiful silk tie. I have them all hidden away because Larry spills everything all over. He's going to ruin them. So I, the see, I, w- ties. I would buy a Trump steak before I buy Trump sneakers. There's no doubt. That, okay. Yeah, I'm not buying the shoes. Four hundred bucks. You guys have been insane. They weren't a four hundred originally. I I just love steak. I'm, a, I'm dad, a man of beef. Yeah. Where's the beef? Yes.
All right, so there you go. They I've, do have a points, and uh, you can sign up for rewards to that particular establishment. All right. Well, they have a loyalty program. Still can't confirm, though, if Snickers is shrinking up their um, well, the, chocolate the, bars. My problem with the chocolate bar story is that rarely, rarely nowadays do you buy the original big bar. You usually buy a bag of those little bite-sized things anyway. Yeah, you pop them in the freezer. Yeah. Yeah. Put them in the candy jar. Mm-hmm. So what does it matter? Crow Fishing says uh, <laughs> overhead is through the roof, and this includes wages, food, yep. energy, and mar- and marketing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, it's not just one si- single yep. thing. It's, it's the whole it's, operation. It's the whole operation yes. combined yes. because when you have to pay somebody $17 an hour or whatever it is, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everything everything goes up. Yep. So, All right. Yeah, everybody feels entitled now. Um, yeah. I should be making like $75 an hour because, you know, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like my daughters. <laughs> All right, we'll come back. Morning mystery movie clip is on the way. I will keep fighting the good fight for the average Joe out there that just Ooh. wants a good big burger at a de- uh, decent, reasonable price. And that'll be my platform that I run on in 2032. Kale and Company, <laughs> morning mystery movie clip is next. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. They're local, family-owned, and operated since 1979. Schedule your free in-home design consultation today. Kitchen Magic is the full-service remodeler I trust to quickly, beautifully, and affordably transform your kitchen or bath. Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Just visit KitchenMagic.com. Tell them Dawn sent you. For a limited time, when you call Oliver for a new air conditioner, you'll get a gas furnace for free. You heard right. Buy a new high-efficiency air conditioner today, and the gas furnace is free. Plus, 0% financing and monthly Monthly payments as low as 99 bucks. Call 855-275-6548 or visit OliverHeatCool.com. Oliver Heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Reliable, fast service you've come to trust for more than 50 years. Financing and payments are subject to credit approval. Terms and conditions apply. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now. 800-575-6986. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and Yelp and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-575-6986. That's 800-575-6986. Tax Relief Advocates. Real solutions for real people. For a complete list of Talk Radio 1210 WPHT's contest rules, go to 1210WPHT.com slash rules. The IRS finally caught up with Louie. I hadn't paid my taxes in eight years. I owed the IRS a lot of money. Louie was in deep trouble. We're going to take your house, put a lien on your bank account, uh, garnish your pay. They don't care. They're going to take your paycheck. Louie found out about Optima Tax Relief, the leading tax resolution firm. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, they've resolved over $1 billion for their clients. Optima Tax, they help me. They calm me down. They made me feel comfortable, and I trust them. Louie has a lot to be thankful for. I don't owe the IRS anymore, and I'm able to live a comfortable life, a lot better life. It was because of Optima Tax. For tax help you can trust, call Optima now for a free consultation. Take it from Louie. If you owe the IRS, don't go in alone. Give Optima Tax a call. They can help you. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Testimonial from an actual client. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. See Joe Conklin's comedy show at the Church of the Incarnation on Main Street in Mantua, New Jersey, Saturday, April 20th. For tickets, go to JoeConklin.com. JoeConklin.com! 
a message from McCausland Lock Service. Stop what you're doing right now and look at your car key. Does it look like it's been chewed on by a small woodland creature used for batting practice by an entire baseball team or left in the middle of 95? Oh, and let me guess, it's the only one you have? Head to McCausland Lock Service. Get a brand new key fob for up to half the price a dealer would charge. Call today. Most cars don't even require an appointment and you'll be out the door in under 30 minutes. McCausland Lock Service, 610-430-1500. Smart speaker to play 1210 WPHT. Kale and Company, it is a Tuesday morning. Tony Bruno will join us tomorrow at 8.30 live from Florida for a midweek edition of Kale and Company. Still ahead this morning, what's on the cut sheet part Do What's on tap for the Dawn Show? Today in music history and who won Twitter today. Also, have one more story to get to after our morning mystery movie clip. And speaking of passing the buck on to you. Where do you hear what a Washington Post reporter has to say about the epidemic we have in this country when it comes to shoplifting and retail theft? This is a remarkable opinion to have. Could be the worst take of the week, and it's not going to come from the three of us. So uh, we're always willing to give that out to uh, somebody that has something really stupid to say outside of this program. But right now, 922, let's get to the Morning Mystery movie clip. And now, the morning mystery movie clip on Kale and Company. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Holiday for Columbus? He makes the wrong turn and wipes out an entire indigenous people. And you know what he was looking for? I bet you're going to tell me. Gold. Supposedly for Queen Isabella, but don't think that the Medici's back in Italy didn't want a part of that action. And what did Italy need gold for? The long distance slave trade based in Venice. Venice. That's where this brings. You were saying something? No. No, No, you were really on a roll there. Don't stop. I'm interested. Think you know what it is? Be call at 12 at 855 839 1210, and you could win this great prize. All right, good luck to you. I have no idea what that movie was, but if you do, be caller 12, 855-839-1210, and you will win a pair of tickets to the 8th Annual Bucks Blues Explosion, which is coming up on April 5th at the Zlock Performing Arts Center on the campus of Bucks County Community College in Newtown, PA. For tickets and more information, visit bucks.edu slash tickets. Caller 12, 855-839-1210. And uh, we'll see if we get our winner here in the next couple of minutes. Cut sheet part due in just about 10 minutes. But I want to wrap up with this story today. Speaking of uh, finances and money, uh, we're not talking about the size or the cost of food. But, um, you know, when we see these horrific stories uh, throughout this country, most notably Washington, D.C., San Francisco, um, Atlanta, St. Louis, We've seen these stories and we've seen the video of people in Target, uh, CVS, Walgreens, where, you know, in this day and age of, well, we can't lock up the criminal and we can't have store employees defend the merchandise because they've been advised by their bosses in HR to just let the uh, retail theft continue and just let them take whatever they want. Uh, That cost gets pushed on to us because. You know, these retail establishments get a shrink percentage, which is an allowable amount of uh, product that can disappear, be stolen before it kind of gets red flagged within their company. It's a very small percentage, but they have to ensure the products they sell. 
And when their products are routinely stolen and we don't lock up the criminal, we rather lock, we would prefer to lock up the shampoo and the toilet paper at a CVS because we've got animals that just decide to walk in and take it. Um, that cost, it becomes more expensive for the company to ensure, uh, ensure the product. And that cost gets, you know, kicked on to the consumer. So whatever that you're buying, it might be, I don't know, body wash that was four seventy nine is now five twenty nine. That's because, you know, the things are being stolen and it costs more to insure. But the Washington Post says, you know what? Shoplifting is not a big deal, folks. That's right. A Washington Post reporter says retail theft and the epidemic plaguing America. Shoplifting is not a big deal because the U.S. was built on stolen land. <laughs> wow. What what brain surgeon wrote this? Well, the brain surgeon goes by the name of Maura Judkis, J-U-D-K-I-S, and uh, it's a new Washington Post report suggesting that the crime problem in American major cities has grown into a moral panic. Post-culture reporter Maura Judkis authored the piece in the paper style section on Friday with the headline, The Zombie CVS, a late capitalism horror story. In it, Judkiss noted how a Columbia Heights, Washington, D.C. CVS had been looted and shoplifted from so much that there were hardly anything of value on the store shelves until it was shut down last week. She wrote the following, quote, everything else that remains in the store in northwest D.C., which is not much, is under plexiglass, Dawn dish soap, L'Oreal shampoo, Miralax. A handful of Clairol Root Touch-Up Hair Dye Kits. Flu Season Combo Packs of Dayquil and Nightquil. The diapers are behind the counter. The Cetaphil and the Neutrogena Face Washes are under lock and key. Other shelves stretching entire aisles are entirely empty. Though, rather than reflect on the crime that was forced and has been forced this store and other stores in other major U.S. cities to close, the reporter... And this is uh, the little editorial here from the New York Post delved how these crimes are being seized upon by conservatives trying to stoke fear about a rise in crime. Quote, it became a horror story of late capitalism, she wrote. And she goes on to say, at the end of the day, America is a sticky fingered nation built on stolen land and its current moral panic is caught up in shoplifting. It's not just a worry in Columbia Heights all over the country. From sea to shining CVS, there are concerns about this concept of petty theft. So maybe Maura Judkiss is a gazillionaire. Maybe the rise in product costs doesn't affect her. But for the common individual out there, and I consider myself to be just the everyday routine person, I don't want to have to pay more for a product because the company has to pay more to insure it because people at 18 or 14 years old or 37 years old feel like they are entitled to steal something and they don't have to pay for it. And then, Oh, by the way, I get stuck with the bill. See, this is no different to me than the not repaying your college loans concept. Why do I got to pay more because of you? So this is again, Another organic development of what happens when we don't enforce the law. We talked about this earlier with criminal justice reform. Everything on this show comes full circle, folks. Um, we don't prosecute crimes. We don't lock people up. We give them four get out of jail free cards on down the list. And once again, it's a, a publication like the Washington Post and one of their paid journalists and reporters who said, that's not a big deal. You conservatives, this country was built on stolen land. Take your petty griefs elsewhere. Never loot again, stay out of trouble, never go to jail. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Meatball. There you go. So, great story. By the way, uh, when we uh, when we come back for What's on the Cut Sheet Part Do, everybody needs to get over to YouTube. YouTube.com uh -oh. slash at 1210WPHD. YouTube.com slash at 1210WPHD because I have a video uh, if you, you have kids or whatever that are going to spring break, if you want to see what's happening, yeah. what's, what's happening in sp at spring break right now, Florida, uh, in Florida. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
head on over to YouTube because right after this break, we will uh, we will go down to spring break and see how spring break has changed over the last couple of years. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) All right. We'll do that on the other side. Also, we'll get our morning mystery movie clip winner in here. But first, a word from my friends at Blue Chew. Don't try stealing Blue Chew. We're giving it away for free. We're, that's, that's what we're doing here on Gale & Company. It's very simple. BlueChew.com. Use the promo code 1210, and you're going to get your first month free. All you have to do is go to BlueChew.com. Promo code, use it right now, 1210, for your first month free. Just pay 5 bucks for shipping, and Blue Chew is yours. It's that extra spark in the bedroom. It's that added boost as Father Time starts pushing down on that That vigor, right? You don't want to end up like Joe Biden. You want to be full of vigor, like Jill says. The great people at Blue Chew, they offer a unique, one-of-a-kind online service that delivers men the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable tablet at a much cheaper price. And also, how about this? Comes in a mint-flavored chewable now. Fresh breath to boot. Who knew? No embarrassing conversation. No pharmacies. Right to your door in discreet fashion. BlueChew.com. Promo code 1210 for your first month free. Hi, it's Dawn. Need a lawn care service? Choose a company that provides better results and is safer for your family and pets. Choose Natural Lawn. They've been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. Their technicians work to determine the specific needs of your lawn, which reduces the need for chemicals and creates a safer lawn. Take advantage of Natural Lawn's limited time offer, free seeding, every year. Call 800-FREE-SEED. Choose my lawn care company, Natural Lawn of America. Greener grass, fewer weeds. Leads guaranteed. WPHT, WPHT HD, WOGL HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Hello, America. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you don't have Consumer Cellular yet, now is the perfect time to switch and save. For a limited time, new customers can get wireless service for as low as $15 a month for your first year. Yep, the same exact nationwide coverage as the leading carriers for $15 a month for an entire year. What are you waiting for? Call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com and use code RADIO15. See ConsumerCellular.com slash first year 15 for promotional details. Not all water heaters are made equally. Some can be temperamental. Some can be unreliable. And don't even think about what happens if you have neighbors downstairs. Why is it raining inside my apartment? Not with a Navian tankless water heater. You'll never run out of hot water. You only heat water when you need it. Saving you tons in utility costs. Navian tankless water heaters. Visit tanklessmadesimple.com to learn more. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies. Because when people don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from, they can truly thrive, like Marta. And now we'll hear from our class valedictorian, who with our hard work never ceases to amaze us. Please welcome Marta Moreno. And Alex. Hey, Alex. How did the interview go? I did it! I got the job! I can't believe it! I knew it. Let's meet up later to celebrate. And Diego. Mom! I got first place at the science fair with my volcano project! That's amazing, sweetie. Congratulations! Because when people are fed, futures are nourished, and everyone deserves to live a full life. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. feedingamerica.org slash act now. A public service announcement brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. My name is Andy Donaldson. I've been with Crash Proof Retirement since the beginning of 2014. The main reason Crash Proof is so phenomenal is there's no way that the original investment you put in is going to be any less than you started. In addition, you do get significant returns. A number of the different investment strategies that I've been involved with have given me 10 to 15 percent returns annually. With the Crash Proof Retirement System this year, I made almost 11 and a half percent. It's quite a nice feeling to know that at the end of your year, whatever you've gained, the 10 or 15 percent, now becomes your new principal amount and you never lose it. 
Learn how double-digit interest returns can be permanently compounded to your principal with no risk of loss at the next Crash Proof Retirement Educational Event at Spring Mill Manor on March 19th. Starting at 5 p.m., call 800-722-9728 or visit CrashProofRetirement.com. Download the free Upside app to earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code RADIO for an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first fill-up. That's promo code RADIO. Free speech lives here. With Don Stensland, weekdays 10 till noon. Talk Radio 1210. WPHT. WPHT. Welcome back in, Kale and Company. Happy Tuesday to all of you as we continue. Very busy day, very busy week. Once again, Robert Hur doubling down on his report. We'll uh, get more details of that as today continues into tomorrow. Probably be the big take for tomorrow's show. But right now, let me welcome in Ken in Percasy. He is our winner of the Morning Mystery Movie Clip. Ken, good morning. What movie did we just play for you, sir? You play the Italian job. That yeah. is correct. Congratulations, Ken. You've got yeah. a pair of tickets to the 8th Annual Bucks Blues Explosion coming nice. up at the uh, Zlock Performing Arts Center in April. Nice. Awesome. Great show, guys. Go kick ass this week. We will. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> I love that. Put me in, Coach. I love that. Yeah. Ken and Perkisy, my new favorite caller. All perked up. I like yeah. it. Nice work out of him. Yeah. Maybe he's on some of the stuff Joe was on last Thursday. Allegedly. A little juice. I like that. Nice work out of Kenny. All right. We'll have uh, three more pairs of those tickets coming up Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Get on over to YouTube, folks. We've got some good stuff coming up for What's on the Cut Sheet Part 2. What's on the Cut Sheet? Hi, Gil. What's on the Cut Sheet Part 2? Sponsored by Wawa. Wawa's new built-to-order wraps are here. It's all the flavor you love wrapped up and ready to go with... For your day, try an Italian or bacon ranch chicken steak wrap today. Gotta have a Wawa. Mmm. Bacon chicken ranch chicken mm. steak wrap. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you, Wawa, for sponsoring What's on the Country Part 2. Okay. Uh, spring break. <laughs> Nick Kale, did you ever did you ever partake in spring break? No, sadly. I, um, I did not either. I Now, is it an admission or am I regretting it? I regret. You regret not taking not part taking, in yeah. spring break. I do, actually, yes. So you think of, you know... Bikini clad ladies. Sorry, Dawn. Yeah. Men drinking. Yeah. Hooking up. Dudes being dudes. A lot of fun. Allowed to be a dude. A lot of fun. Yeah. Well, let's go to thong some... clad men. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Cis- Cisco's thong song you, playing in the you, background. Do you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> speaking of that, do you remember that like MTV used to have like a beach house? Yeah. And they used to have uh, Total Request Live. They used, used to, to be, be there at the shore. They used to be there for spring break. Yeah. And all those bands used to play and stuff. Yeah, yeah man. I remember those days. Well, uh, spring break has changed a little bit. So Florida, there was a whole thing in Miami, right, where Miami was trying to tell spring breakers not to come there anymore. They didn't yes. want them there anymore. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when Dawn's giving us those uh, stories from the Jersey Shore about how they're cracking down on the Utes. Yeah, the Utes. Uh, this is cut seven, Phil. If you want to, if you want to play this, this is uh, this is video only. Look at look at how look at these look at oh, the spring boy. break. It's oh. just a bunch of ladies. Oh, uh, I mean, Woo. just just. Punching. Look at this. There's there's weaves falling. Off. Oh my there's god! There goes a wig. <laughs> there's. A, oh my goodness. Like, we got people's heads are falling just, off. Is, what is happening to spring break? Well, and that's got to be a crowd of this is Florida. close to a hundred people. This is Florida, by the yes. way. Yes. Now I don't know if that was an edict from um, Suarez, the mayor, or if that's a DeSantis statewide edict. But um, they are absolutely in trying to, and obviously you can see here it's not really panning out too well for them. <laughs> To crack down on all look this. At, look at this. Yes. And everybody's just filming it. Yes. Right? And yeah, nobody, is anybody stepping in to try to separate them? No. I guess one, the one guy, yeah. one person looks like he was. You, mm-hmm. you know what I've noticed too about these fight videos is it's not so much that everybody's filming it, which is also a major issue, is nobody ever steps in these days until it's like absolutely certain that the fight is over and some person has won. Have yeah. you noticed that? It's like, oh, eventually we step in and do the right thing when it's like, okay, he, this person might end up being killed, right? 
what is this need to fight? Like, th- this is violence. And these this are is, girls. Yes, exactly. Well, to be clear. <laughs> Look at her. She's, she, her, her wig fell off. It's awful. <laughs> it's but, just <laughs> gross. It's just if for, gross. If for nothing else, I mean, the... That weave costs a lot of money. Yeah. I'm just saying. Like, a lot of time. In this binomic economy. And you're so, right. You're right. Don and Nick are, you, you're 100% right. Nobody is trying to, I mean, there's a few people trying to help, but. There's mm-hmm. one guy in yellow who seems like he's trying to. Yeah, he looks like something. a lifeguard. <laughs> 90% of those uh-huh. Utes are uh, are just filming. Now, wasn't, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to date myself, but like, sure when, like when TV shows would talk about like, uh, hey, we're going on spring break. Wasn't Fort Lauderdale the destination for spring break? In the 80s. In the what? 80s or now 90s? Now it's like Miami, South Beach. Okay. Yeah. yeah to me, I, I, I mean, I definitely would like to go down to the uh, southern tip of Florida on, oh, off the Atlantic. Geez. But I would also like to go um, to the northwest uh, side of Florida where Bruno is. West That's, side. Yeah. The Gulf side. Yeah. Yep. I've heard also, um, uh, have you ever been to Destin Beach? I believe uh, that's along the Panhandle. Yes. I've heard that. I've never cool. been Years there, but I, but I know what you're talking about, yeah. I've heard great things about that. That's on my bucket list. That's where the shark attacks are. <laughs> At this rate, I, I wouldn't mind being swallowed. <laughs> you're right over there? Yeah. Uh, let the, 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 I, I just wanted that to ruminate there yeah, for yeah. a second. Yeah, I know. Just wanted to show everybody too. how uh, well, you're gonna have um, you're gonna have to have a meeting myself. Yourself. Yeah, yes. you, you know how they had uh, we do that bit on the show where we play how things used to be and how they are today. Uh-huh. We should play uh, spring break in the '80s. Yeah, yeah. With you know, girls on top of guys' shoulders yeah. and they're having chicken fights. Yeah, dude <laughs> drinking Budweiser, tall boys. And now it's now it's weaves flying yep. flying off of uh, brawling women. Uh-huh. Uh huh. On over the let's talk about this TikTok ban uh, really uh, quickly. Uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, he's he's conflicted, guys, on whether on on whether to support the TikTok ban. Or not? Well, the only thing he's adamant adamant about is war. He's, <laughs> but well, well, yet yeah, yes. But social media is ruining America. Uh, this is Lindsey Graham. Cut ten. Phil, go. House is planning to vote, as you know, yeah. this coming week on a bill that would force the Chinese company to sell TikTok or face being banned. Yeah. Trump initially favored banning TikTok. Now he's opposed. He's expressing his opposition. Do you support banning TikTok? Where do you fall? I think the goal is to make sure American data that TikTok collects doesn't fall in the hands of the Communist Chinese Party. I'm really conflicted here. I know this about social media. They're ruining America. uh, uh, Sexual predators abound on these sites. You can't sue social media companies. Uh, There's no regulatory body. That's what I'm focused on. Banning TikTok, uh, maybe that's necessary to protect American data from China, but if you can find a way to avoid that, that'd be good too. You were a strong supporter of it in 2020, though. Do you no longer No, no, it? I understand people like TikTok. I would like to keep TikTok running, but not have our data used by the Communist Chinese How do you Party. vote on this? I don't know yet. Okay. I mean, I'm just being honest okay. with you. I am definitely conflicted. But one thing I'm not conflicted about, every social media company should be sued if they do damage to you and your family. They're protected from lawsuits. Section 230 needs to go. I don't disagree with Section 230. I, I do agree with him on one thing. It's the, 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 it, this is TikTok specific, but all of it Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I believe social media is a accelerant to the erosion of the mental health of, of minors. Um, and I'm not, I'm not advocating for a ban. I'm not even sitting here saying there needs to be a certain age. But I do think it's undeniable at this point that social media totally messes with the mindset of of the youth of today let me just say this about the t- uh, the uh, tiktok ban that's being this bill is being floated around right now um it's the president will be given the power to ban websites not just apps mm-hmm. the person breaking the new law is deemed to be the if the person breaking the new law is deemed to be weaponization uh, yes, internet hosting service or yeah. app store not the foreign yep. adv- which creates a slippery slope right what's next yes. yep. gambling sites um you know porn sites what what else are we going to be blocking you know that's what i'm saying guys just don't you brought up porn sites. <laughs> that's I, I, I i've read not it. the porn sites o- oklahoma wants to ban porn sites in their state yeah well that's oh yeah that's a sin <laughs> look that up 
<laughs> duck, duck, go that story. Oklahoma blocking porn site. Oh. Yeah. Woo-hoo. True story. All right, we got to we got to break. All right. Coming up next, we'll find out what's on tap for the Dawn Show, who won Twitter today, and today in music history. It's Gail and Company. Back after this. Molly Malloy's Kitchen and Bar is located at Center Court in the historic Reading Terminal Market. Featuring a private bar, diner seating, and a great view of the market scene. Molly Malloy's uses fresh ingredients like produce from the market's Lobine Brothers, along with other market vendors. From cheesesteaks made with center cut ribeye on seated Sarconi's rolls, fresh biscuits made for breakfast sandwiches, or 35 beers, ciders, and Prosecco on tap, Molly Malloy's in the Reading Terminal has a little something for everyone. Go to Molly Malloy's Philly. March Mania is running wild at TurnersvilleJeep.com, your zero-down Jeep and Ram headquarters for March only. Come in and get up to 20% off select Jeeps and Rams. That equates to over 18000 in savings on select models. We have over 300 vehicles available for immediate delivery. TurnersvilleJeep.com, located on Route 42 in Turnersville. Drive a little, save a lot at turnersvillejeep.com. That's turnersvillejeep.com. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies. Because when people don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from, they can truly thrive. Like Marta. And now we'll hear from our class valedictorian, who with our hard work never ceases to amaze us. Please welcome Marta Moreno. And Alex. Hey, Alex. How did the interview go? I did it. I got the job. I can't believe it. I knew it. Let's meet up later to celebrate. And Diego. Mom, I got first place at the science fair with my volcano project. That's amazing, sweetie. Congratulations. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished, and everyone deserves to live a full life. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. feedingamerica.org slash act now. A public service announcement brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. We've helped over 30,000 families out of financial hardship by getting them out of bad timeshares. If your timeshare agreement goes on forever, if you were told timeshares are a great investment or your maintenance fees will never go up, you have questions, we have the answers. At Wesley Financial Group, we're dedicated to helping timeshare owners get out of their financial nightmare. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call now for your free timeshare exit information kit. 800-523-3030. That's 800-523-3030. 800-523-3030. Although you try not to, most of us have used an ATM out of network. And at the end, you get that notice that it's going to cost you $4 extra. Are you kidding me? So you're paying money to get your own money. It makes you crazy. In retirement, you're going to want to use that 401k. But every time you dip into it, you have to pay taxes. Here we go again. You have to pay money to get your own money. Oh, come on! Jim Cipriati and the Retire Ready Financial Group believes that every retirement plan needs a tax plan. Without it, you're using Uncle Sam's plan. And do you really think that's going to work in your favor? Call Retire Ready Financial Group today at 610-894-7415. 
That's 610-894-7415 and schedule a complimentary retirement consultation. Or you can find them online at retirereadyfg.com. Investment advisory services offered through Retire Ready Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Insurance and annuities offered through James V. Cipriati, Retire Ready Financial Group, LLC, NPN number 2083768. See Joe Conklin's comedy show at St. Matt's on Fayette Street in Concha Hawkins, Saturday, April 6th, supporting Plymouth White Marsh High School baseball. It was fun, 100% every time. It's spectacular. <laughs> Joe Conklin's awesome. Hysterical. Super funny. Hysterical. I love the horns. Oh my God. I really, really enjoy it. That's Joe Conklin's comedy show at St. Matt's on Fayette Street in Concha Hawkins, Saturday, April 6th, supporting Plymouth White Marsh High School Baseball. For tickets, go to JoeConklin.com. JoeConklin.com! Today, everyone is trying to eat healthier and eat more fresh foods. Well, that also goes for your four-legged friends. Hi, I'm George Parenti, the lead dog at the Dogs and Cats Rule Stores. If you are not aware of the new generation of fresh food diets available for your four-legged friends, then you are missing out. At Dogs and Cats Rule, we carry a wide-ranging selection of fresh foods that includes raw, gently cooked, freeze-dried, hair-dried, and baked. To learn more, visit any of our seven locations. Dogs and Cats Rule. Shop small, shop local shop family. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can. In the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member of DIC. There's breaking news all day long from around the world. And sometimes all that noise makes it hard to hear about what's happening right here at home. With the free Odyssey app, getting your local news plus breaking news is easy. And even when you're not near a radio, stay connected with what's going on right here by listening live and push alerts. Just download the free Odyssey app and search and follow your local news station and you're good to go. The local breaking news to get you through your day at your fingertips on the free Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Hey, Southampton. We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Kelly Company, 9.52. It is a Tuesday morning as we put a bow on another show. The Dawn Show coming up in just about eight minutes. We find out what she has lined up for 10 o'clock. Yeah, and of course, we have the testimony, big testimony coming up that we talked about uh, <clears throat> with somebody under fire who decided not to charge Joe Biden in that documents case. So expecting to get ripped, fierce uh, questioning expected, and that's supposed to start within the next eight minutes or so. And then we'll also have some great interviews, um, including talking about Mayor Parker, what's happening in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, also talking about how insurance companies are using the data that is in your smart car. So we'll talk about that and how that information may be released. We've talked a lot about TikTok and that data. What about the data that your car is collecting on you? Some new revelations with that. Dr. Stephen Bonta, you're going to want to hear him coming up in the 11 a.m. hour. So he'll talk all things economic. He's from the New American, but we'll talk about the new economic numbers that are being revealed this morning. So a lot to discuss and a lot breaking this morning. Okay. Dawn show in just about seven minutes as we get to a Tuesday installment of Today in Music History. What happened on this day in music history? Music history. history. On Kale and Company. Today, March 12th, we celebrate the birthdays of Steve Harris of Iron Maiden. By the way, looking forward to that show in November. Mike Gibbons, the bad figure drummer. And James Taylor. We also lost Clyde Burr of Maine in 2013. And Michael Hasek, the Doobie Brothers drummer in 2012. Albums from today include Glass Houses by Billy Joel, released in 80. R.E.M.'s Out of Time from 91. And Weird Al's Bad Hair Day from 96. That includes Amish Paradise. <laughs> also in 2007, Amy Whitehouse made her television debut on The David Letterman Show. The Stones began recording Jumping Jack Flash in 68. And lastly, on this day in 2009, tickets went on sale at the O2 Arena in London for the Michael Jackson and This Is It concerts, which obviously never happened since he died three months later. For Kale and Company, I'm Phil Lomquist. Yeah, but that, very good one there today out of Phil. As we wrap up a Tuesday, well, this is going to be a tough one, 
Today, in um, right, we find out who uh, won Twitter today. Who won Twitter? Bill Bob won Twitter. Uh, he says Lindsey Graham is not conflicted. He rides the f- he rides the fence post unless it's war. Then he's all in. That's right. It's he true. is all it's in. Absolutely true. Yes. Find you somebody in this life that loves you as much as Lindsey loves war. Amen. And you will be set. Yep. All right. Dawn show coming up next. We're back tomorrow morning at six. Bruno at eight thirty. And as John Fetterman would say, Good night, everybody. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth, and if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on un.